Oh no, a bit of a stand up around two, but I'll give me two boys. Two boys under 12. Ryan McGill, next from New South Wales. Is our trick skier. Okay, Campbell. So we're back on the trick lake, everybody. Where's all the Victorians? Morning, Toby's mum. Okay, we get to the red boy. Boat speed set at around about 23, 24. There's a little pop on the wake front, the wake backs there. Just getting in. Oh, down goes Campbell. Not a good run. This, of course, is round two added together. So Campbell, 680 in the first round. Probably around about the same. We'll go back to the Slalom Lake and have a look at uh, Ryan McGill will be our next competitor coming in. Absolutely perfect conditions. The guys from Mulwala, the Victoria Water Ski Association, of course, New South Wales, is hosting the Nationals and doing an absolute magnificent job. Phil Carmichael and all his team here at five o'clock in the morning working feverishly. And Pete cooking bacon and egg rolls. The most important job of the whole lot. Ryan McGill, here yeah, for him I was. Ryan McGill, so Ryan all the way from New South Wales of course. He's coming in on a 14 metre line as well. So all these guys starting on 14, the big guys will start at 13. So Ryan picking up six boys, conditions good. We've got a little bit of shade from the sun at the moment. It obviously doesn't impact on the skiers out there because they're looking directly down the course whereas the uh, sun is right angles to those. Obviously that's why Max Kerwin dug them this way I'd say. Trick skier coming back on the water on the second lake and all the way down the course looking strong. It's funny how these guys and we got the flip we do. Oh puts on a big five. <laughs> okay. So he does the flip and then couldn't do the O after it. How does that work? Okay. <laughs> Jagger, the old Jagger King, does a flip. Oh. Okay, Jagger, the old Jagger King got the support team from New South Wales, the big team from Forbes. Great to see. Okay, on the slalom lake course, coming back on the 13 metre, we have Ryan McGill, 
looking strong out there coming back on the 12. Of course, all these guys got into 12 in the first round. So uh, Ryan's score was, uh, I don't know, 2 at 13. So he's getting up there at the moment. Okay, just talking to Kevin Green, of course, one of the uh, stalwarts of WA, Western Australian Water Skiing. His son Ryan, now he's got the grandkids coming on, Daisy and Fletch. Okay, so we're still on the water here with Ryan McGill, 12 metre line. Not sure about that. I'll have to check my uh, scores coming through from the tower, but. I think this could be a 13 metre line, 55. So my adjustment, I apologise for that. I don't think we got that one particular one right. I'll blame my visor. That was 13. Jagger King goes down. Um, okay, we're right on the ball here. We know what we're doing. So this is... <laughs> shut up, Craig. We're coming back now at 13. So that's three times he's ran 13. So it's not a bad sort of a slalom skier, is he? So it takes a little bit to get the system working in the morning. I've got my judges up there who aren't helping me that much either. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. So now let's get this in lights. Ryan McGill from New South Wales now returns at 13. So that's three goes we've had at that. He got two at 13 in the first round. I can't believe the conditions. It's absolutely magnificent this whole weekend. Five days of the best weather, the best boats, the best crew, the best drivers. I assume it's Shane driving out there. We've got, and have a look at this. Is can he? I don't think he's going to get in that number four. So we'll give him a score of three. So we improved his score in round one. He got a three today. Okay, Victoria, we go to Glenn Martin, your favourite boat driver, come skier. Will be our next competitor on the water. Good on you, mate. Okay, Jagger King. Who can do a flip and fall on their 360? Jagger King. <laughs> okay. And uh, if you have a look too, Jagger's got it worked out too. He's got his mum carrying his gear for him, get him a change of clothes. Just uh, a little bit of support for a, an elite skier. Archie Dowding from WA is our next competitor. He'll be down on the dock getting himself ready to come back at around about 25K. All right, Victoria. Jump out behind the shrouds and get yourself ready because here he comes. Oh, morning, Cap. He is coming. Glenn Martin coming in. On the 14 metre line, judges. 16, I knew that one. So 16 metre line. Now Glenn, who's uh, been a very, very good three-event skier in his early days, 
And then he got focused on the driving. Obviously got a job, did a few other bits and pieces like that. Took a bit of a stint out from the on-water activities. And uh, I think it was back at the uh, Australian Masters at Bridgewater that he was there and he had his ratings. He got his ratings back again at national level. And here he is back skiing. I think three events. So good to see Glenn Martin, a very popular young man. And what a magnificent representative for Australia as a boat driver. So he'll come back on the 14 metre line. We go then to Nick Werner, David Kingston. How's Annie? Okay, so we, this is what happens in the commentary team. When the two boats head off at the same time, we have to make a choice. But the trick boat's not coming, and guess who is coming? And, of course, his name is Glenn Martin. He's coming back on a 14-metre line. He got it down into the 13 in the first round, so we'll pencil this one in. Nice turnaround, number one. Looks good out there at the moment, Glenn. Nice and controlled, nice and smooth. Nice lean behind the TXI and he'll return on the 13 metre line from the Cobram end. Six, five, five. 13 metres returning is Glenn Martin on the trick course. Of course, we have Archie Dowding, WA. Now, two rounds added together, everybody. I can't give you the results, but you can get an indication of the stand-up tricks, these guys. But uh, Dylan Wright from Queensland, trick 2020. Oscar Cowan from ACT, trick 1880. And Archie Dowding, trick 1520. So they all, the top three, had a good lead in the first round to see what happens now with two rounds added together. So, WA, where are you? Because your young trick skier who's trick 1500 in the first round is on the water or coming in very shortly to try and put himself into the gold medal pot potential at this stage. However... Glenn Martin now coming back on the 13 metre line. I think the trick boat's held up with a little bit of a technicality, but have a look at Glenn. Come on, Victoria. Here comes Glenn Martin. He's out there. He's looking good. On the 13, he can run this 13. He's got three to four on the board. Number five. Come on, Glenn. Push her across to number five and six, boys. He comes back on a 12 metre line. He'll be getting up around his PB, I would think, up there. So Glenn Martin, our super boat driver. <laughs> Wayne and his deformed little, beautiful little daughter. Or is it son, Wayne? Son. I meant that in the nicest possible way. Archie Dowding. Righto, WA, let's have a look. We need a stand-up pass. If he stands up, he's got a medal. Don't forget that's according to the PA, not the judges. So we look, the boat speed set around about 24, 25. Archie coming in for his first pass. And does a couple of wake fronts, the wake backs, the old routine that picks up three, four, five hundred points. Looking good. Now into the surface turns. The wake back to back. Hold it there, mate. We do the reverse wake back to back. Building up. He's looking pretty good as he gets up towards the 20 seconds. There we go. Nyeet. Okay. Well done. Archie doubting because we've got Glenn Martin coming back on the 12 metre line. Be up around his PB in here somewhere. I don't know what it is, but I would say about three, two or three. Let's have a look. He's got one on the board. Stands on the back of the slalom. Two's notched in and a little bit too much. Well done there. Two boys. Well 
Okay, good run there with two boys on the 12 metre line. Takes the lead. All right. So, Glenn Martin, 2 at 12. A great run up around his PB, I would think. But WA at the moment, we're looking for a stand-up pass from Archie Dowding. Don't forget, two rounds added together. All the boys at the moment have been generally around where they were on the first round. This young fella, 1,520 points, stands it up. He's a medalist. What colour? We don't know as yet. And our next skier on the water will be Nicholas Werner on the slalom side. So let's have a look. We'll get we'll get the Archie Doubting done in the first place. Got the toe piece on, a nice back. Nice front. Builds up a couple of hundred points. Takes it off. Gets back onto the hands. He needs some wake tricks here. Now we get the surfaces. The 360s, the 520s. 520s. Looking good as he builds up. He's going to have another 1,500 point run the way he's going. Does he do a, oh, get into the back-to-backs, the wake back-to-backs, get it in before the buzzer. Quick, Archie. Well done. He's a medalist. What colour? We'll find out in a few minutes as we go back to the slalom lake. Nick Werner, Victoria. So Nick got one of 12. Okay, one of 12. Okay, Nick Werner coming back at 55, 16 metres. Morning, Kaz. How are you? You're skiing? Late entries. Okay. All right, we wait because the trick event's going to go down to the wire. There's no doubt about that. Archie Dowding has got himself a spot. Of course, this is commentary talk. We don't get too carried away. All right. Come on, Vic. Nick Werner coming back on the 16-metre line. Conditions perfect. The sun's shining. Everything's going our way here today and looking nice and strong. Of course, he got down into the 13-metre line as well. 16's a bit of a walk in the park. And we'll pick up the six boys. Goes down to the Cobram end. Shortens down on the 14-metre line. Next competitor from Queensland will be Dave Kingston. Okay, coming back at 14 metre line, we go across. Our trick ski is not ready to come in yet because uh, Oscar Cowan from the ACT. Good to see ACT. They've got a good team here, ACT. I think they've got about uh, 11 or 12 skiers. I think their new state president, Maria is the one that's uh, developing some good some good membership numbers. Of course, we've got the number one seed in the open men, Archie Davis. We've got slalom champions like uh, Lee Southwell, Dimitri. Good to see a good team of supporters down on the dock as we wait. But it will be... It'll be Nick Werner coming back in before the trick boat comes. So let's go back over and have a look at Nick. He's up. Victoria. Nick Werner coming back now on his 14-metre line. Hey, Spud. He's in. Righto, let's have a look. We've got a beautiful set of gates. We'll pencil in one. We've got a few spots here in the uh, finals. As he goes right across there to four, five, six. Oh, no. We just look so good going across there to number four. And skipped, maybe hit the boy. 
Not sure. So around about three. Okay. Three and a half. And David Kingston, Queensland, our next competitor. Okay, so Archie Dowding, no scores for the commentary team, of course, but uh, with our limited experience, we reckon he's tricked around about the 1,500 again. So he's holding the gold that the man coming down from the trick judge in will be Oscar Cowan. And he's up. He's on the water. Where are you, ACT? I can only see one ACT supporter on the bank. Where are you? Where's Mama? Well, let's have a look at Oscar Cowan coming in from the ACT. He tricked a great score of 1880 in the first round. Of course, he's got to be careful of that Jagger King putting in the big flip and pushing right up there. So Oscar coming in now. All set. Everything's good. He's got the boat speed, 22.6. Pretty slow. So he gets up to the red boy. We start to see the kids trick at that point. And here he comes in now. Into the back position. The wake fronts, the wake backs love this routine. It builds up that four or 500 points. Into the back position he goes there. The back-to-backs. Now we've got the wake back-to-backs. Look good, this little fella. Nice and soft on the ski. Gets right up there to the 360s. Now we've got the reverse 360. We've got a 540. We have. Have we got another 540? No. Right on. Reminds me a little bit of Callan Ashcroft's run, that one. Callan Ashcroft's still got the same run. <laughs> Except the Goose Man tricks 8,000. That's the difference. Okay, back on the Slalom Lake, everybody. We've got Dave Kingston from Queensland. Dave again, another one getting into the 13-metre line in the first round. So let's... All these fellas just look so strong and controlled out there in their first couple of passes. They're all experienced skiers. Over 35 men. Is our number one seed for the event, Chris Coburn, gets himself ready. 16.95. Okay, so he's completed the 14 metre run. Now he's coming back at 13 metres. Dave Kingston from Queensland. So we've got an option here, Dave Kingston coming back at 13. Oscar Cowan coming back to pick up a medal. If he stands up, he's got to be up there in the medal. He tricked 1880 in the first round. So it looks like they're just still doing a, a ski change. Where's the ACT support team? He's got quite a few... Uh, Supporters down there. It's good to see here. Of course, Dylan Wright from Queensland is our top seed. All right. On the slalom leg at 13 metres, it's Dave Kingston. Got the four on the board. He's across and five. And here he comes. He's going to come back on a 12-metre line. Righto, tricks. Back to the tricks, everybody. Here comes a young man. He's skiing for gold at the moment. So he's got to toe back to toe front. A couple of hundred. Toe wake back, toe wake front. Looks good. Let's bang in a couple of slides there. Yeah, there's the slides. Take the hand toe piece off. 
Now we get into the surface tricks. We've got the uh, back-to-backs and a reverse a 360 into the 540s, have we? No, we're doing reverse. All these new tricks, of course, they just look at... Oh, no, it goes down right on the buzzer. I reckon 20 seconds. I think... I think that he might have held the lead. He had a 300-point lead in round one, and I think he may be holding the gold at the moment, waiting to see what Dylan writes. So Oscar Cowan and Archie Dowding are in the medal contention at the moment. We'll just see what the number one seed, Dylan Wright from Queensland, can do. All right, back on the slalom lake. 12 metres, Dave Kingston from Queensland. Where are you, Queensland? Because here he comes into the big league, the 12 metres. Not a lot of rope there. Let's have a look at Dave coming through. Stands a touch around number one, just across the number two. Can he keep the edge on that ski? He can, but uh, not today. Okay, so a uh, score of... Two and a half. And Victoria, one of your favourites, is next. Lee Bray will be there. Two and a half on the 12 metre line. Lee Bray will be the next competitor coming in on the slalom. Okay, everybody, now if you look at lake number one, the least lake. The under 14 boys tricks is getting right down to the wire. Right down to the wire. So one skier can change the equation. His name is Dylan Wright from Queensland and he's the one that can actually take the gold. He's, the two skiers have all gone as per seeding and this is according to the commentary too. Be, be very careful everybody, you don't take everything the commentary says as gospel because we can usually get things wrong. But the way we've gone through on the under-14 boys, most of these guys are tricking the same as their first round. This will be the one that will make the difference because at the moment, Oscar Cowan and Archie Dowding are holding the two medals at the moment with one up for grabs. Is it a gold? Is it silver? Is it bronze? Queensland. While we wait for Lee Bray to come back in on the slalom lake. And now we have a look. Of course, at Dylan Wright gets ready for the red ball. The big TXI, beautiful crisp wakes to jump on. Okay, here we go. The old routine again. And what a great point, safe point scoring thing to get yourself in rhythm, get going. Or oh, the wake back to backs. Got to get air on these tricks, of course. So that's going to be the issues here. The 540, is it enough? Has he got it? Oh, down he, oh. But I tell you, that's got to be up around 15, 17 seconds, I would think. That's got to be right in the buzzer. So Dylan Wright, with his first pass, stands up right towards the 20-second mark. Victoria, we've got Lee Bray on the lake. Slalom Lake, and he's coming back in. 14 metres, Lee Bray. Can run into the 11 metre line. Very, very consistent skier. Not very often does he go down in the early rounds. But looking good as Bray over there. Oh, Mum would be so proud. So proud. Out he goes. And uh, 16.95, of course, 55k. The big TXI. Magnificent tow boat. Now, there is a word around the uh, bank that there's going to be a bit of a promotion on the new TXI. But you'll have to talk to Noel Gordon about that. There's a bit of a promotion coming out about the new release of next year's TXI. And something may be on the website today or on the live podcast. Okay, on the other side, we're, we're tricking for gold, everybody. Queensland, we're tricking Dylan Wright. 
He'll be returning. Tricking for gold, of course, from Queensland. Okay. No, that's good. I'm getting some compliments up here. I have to give these boys a beer tonight. At the uh, big, oh, don't forget tonight. We're going to talk about tonight a little bit later. Someone tell me what time that kicks off. Okay, come back over to Lee Bray. He's now back onto the 13 metre line and just cruises around number six out through the gates and he'll return. So Ada, where's Ada? I need some information on tonight. I know we've got the night jump. All right, everybody, we're in gold medal. This is a gold medal run. If he stands it up, I'm predicting because he had a good lead in the first round of 200 points. Let's have a look. We've got the backs and the fronts. We've got the routines, the slides. A lot of pressure out there. If he stands it up, he's got to get air on those tricks. That's important. Now all of these young guys are going into these surface tricks. We've got a, three, a couple of 360s. Now we are going to get a wake 540. Oh, have a look at this, some big points. This kid can trick right along. And I tell you what, a, lot's gonna, a lot will depend on the air that he had on those last fives. I'm predicting he might have snuck into the gold. But please don't take the gospel on that one. It will depend on the judges. So... I would think that Dylan Wright may have held on for the gold. Oscar Cowan, they'll go as per seeding. Oscar Cowan could have hung on to the silver and, of course, Archie Dowding, WA. That can change. That can change. Okay, Lee Bray, everybody back on the 12-metre line. Very consistent slalom skier, this guy. 12, he'd have to run his 12 or his mum wouldn't be happy. And there we go. Look at Lee Bray. Just down course a touch on five, but round number six comes back on the first skier on the 11 metres, Lee Bray. Then we go to Dion Butler. Dion Butler, sorry. John Adams, the old reliable Johnny Adams. Robert Banks, the muscle man himself. Pistol Pete Canal. And Mr. Smooth, Chris Coburn. Okay, Victoria, Lee Bray. Lee Bray coming back in on the 11 metre line. Our first 11 metres. Now in the first round, Lee Bray picked up two at 11. And then all the skiers from now finished in the 11, except for Chris Coburn, who got in the 10.75. Victoria, Lee Bray, the Victoria, this is round two. Can he ski himself into a medal? He needs to get deep 11 if he's going to feature deep 11. But let's put him in around about two or three boys on his recent form. Lee Bray gets number one, stands up a little bit on number one across to two and takes a bit of a hit. But two boys, so he's getting up there is Lee Bray. Two at 11. Two at 11 before we bring from WA, of course, Dion Butler. Now, on the trick lake... We're moving into the under 12 boys trick. Round one. So this is round one for under 12 boys tricks. No medals today. A few medals tomorrow. Okay, so waiting on the under 12 boys. We've got Jackson Pigden. 
Katie Blair, Zach Coburn, William Belcher, Jude King, Cadell Dazelle, Dalzell, Oscar Cronin. Oh, Oscar's featuring pretty well on this one, the old Oscar Cronin. And also Ty Reeves, Taj Reeves from Queensland. Wait for the first tricker to come through while we wait, of course, for Dion Butler. Judy. Okay. We're assuming on a 14 metre line, Dion Butler from WA is on his first pass. 55k, of course, we're getting up in the top seeds here. So have a look at that rope out there. Looks like a 14 metre line. Can't see with the sun. But uh, a nice slalom style out there. Everything looking perfect for our six boys. And we have young Jackson Pigden on the other leg coming in for his first tournament, first nationals. And Jackson Paxton Pigden goes down. But I tell you, it's great to see this young fella. And of course, he's the son of young Brody Pigden, who was a great skier that we saw around Colombo Creek, and the grandson of Murray Pigden. So the Pigdens are in good force out here and Jackson, a natural trick skier. So he'll have Grandpa Muzza in the boat with him, I would think. Okay, so we'll wait to see what Jackson can do on his second pass. Okay, so Dion coming back on a 13 metre line. And then we get the old man himself, Johnny Adams. Okay, Jackson, good luck. Righto, coming back now on a 13 metre line. We're getting up into the top seeds. Dion Butler, all the way from WA, 13 metre line, 55k conditions. Have a look yourself. I won't say it again. I know I'm boring you with it. commenting on the beautiful conditions that we have here, but the TXI, 16.95 seconds, coming down course a little bit. He's fighting hard to get the number five. Can he get to number six? He does. Picks up six, out through the gates. And... Morning, Daisy. Okay. So Dion runs through on the 14, comes back 13. Now we're on the 12 metre line. Jackson Pigden's on the other lake. First nationals, first uh, state titles. He's only a young fella, just slipped into the under 12s. So I think he's 10. But of course comes from the very, very famous Pigden fa family, got Muzz. Beautiful trick skier, that Muzz Pig Dog. And uh, we'll have a look at him coming in for the Red Boy. Just needs a good score of five or 600 points back on the slalom. Lake Dion's coming in now for his 12 metre line. So we've got two great athletes on the border at the same time. Unfortunately, Jackson goes down early. Dion, 12. What can he do on a 12 metre line? Come on, WA. No, not a lot inside. No, he's got three. He fought hard to get, can he get four? I don't believe it, he was gone at two. Here he goes across to number six. Have a look at that. <laughs> oh. Well, I penciled him off at two. I started to ride two, two and a half. 
Wow. Here comes our second man in 11. Oh, we've got a little bit of a review happening, but he deserves that on his, uh, on his merits because he was definitely gone. There's only a couple. Okay, Lee Bray, two at 11. Dion Butler. I think he got six at 12. And he deserved six at 12 because he was gone at two. So Jackson Pignan finishes up his trick run. Probably didn't have the best one he'd like, but uh, he's here at his first nationals. You'll see a lot of that young fella. Amazing natural ability. Natural ability. Oh, no. No, Dion Butler missed his gates. Ah, oh, we've had a few gates this weekend and a few, quite a few from WA too. It could be the time difference. So we'll just have to have a look and see what's happening there. But that's bad luck because he tell, he really earned six on that one. He earned six boys. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are down to the big league. John Adams, Robert Banks, Pistol Peak Canal and Christopher Coburn. Now it's a bit unusual, Nick, isn't it, when the kid's got to come along and watch the dad ski instead of the other way around. But there he goes, Dion coming back. Our next trick skier. Now he's a young man from uh, Albury. Casey Blair's his name. He just got into the sport last year. So he's only a newcomer, first state titles, first nationals, and uh, just starting to get himself. He got his rating for jump, got his rating for trick, and here he is now. He can trick around 560 points. I'm sure mum and dad will be down there somewhere on the bank, so the big man comes in. I hope he's got mum releasing in the boat. Good boy, he's got the 360. Here comes the reverse 360. Oh, no. Down he goes. On his first pass. However, he can do that trick again. Is anyone picking? Po oh, Jackson's got a lift back. That's good. Ooh. I'll buy this. By the sound of it down there on the barbecue, you've got your chickens in the back ready f to produce the eggs. Very fresh eggs at the moment. Righto, back to the slalom lake, everybody, and guess who's on the water? His name's John Adams. He's skiing down two divisions. He can ski up in the 55, 65, 45, whatever, but he decides to ski in the over 35, so he gets some competition. Be coming in on a 14 metre line, 55k. I said to him the other day, I've never seen you fall in a preliminary round, John, and he fell off the next pass at Albury, but that's the first time ever. So John in his first round. He's got two at 11. Two at 11, so he's got the experience. Very, very consistent slalom skier he is. And what an athlete. Yep. Returning at 13 metres. There's some fools on the side, you know. We have too many push-ups here. We do have some younger people on the site, people who uh, should know better. You skiing again today, Ashy? Oh, good. <laughs> All right. Our trick, there's young Jackson coming back in. Give him a big round of applause, everybody. Great first nationals. Well done, Jackson, Paxton, Pigden. Okay, here he comes, the old master himself, John Adams. 
ran the 14, 13. I've just penciled in, I've got six. So I'll let you call it from now on because uh, he's just so consistent. Of course, trains down at Moodamere with Son Nick and Finney and a few of the other locals. And looking good goes the Johnny Adams. He keeps. He's like the ever ready battery, isn't he? He just keeps on keeping on. Okay, Case Man, unfortunately going down there on his second trick pass. So Jackson Pigden, Casey Blair. Now we go to a young Coburn. So we know all about Coburns. I'll tell you about him in just a moment. But we'll bring John Adams through first. Returning 12 metre blue, says the boat. The Victorians, of course, the Victorians are struggling at the moment to compete with New South Wales in the Bain and Shield. Apparently, there's a, a 2,000 point lead at the moment between New South Wales and Victoria. So, the Victorians will do anything to get themselves back up in contention with the mighty team from New South Wales. Did you watch the footy last night, you guys? Did you see the mighty Blues? Fixed up the ruse. And here we come. So John Adams skiing down two divisions, three divisions, 12 metre line, 55k, loves the 55. He could ski 52 if he wanted to, I think. But uh, here he goes, always very consistent, that strong lean behind the boat, nice smooth turn. He <laughs> goes, never ever let you down, goes the ever ready battery. Johnny Adams. Returns on the 11, chasing the lead there with Lee Bray. So it's a Victorian in the lead at the moment. One. The leader, Lee Bray, John Adams coming back at 11. So he needs to get more than two, which I think is uh, within his range. We'll just have a look at the trick. Now, on the other lake, we've got a Coburn everywhere. You know the Coburn's... What a great hereditary they've got in water skiing. Heritage, hereditary, you name it. And here comes young Zach. So, of course, coached by uh, Chris Coburn and Nicky Southwell. So he's got good, uh, a good background. Can trick up around the 2,000 points, I think, two or two and a half thousand points. I'll tell you what his first round is in just a moment. But we'll have a look here as he comes in. Does a few hand tricks on the way through as we come back with John Adams in just a moment. Okay, Zach over there doing some, oh no, Zachy goes down early on his hand pass. Okay, Victoria, let's have a look at Johnny Adams coming in on the 11 metre line. He's got to take the lead from Victoria with Lee Bray. He can run this, the John Adams, the superstar. He's got one, tight, it's across the number two. John Adams still in business. A little bit of a slack line. Three's on the board. Can he get across the number four? Took a hit around number three. Well done. Two and a half. Attention, please, attention. Okay, attention team managers. Under 21 trick final, men's trick final. We are moving that to the last event in the tricks after the under 17 boys. So just again, the under 21 men's tricks final will be moved to after the last event, trick under 17 boys. All right, well done, John Adams, taking the lead, two and a half. Trick scare, of course, is Zach Coburn on the other lake, a name we're going to see and hear a lot of in the future. Okay, we're getting down to the wire now. I know the open men will be a great feature here this afternoon or later on, but I tell you what, at the moment, these boys, the over 35s, are showing the way. Oh, 
<laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Queensland. Okay, Zach finishes up now. Johnny comes in. Okay, now here he comes in. 65 years of age, doesn't look a day over 75. And Johnny Adams getting the big team photo. Tell you what, it's worth it too for the man. He's a great competitor, has been all those years. And uh, I was just talking to Nick and he said, well, he's gone down to over 35 this year. Maybe next year he might ski open. Righto, Zach Coburn's on the other lake, everybody. And this young lad's got such a good background. He's got the good coaches, everything. We wait, of course, our top three seeds in the slalom. We'll be coming Banksy, Pistol Pete. Okay, let's have a look at Zach coming in now. Of course, uh, first year in this division. Nice and smooth into the 360. Now we get to the next 360. Looking good out there. Zach Coburn builds up a good score. Some top seeds still to come, of course, into the surface tricks. Okay, now we're in the top seeds now. We're in the big boys, the top three. We're skiing for a medal, and it's a 13-metre line, I believe. That Okay, Robert Banks, 5 at 11. He got in the first round. Don't forget, this is over 35 men, so it's two rounds added together. This fella is amazing. He's that strong. He's decided to, well, bugger it, I'm going to come in on a 13-metre line. He knows he's got to get right out in front to put some pressure on Coburn. And Banks, he looks good as he gets across there. To, I don't... I don't need to say a lot, do I? I'll just leave it to you. You all know what's happening out there. And there he goes on the 13. We'll return at 12 as Zach Coburn finishes his trick run. So in the tricks, old Billy Belcher's uh, next one in the under 12 boys. Billy Belcher, Jude King, Cadell Delzell, Oscar Cronin and Taj Reeves. There's still a few good trickers to come over there, but this is where the excitement is, everybody, on the dock and on the bank. Robert Banks, Pistol Pete Canal, and Chris Coburn. Three skiers to come. Is it going to go as per as per the, the ranking order? Two rounds added together. Of course, you can't afford a bubble. So Robert Banks with five at 11, but we'll let, uh, let him run the 12 first before we get too excited. So the trick course, if you look at the trick course, everybody. We've got uh, William Belcher coming up. Okay. He needs to run 12 before he has a crack at the 11 and takes the lead in the event. But I tell you what, I just, uh, he's such a consistent slalom skier, he's strong. Just turns around number one, stands up, gets early for number two. Looking good as he comes down the spray on the sun there. Absolutely magnificent sight. And Banksy cleans up. Six boys comes back on 11 and chases the lead in this event, which at the moment is two and a half on the old codger himself, Johnny Adams. Okay, coming back on an 11 metre line. And a good morning to Jen. How are you, Jen? Good. Good to see you here. You know anybody in Honolulu or Bali or somewhere like that? Vouchers. Three cars. Three skiers. Yeah. 
Okay, so the Trick Lake, if you wander over now and have a look on the Trick Lake, because while we wait for Banksy to get his breath back and get ready for the 11 metres, so he's got to put a lot, big lead over Coburn because he got uh, four on a 10, seven, five. So I well, would think Banksy would be looking to run this week. On the Trick Lake, we've got William Belcher from Tassie. So everybody, we've got a Tassie skier over there on tricks. Great to see. But coming in on the 11 metre line, his name, of course, is Rob Banks. Great, strong slalom skier. Needs to run this one to put the wind up. Chris Coburn is still standing on the dock down there. Two, he's strong. This is 11 metres. Three's on the board, he's across. Oh, look at this, look at the strength from four to five and six boys, everybody. Put your hands together. He runs the 11 metre. Okay, runs the 11. He got five in the first round, so now he's got two rounds added together. 10, 7, 5. So the pressure's on. The mighty Chris Coburn. We know that he can get... Well, Chris Coburn has actually ran into the 10, 2, 5 as well. So uh, if we could see that this weekend, it would be magnificent. The open men, of course... We'll be out a little bit later. So Williams obviously didn't have the best trick run. I'm sorry I didn't call it for you, Williams. Mum and Dad from Tassie. But we're back on the main lake. Everybody get down there. Where are all the Vickies? It's good to see Vickies doing well because they've got a long way on the Bain and Shield to catch New South Wales. And this man's going to help. But then, of course, we go to Queensland and just as good, of course, is Pistol Pete Canal. Lucas Canal, of course. The young man who would be one of the top seeds in the uh, open men. All right, everybody, we're coming in on the 10.75. What can we give Banksy? Can we put out there? I'd say a one and a half, two. You know him better than me. Let's have a look at the number one. Oh, it's tight. It's good. He's across the number two. He stretches. Can he get back? Oh, one and a half. Wow, great skiing. Absolutely magnificent ski. That's what it's all about. That was 10.75. Sage, the sage person. Strange person, that sage. <laughs> okay, on the other lake, of course, everybody, William Belcher from Tassie. Good to see Tassie. Tassie's got a team of four or five skiers here, I believe, this weekend, which is absolutely magnificent. This is going down to the wire, everybody. And what about our what about our sponsors? Where would we be without our sponsors? Of course, the magnificent Malibu bouts out on the lake. We've got McRae. We've got Wing. We've got so many. I don't think uh, Pet Focus is, so we won't go there. One and a half, official, Reflex, Wing, Malibu, KD skis, you name it. We need sponsorship, of course. And coming back now, young Williams on the trick ski. Standing up this time, of course. Same thing, second round. This is second round. A nice surface tricks out there, the 360s, the 540s. And there we go, back into the 540. Looking good out there. Well done, William. He didn't have his best start on the first one. All right. Now we go to a man a little bit like Johnny Adams. He's been around forever, the Pistol Peak Canal. because he's uh, originally from around Mildura and now he's moved up to Queensland. Be coming in on the X boys in because he's so consistent on the 13. Obviously goes to the same hairdresser as Johnny Adams. And six boys we pencil in. So Pete returns at 12. This is going right down to the wire. At the moment, Robert Banks is holding the gold medal. Bad luck, Case. Okay, so Banksy's holding the gold. 
Can pistol Pete, because Pete in the first round got six boys on the 11 metre line. So you say, how can you get six, six boys? He went through the gates and didn't have a handle when he got through them. So it's a great event, this one. It's uh, just exactly what you would call 16 competitors in the over 35 men. How good is that? It's a shame we haven't got 16 skiers in the under 10s. Okay, Vicky's on the blue mat. Come on, the team manager says, on the team mat. I wouldn't let the WA people, Glenn. Okay. Pistol Pete. Peter Canal. Of course, his young son, Lucas, will be showing his wares in the open men. He gets down into the 10-2-5 as well. 10-7-5. Right, come on, Vicky. Come on, Queensland, I should say. Peter Canal. It's a 12-metre it's a line, so again, these fellas are that experienced and uh, they know their craft so well that you just about have to pencil in six and then watch them in awe as they come down. And he'll return on the 11 and chase the lead out the moment. He's still got a bit to go to catch up with Banksy. Six boys comes back in on 11. On the trick boat on the other side of the lake, we have Jude King. Jude. The King Man is on, Jude King, he is there and, oh, it goes right down on the 15 seconds. Well done, Jude King. Okay, we're waiting now to come back for our superstars. This slalom event is exactly what you'd expect here at the over 35s. Then we go to the under 10s. Moby Gordon, Toby Thrower, Jacob Lucan and Mitchell Fletcher. Oh, good. Okay, I'm not sure what's happening here, but uh, the Victorians are doing the best to keep their morale up. Maybe, I don't know whether Glenn knows that the slalom's on. <laughs> oh, what can I say? I don't think I need to say anything. I'll probably get into trouble. So uh, 11 metres for Pistol Peak Canal. Okay, everybody, let's have a look. He's got the little bit of a head breeze. You would expect him to run it. He's got the capabilities of running it. I don't, here we go. Peter Canal, tight, number one. Two's on the board, three. I tell you what, these guys, they really do get so much behind the boat just there. And have a look at Pete, he's got five. Queensland, here goes Pistol Pete because he's got six boys. Look out, Banksy, because here we come. So Robert Banks has got one and a half boys on the 10-7-5. Now we've got a skier coming back on the 10-7-5. Bells ready, we're on our trick lake on the other side. Jude King, I'll see if we've got time to get Jude in before we bring. He'll be coming back at 10.75, have we got time? So Jude King, of course, another skier from Forbes. Good to see the team from Forbes, all coached by Jimmy Cronin. All the trick coaches. But I think we better keep our focus on the slalom. Sorry, Jude. Slalom boat just still sits and waits. We've got to wait for the mandatory time as uh, Jude King, come on, New South Wales, get down there and just give him a big support. As we look back on the slalom lake, Okay, Peter, Peter Canal coming in. He needs more than one and a half to take the lead. Can he take the gold medal at the moment off Banksy? Got one. Tight turn across the numbers. He's got two on the board. Can he take it? He does. Does he get? Oh, he got two. And I don't think he got three. I'll see what the judges say. Well done. Pete Canal. Okay, Pete. Two and two goes the score. So Pistol Pete takes the lead in the event. 
on a skerrick from Robert Banks. A Victorian and a Queensland to hold the medals at the moment. And the Jude King goes down and has a little bit of a swim. So uh, not exactly what he wanted. One competitor, everybody, the man that can run in the 10, 7, 5 and get right down it. But the pressure's on him now because we've got two skiers. Oh, my God. I, I can only call it a chookyard. I can only call it a chook yard, I'm sorry. So let's wait. Because we've got the number one seed at the moment. Queensland, Pete Canal holds the lead in the event just over from Banksy. Uh, Robert Banks is just coming up. He's, he's not too fast, he said. Just as long as I get a medal, we've got Chris Coburn. 13 metre line, walk in the park. I'll talk about something else while you watch him ski. And have a look at that. That's the way to do it, nice and easy. But he's got three passes to go before we can talk medals. New South Wales, I hope you're down on the bank somewhere. Okay, New South Wales. Now, on the uh, Trick Lake from South Australia, good to see all these, I won't call them minor states, but uh, they're minor states as far as numbers go. So, Cadell Delzell on the water. Let's have a look at Cadell coming in. He's got a couple of slide slides he brings in. He then puts in the regulation 360s out over the wake. Have we got a wake back coming up? We do. And we've got a 340. Not a 520, Gary, a 540 into the reverse. And he says, that's all I've got. That's all you're getting. Chris Coburn back at 12. All right, Chris Coburn, 12 metre line. Again, regulation pass for these guys, the big fellas. They all should be skiing in the open as far as I'm concerned. I think half of them would medal in the open. So let's have a look as he comes down. Strong slalom style there. Pulls hard across behind the wakes of the TXI and will return on the 11. So we're getting down to the business part of the section now. We've got 11 and then the challenges for the lead if he pencils the six boys in. Seven metres. Okay, what a beautiful day. Everything's looking good for another wonderful day's water skiing. Now, Ada or um, Phil, I need some information on the night. So uh, it's night jumps, fireworks, and uh, what? To, and seven o'clock start. A little bit of food, ski show as well after seven o'clock. Right. Okay, so. Seven o'clock, we've got the ski show, so that'll be good to watch. Then we've got the night jump and then the slalom runoff, okay. And then Phil's invited you all back to his caravan for a few drinks after that. So uh, that's good. He's, he's, he's got the esky loaded on the, on the budget of New South Wales. So make sure you get yourselves here tonight. A lot of food, I think. Okay, 11. We need this one. New South Wales needs the 11 then to see how he goes challenging for the lead. Very consistent man. This is round two. Two hours added together. Chris Coburn 
11 metre line. Oh, just gets across to number six a little bit. Oh, a little bit of slack rope. There you go. So not perfect, but we pencil in six boys. Now, we have the runoff, everybody. Here it comes. We have got Pistol Pete Canal on two boys. Robert Banks on one and a half. Johnny Adams sitting in there too is a little bit of a dark horse. The old Johnny Adams. We're holding the scare for review. We're, oh, we're holding the scare for review. How's your nerves? We're holding the scare for review. Lenny Cairns. Okay, the tension, the excitement, can it be? Joel O'Toole says, no, there's no problems with those gates. I checked them, they're okay. We're waiting. We're getting a review of something. And as we go back to the lake, it would be Cadell Dalzell doing his second pass as we wait for the review on the slalom. Hopefully Chris Coburn got his... Six boys that he did run. There's young Cadell looking really good out there. Of course, we're getting up towards the top seeds, the 3 2 1. And Cadell building a good score up there. There's two rounds added together for those young guys as well. As we wait for Chris Coburn to get the confirmation to come back. <laughs> oh, they do their best, don't they, the old Vickies? They do their best. You've got to admire them, really. They try their hardest. Waiting, 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 everybody, for the decision here on Chris's run. Because at the moment, Pete Canal has got the gold. Chris Coburn's got to come back and knock off with two boys, more than two boys on the 10, 7, 5 metre line. We've got Queensland, Victoria, New South Wales all along here. Great the way it should be. Okay, so we're just waiting to see Chris. You saw him take a hit on the line. Now, we believe that the uh, discrepancy here is he was called five and a half from the boat. So we'll just have to wait on the tower judges uh, to endorse. The scores were six, but we've had a five and a half from the boat. So we're just waiting to see as he went through those gates he did take the hit on the rope, so I'm pretty sure, though, that uh, we hope for New South Wales he got it. Pistol Pete Canal's going, well, maybe. <laughs> they won't dribble too much, you know. Okay, the excitement here is intense. So we've got three states involved here too, of course, which is terrific because we've got New South Wales. Okay, New South Wales, guess what? He's got six boys. So Chris Coburn, Chris Coburn is coming back now on the 10.75. He's got to get, he's got to get more than one and a half to take the Banksy out. He's got to get more than two to take Pistol Pete Canal out. He's capable of running the pass. So let's have a look. Here he comes, everybody. Get down on the edge. New South Wales, make sure you get your uh, guard of honour, Victoria or Queensland. Here we come. Chris Coburn, absolutely magnificent open skier of many years gone by. Now skiing in the 8 of 35. Needs a good setup around number one. He's got one on the board. Here he comes in. Can he get further down the line than three? Chris Coburn, can he run the pass? We've got four. And uh, three and a half. Oh, well done. Three and a half. 
How about that? And appropriate. Lots, lots and lots of applause. But I tell you what, what about the applause also for Pistol Pete Canal and Robert Banks? So well done, you guys. That made an amazing event. And now we've just got a quick change, I think, of boat crew because they'll need a better boat crew for the under 10 boys slalom. And I will be back in 30 seconds. Drew Martin, Drew Martin, if you're uh, nearby, you're required at the uh, tower. Drew Martin. Okay, back on the trick load. Now, don't leave the site, ladies and gentlemen. Don't leave the slalom lake because we've got the big league now. So the three guns over here, everybody, if you want your photos... Go and have a photo with the three gun slalomers over there. But uh, over on the other lake, we've got uh, Oscar Cronin and uh, Taj Reeves. Still tricking. The under 10 boys. We're just fueling the boat. Get a new driver. We need, of course, a lot of uh, gas in that boat to pull the four young fellas under 10. So we'll be back there in just a moment as the trick skiers continue on the Lease Lake. And we're, of course we're getting right up towards metal contention here at the moment. So we're about to have a bit of a look and see whether Oscar Cronin and Taj Reeves can hold the gold and the silver.
Park. So Taj Reeves coming in and tricking for gold. Let's have a look. Queensland, where are you? Taj Reeves coming in for his uh, round one. So top seed in the event, looking good. Plenty of air on those tricks. The back-to-backs, the wake fronts, the backs. We move right through. Now we start to get into some higher tricks here. Have we got any 540s? We've got an O. Have we got a 540, 540 outside the boat? And a 720. Puts his hand in the air, so stand up. Well done, Taj Reeves. Still waiting for the slalom boat to come back to take the big guns down on the dock. So tonight, a lot of fun to be had by all, a lot of frivolity, great way to, for all the teams to mix, have some good fun. And the boat is returning now. So the under 10 boys slalom will be next event on the water and then we'll be moving into the open women and open men. So you saw some super skiing out there before in the open, over 35, the open men, of course, when you've got names like Joel Howley out there, uh, you're going to have a lot of skiers that will be getting right down that 10.75. Joel Howley, Lucas Canal, Jack Christie, Archie Davis, Patrick Chris, Ryan, Tom Ryan, Ben Cosgriff, Tommy Bennett, all looking good. They're all capable of running right down into that 10.75. As the big slalom boat heads down to pick up the first skier, who will be from Albury, Moby Gordon. Okay. All right. The top seed, Taj Reeves. I can see the trick boat coming in the course. This is not gold medal. This is round one. But Taj has taken the lead in the seedings, of course. Let's have a look at him now. He goes into the five and the back-to-backs. This is a, a really good little trick ski by the look of it. He's nice and light on that trick ski. As he moves down a couple of slides, the back to front. Have we got the reverse back? We do. And a toe wrapping, unfortunately, just going down. But I'll tell you what, that's right on the 20 seconds there somewhere. <laughs> Lenny Gordon. All right, minutes away, ladies and gentlemen, for the big league, the big boys. Now, I'm pretty sure that we won't be starting on a 16-metre line. Okay, the boat, we're away, the under 10 boys. His name is Moby Gordon. He's uh, just turned seven, so this is his, his uh, big league, of course, here in the uh, First Nationals. He's tricks pretty good little trick skier. Hasn't quite nailed the slalom course yet, but we'll just wait and see. Can he get himself across there and get himself a nice set of boys? Oh, that was so close, but they're definitely in. And he's got one on the board. Gets across. Can he get to number two? He's got two boys. Come on, Moby Gordon. He's out there. He's pushing across there to number three. And was it inside or outside three? From me, it went well outside. Got number four. Well done, Moby. He's across the number five. First time in the big time slalom course. And there he goes. Can he get number six? He's going to have to push pretty hard. He's going to have to do a crisp. Oh, he'll get a good, he'll get a good whipping when he gets home tonight, I'll tell you that. Okay, well done, Moby Gordon. He may have even got a score. <laughs> he may have got a score of zero, I think. He may have missed his gates, but I tell you, it's good to see him out here because he tricked 600 points in the preliminary round. And um, But Slalom just quite hasn't mastered 28K, but I tell you what, have a look at Moby Gordon in 12 months' time. And he will be there. Now, we've got some great skiers still to come, though. Toby Thrower, 
Jacob Lucan and Mitchell Fletcher. Okay, Mobes' final score was a zero, missed the gates, but uh, don't think he'd be too fussed. Probably not good for his overall. Okay, maybe we'll return. Trick skiers on the other lake. Now we move now to the, oh, we've got the disabled trickers. So you want to wander over and have a look at these guys. They are amazing. Samantha Longmire, Ben Copping, uh, Ira Dalzell and uh, Richard Wesp. So if you get a chance, duck over there and uh, have a look at these guys. They are terrific to watch. A lot of, there he goes. I think he's leading in the first round is young Zaitali. Taj Mahal, the Taj Mahal. Okay, Mobes is coming back. If that boat goes any slower, I think it'll idle. Okay, well done, Mobes. Good lad. Okay. The thing is, ladies and gentlemen, of course, what we should be seeing is instead of four in under 10 slalom and 16 in over 35 men slalom, we should have 20 under 10s and 10, well, as many over 35s as you like. But we need to do something about our junior under 10 ranks. Very low numbers this year. I have can remember years ago that you'd have 10 or 15 in under 10s. Well done, Chris Coburn.
Big ski to turn. Got a couple of slides. We got the back. You notice there it's a one-handed deal, this thing. Okay, looking good. As she comes in for a, oh, have a big wake back invert too. Well done, Samantha. Well, we now need another good pass from Samantha. Will you have a look at the big fella, Spud Thrower, comes in for his second pass at 37K. The pull on the boat is enormous. You can hear the roar of the V8 when the big man turns around that boy. He's got one on the board. 37K. Come on, Tobes. Building up a good score. He's got two. He's got three. He's crossed the number four and five and six. Can we can we get behind him? Come on, the little fella from Goulburn. Got five. There he goes. He comes back in at 40K. Well done, Tobe. Jacob Lucan. Next competitor, but Toby's got another couple of passes to go. Samantha's getting back on the water over there. A little bit of skill level required with the boat team to get her all sort of organised. She'll come back in for her second pass. wide gets ready for the pull on the TXI through the gates beautiful set of gates goes the old th spud thrower he's got two on the board he's looking really good to oh big turn around number three uh, well done Toby thrower two and a half at 40 takes the lead in the event the two guys down let it go Jacob Lucan and Mitchell Fletcher Okay, we're joined by the President of New South Wales uh, Tournament Ski Division, Mr Phil Carmichael. Phil, we've had a great start to Nationals so far this year. Everything seems to be going well and of course the, uh, the Malibus are doing a great job for us. They are. We've had uh, good weather, um, everything's run smoothly, boats are performing fine. Um, so yeah, everything's running smoothly and the weather looks good for the next few days. And what have we got forward to look forward to for the, the coming few days? Uh, well, we have all our opens obviously tomorrow, so you know they start so slalom, trick and jump, so that'll be real spectacular for the the, uh, the people on the bank to watch. So, and there's talk of a, a night event as well. Yes, night event tomorrow night. So um, starting off with a ski show by the Mulwala Ski Club, um, and then a night jump, a flip off, and a slalom ski event. So and then ending with fireworks at nine o'clock. Very good. Well, thanks for your work thus far, and here's to another great year of nationals. Thank you. Pleasure.
uh, just talking to Craig Stephen about one of our great water ski sites. It's uh, probably in many years gone by. It's had a lot of nationals. Um, and that is Latrobe Water Ski Club. Beautiful site. Two lakes, and we've run many nationals down there. It used to be a little bit chilly in the mornings if you were skiing at 8 o'clock. Okay, Queensland. We now go to Jacob Lucan, and this young fella is from Queensland, and he's coming in at 43, 26 mile an hour on your old Peter Johnson rope. So this will give you an idea that he's a pretty good slalom skier for he's starting at 43. Under 10 boys, of course, and our previous two skiers, the younger ones. Now we go into the 9, 10-year-old boys with a fair bit of technique. That looks good. He'll return at 46. Takes the lead before we bring the big gun on, Mitchell Fletcher. Okay, just a short break, everybody. We've just got the disabled skiers getting themselves organised. Samantha has been through and done a very creditable run. And uh, Jacob Lucan at 46, coming back at 46K. So where's all the Queensland supporters? Get down. And this, oh, there they are on the dock. Here's the young fella, the under 10. So we'll see a lot more of this young bloke when he gets into the under-14s. He looks good out there. 26 mile an hour, 46K now. And have a look at it. He looks... Oh, he's cruising down the course on this one. And uh, there we go. Looks nearly as good as Chris Coburn out there on the water. Nice technique, everything, doing it easily. 46 46k comes back at 49 30 mile an hour start to sort out the men from the boys Okay, disabled skiers, Ben Coppings on the water. And also the young super slalom skier out there at the moment, Jacob Lukens coming back in at 49. So we're up in the big league. We're getting
uh, not quite sure where we're up to on the slalom lake there, or the trick lake, I should say. So I'll get an update there and let everybody know where we're at. Okay, so that's uh, Ben on Copen on the uh, second trick skier in the disabled division out there on the trick lake. So once I get an update, what's happening there? He'll probably get his uh, because of the time difference. Okay, Jacob gets um, an option here to just pretty much go in any speed he wants. Then he'll come back, I think, at about uh, 49k. I'll verify that for you when he gets down there. So. Probably one of the longest uh, rounds he's had in national competition. So let's wait for Jacob to come back. Just uh, a reminder about um, tonight, we have the uh, night events with a bit of show skiing, night jump, night slalom. Ada Richards, uh, if you want to have a, an opportunity to get in on that, there is a one spot that goes out for raffle in both the slalom and, and jump, I think. And five dollars a ticket it's a dollar coin donation to come in there'll be lots of food vans here the bar will be open and you'll be able to enjoy some night entertainment and all the all the money raised goes for the junior worlds Australian team as JP comes back looking nice around one Definitely got a bit of, uh, oh, and having said that, slips out at three there. Oh, so that was 49-16, two and a half boys for Jacob there. It's a pretty handy score to um, start off around one in under 10 boys. And then we've got uh, Mitchell Fletcher, New South Wales, and he'll round out that division. And then we're into open women and open men. First round. So um, this is where it all starts happening.
All right, we've got some uh, serious under 10 skiing happening now. 49 k's, 18 metre line for Mitchell Fletcher. Coming in from the northern end of the lake. The Max Kerwin Ski Lake is here. 2024 Malibu Nationals. Proudly sponsored by Wing Reflex. D3, not D3, S-Line, KDN. Let's have a go. Let's have a look at Mitchell. Nice through the gates there. Definitely been um, around this sport a while as a, as a 10 year old. Looking very nicely out there. 49 Ks is where we shorten in under 10s. As uh, Mitchell, as you would expect, a nice little warm up pass for his first pass there. So he'll go down there and shorten at 16. As we wait for our third disabled skier to come through onto the Trick Lake. So the other side of this is that um, if you have friends that aren't competitive water skiers but are water sports lovers, get them to sign up to as a community member. It's free but it gives them a say on what happens with our lakes and our waterways and everything and our sport um, in Australia. So the more that we get signed up, the more members we get um, recognised on our list, the more uh, say we have on what happens around the sport of water skiing throughout Australia. All right, Mitchell Fletcher from New South Wales coming back at 16 metres, 49 k's. It's around a very nice Okay, so it looks like we've reviewed and they're saying that he went on the inside of that boy. Which one? Of four ball, uh, which means uh, that's the end of his run. So unfortunately, they won't be happy with that. So on the trick lake, we're waiting for Ira Dalzell from South Australia in the disabled trick division. And now on the slalom lake, we move into open women's slalom round one. Sierra Nolan, Erica Hayes, Lane Maroney, Ruby DeSalvo and Sadie Ferguson. Fairly handy group of skiers there. Ready to entertain. Round one. Wind's dying off just nicely. Perfect conditions out there on the lake. Sun's working hard to warm it up for us. Very predictable breeze. And the call is straight into the open women's. Thank you very much. So the TXI will be coming back, towing Sierra Nolan, sister of those who know Karina, now living in Canada, Kamloops, I believe, in Canada. Sierra will be coming in and I'll give you a So Sierra coming in 55, 16 metres towed in by that 
beautiful Malibu TXI connecting her via the S-line rope. She just needs a good gate, good setup. First round, first pass. Should be just a nice little warm up for her. Get rid of the little bit of the jitter. Looking very comfortable out there. And we'll take six. Go down there and sit for 50 seconds. Have a sit, think about it. And come back at 14. Ira has just done her uh, first pass down here for the disabled trick on the trick lake. And she'll come back for her second round. Second pass, I should say, first round. As Karina prepares herself to come back at Sierra, sorry. <laughs> wrong, wrong Nolan. So Sierra will be coming back up 14 metres to uh, put a score on the board. First open women skier here for this weekend. All right, Sierra sets herself up, 14 metre pass. Haven't seen Sierra scary. Scary, as used to call her, but uh, Sierra skied for a while, but she's looking like and she's handling that 14 metre very easily. We'll take six and come back at 13. All right, day three, 2024 Malibu Nationals here at Max Kerwin Lakes. Just a call out to our sponsors. We've got Hargraves Joinery, Malibu Boats, of course, Reflex and Wing, S-Line providing the ropes and, of course, Malibu providing the tow boat, the TXI, on both of those lakes. A big commitment from Malibu. It's been supporting us here for over 20 years not just at national level, but uh, Malibu Series in New South Wales, Australian Masters, Australian Junior Masters, Australian Junior School. So a uh, big commitment from them and we're really happy to have them uh, do that for us. And of course, KD Skis is also out there lending us a hand. Baz Sierra comes in at 13 metres. She's got a nice one ball. It's got perfect conditions out there. Looking very strong. Yeah, lovely out to four. Nice and early for six. That's a lovely pass from Sierra. She'll come back at 12. Sierra, I think, is uh, still in the RAF. So getting around a bit. She was over at Perth. The ideal, if you were with the RAF, would be at uh, Williamtown Airport, just out of Newcastle, not too far from Telegraph Point there. Zero just goes past for her second pass on her trick round. And now I'll swap over and bring back Richard West from Western Australia. And after Richard, we'll be looking for over 45 women trickers. Round two. So it's the deciding round for that. That division with Mel Collins, Gay Maroney, Shelley McDonald, and Kelly Atkinson laying down some uh, 
Massive tricks out there on the trick lake as Sierra comes back at 12. Okay, let's see what score we've got um, Got to put on. She's the one. It's a big one ball. She leans hard over to two. She's around two. She's working hard to four. Oh, and even a SZM turn wasn't enough to get her back uh, to the guide boys there. So um, not quite sure if that's a PB, but she might be pretty happy with that. That'll get her at least three and a half, or will I say three at 12 metres. So that's a good score. The girls are going to run that down the head of them. So... So we just got a little bit of a hold on the boat there. I think they might be reviewing four ball or three ball. Not quite sure. I'll let you know. So it looks like they've paid her four ball on the review. So four at 12, that'll be pretty happy. All right, if we look to the look to the um, left-hand side, the north side of the lake, New South Wales, Erica Hayes is coming in 55 k's, 16 metres, open women, second skier away in the open women's class. And the conditions holding out just nicely now, just a Breath of wind, slightly ahead. Erica should run this fairly comfortably. It's a nice little warm up pass. And as we see, Erica very comfortably runs that 16 metre line as uh, Westie from Western Australia comes in for his first pass in a disabled trick. So Erica returning at uh, 14. So 50, 55 second drop time down there at, the, at uh, each end. Let the water settle a little bit as they bring in the skier for their second and third passes. These open divisions are pretty much a shortening every time they successfully navigate the six boys in that course. So this is 14.25 metres, 28 off in the old language, 34 mile an hour, 55k as Erica comes in. Nice one ball, looking early for two. She's out there looking in very good form. These conditions and this lake skis beautifully when it's just a light little, that was a light little tail breeze, head tail. Not too much to talk about, probably three to five K. No birds? No, not a lot of birds. Ducks are sort of just hovering and watching the setup. At each end. 
that uh, a very nice looking pass there for Erica and she'll be returning at 13 metres as we go over to the Trick Lake and we'll find Mr West from South Australia coming in for his second pass of his first round. So that's the second round of uh, Disabled Tricks. He'll, he'll be our last skier on that lake and then we'll be into the over 45 women trick on, on Lake 2, the Trick Lake. Okay, Erica Hayes, 13 metres, green. Got a nice little head breeze to, to work into. All skiers love a little bit of a head breeze. Looking very comfortably, snapping that ski around. Four, five, out to six, and she'll be coming back at 12 metres. So Richard West coming down for his round two, second pass in trick on the trick lake. And that'll conclude the uh, trick event for the disabled for this nationals. Very complex sort of setup with the disabled. There's MP1s, MP3s, twos. So uh, a lot of divisions to cater for the ability of the skier, what they can use to... Okay, so we head back. Erica is coming back at 12 metres line. Let's see what Erica can put on the board. She needs a piece four ball. Let's see. Oh, nice snap around one. Took a big bite out of and a good snap around two. No, but a little bit too much and could not get any more than that. She started off pretty well, probably took a bit much, but um, Erica being an overall skier, very handy trick skier. In fact, probably uh, the number one trick skier that we have here in the women's division. She has a two at 12. And of course, don't forget the open round as with under 17s and under 21s is a seeding round. So this just puts them in a position to see what they need to chase for a podium position for the final round in Slalom, which is Sunday. Don't forget, if you are looking for a coffee, you will need to go back into town. So uh, the coffee van's back tomorrow. Previous engagement or commitment means they're not here today. So, But, uh, yeah, it's definitely a trip back into town if you're desperate for a coffee. Otherwise, get on the Coca-Cola full strength. Got enough caffeine in that to keep you going. Okay, Victorians, it's your turn in the open women. Lane Moroni, Victoria. So Lane's coming in at 55, 16. Same start length as the previous two girls. Lane Moroni from Victoria. Let's see. This should be just a warm up pass for her. Skis here quite often. 
quite often to quite a lot. So should know the conditions out there, how that water feels, what she needs to do to ski deeper into that 12 line and take the lead. So that's 16, she'll be coming back at 14. Very comfortable pass there for Lane. as Lane gathers his thoughts down there at the south end of the lake, come back at um, 14 metres. The under, uh, over, under, over 45 women trickers are preparing themselves on the trick lake. And I think it's Gay Maroney should be first one away there. So we've got mum tricking on one lake and Lane, the daughter, slaloming on the other. She comes back at 14. This 14 pass should be a walk on the park for um, Lane as well. You can see how early she is there for three ball and four. So not too much of a, a problem there. Does that fairly easily. She'll come back at 13. And her first tricker is actually Mel Collins from... Queensland. <laughs> you can take over if I can't grab it if you want. Looks like the trick boat's going down to refuel, so there'll be a slight delay on Lake 2. For the, let the over 45 women think about their, their passes and get themselves set up. We'll move back to Lake 1. Salem Lake, Lane Moroney be coming back at 13 metres. Had a nice little 50 second drop there to think about what she needs to do. Conditions could not be any better. Whatever breeze is there is a head breeze from this end. And that Malibu will pull her in. Here she comes through the gates. Nice looking one ball. Early as you like over to the two. Lens back and away from that boat over to three. Lovely out of four. And that's probably the nicest 13 I've seen Lane run. So... Can't wait to see what she does at 12 metres. She's got... Okay, Lane, coming back at 12 metre line. Let's see what Laney can do here. She's got to get um, way down to four, maybe five, even run it. 
Let's see what she can do. Through the gates. Oh, nice hit out of one ball. It's really strong out of two. Oh, I don't know what quite happened there, but uh, she was out of three. She'll take three. As I said, this is just a preliminary uh, seeding round, so there's no need to um, go for it just yet. But that'll put her in and around three at 12, which is the same as Sarah. So, yeah, it's official. It's 3 at 12. So, a couple at 3 at 12. Then, now we have the last of our open women skiers for round one for this weekend. Sadie Ferguson from Queensland. Spending a little bit of time over in Western Australia with the Greens and also uh, now... In Florida, I see she spent a bit of time in Florida as well this uh, last year. So Marwala and southern New South Wales, Riverina area, putting on the weather for us. It's been pretty good all week, even for way back to last Monday for the Famils. A little bit, little bit of uh, windy predictability or non-predictability yesterday, but still not too bad. Still a lot of good scores on the board. Um, saw Christy Appleton do a two, three metre PB and jump 45 and a half. But it's not about jump now, it's about slalom as Sadie Ferguson comes back. Open wins, women's slalom. Okay, so Sadie's starting at 16 as well. Get a bit of a look and a bit of a feel. Get rid of those uh, first round nerves. This should be um, just a nice little settler for Sadie. Oh, it's just Ruby, is it? Sorry, Ruby De Silva. Got my Queenslanders mixed up there. So, good little uh, pass there for Ruby. Sorry, Ruby. Peter Cornell. Peter Cornell. Uh, your re services are required in the trick tower. If you can make your way, that would be really good. So Ruby De Silva returning 14.25. Hardly any wind or breeze to talk about. I like the uh, previous girls before I expect that this 14 will be pretty much a sort of second warm up pass for her, just building into what she needs to do. Got a big lean to get over the two ball there. Uh, she seems to got it back under under control. And, uh, yeah, a little bit of slack out of five as well. But, again, good enough to keep uh, that line and ski out through the gates for six. So she'll come back at 13.
Okay, it looks like the uh, trick boat is back at the start dock as uh, Ruby De Silva comes in at uh, 13 metres. We'll have uh, over 45 women's starting on the um, the trick lake there. Ruby's not quite sure what her PB is, but uh, looking quite comfortable out there on this 13 metre line. Nice and early, waiting for four ball. Nice pull over to six and out of the gates she goes and she'll be returning at 12 from the southern end so all the girls are sort of in the middle of 12 here so any piece of um, four ball or five at 12 meters will get ruby at the top of the uh, the board to ski in the finals All right, so not sure what's happening there with uh, the trick lake. I'll try and get an update with you. That doesn't look like over 45 women's to me. All right, sorry about that. Uh, there was a slight change there. It's over 21 women. And then we'll be into over 45. As we wait for Ruby to come back on her 12 metre pass. So we've just got a little bit of a, a pause in proceedings on the Slalom Lake while we go through the review process. I'll give you an update on what happens there. So they are reviewing Ruby's gates. As our over 21 women's trigger comes back for her second pass, rope on toe. Okay, so it is six for Ruby. She must have been mighty close. It looked all right to me, but uh, I'm not the judge. So Ruby coming back at 12 metres. Let's see what she can get off. She needs to run deep down here. All stands up a little bit out of one ball. Puts it back down again around two. She worked hard to get over to the three. She is around four. Let's see if she can run this. She's around five. A lot of slack out of five. Can she pull it out to six? She can. And there you go, Ruby De Silva runs 12 metres. And a little bit of a fist pump there at the end. She'll be pretty happy with that. And she'll come back 11 to 5.
So everything looking good there. Six official scores so far for Ruby De Silva from Queensland. She'll be coming back at 11.25. Has a little bit of time to think about what she needs to do. Put some pressure on Sadie. As that Malibu TXI powers up, bringing a first of our open women into 11 to 5 metre run. Let's see what Sadie can, Sadie, Ruby can do on this. Nice gates, round one. Or stands up at one and works hard over to two, but from this angle in the sunlight, can't see what she got out there, but she'll be pretty happy with that. At least a one at 11 to 5 for Ruby as we'll be going straight into the open men. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Sadie Ferguson <laughs> is next. She's the last of our skiers. Bit of heat stroke here for uh, being out here for three days. All right, the Queenslanders give her a uh, a warm welcome back onto the onto the uh, bank there. One at eleven, she'll be pretty happy with that. And now it's down to our last open women's skier, Sadie Ferguson. And I can tell you categorically that. Over 45 women's with Mel Collins is on the water now with some double trick surface turns. Looking very good out there. The old Mel from Queensland. As our slalom boat heads back to pick up Sadie Ferguson from Queensland as well. So we've got two Queenslanders operating on both lakes now. Mel Collins and over 45s, first over 45 tricker away. And Sadie Ferguson, the last of our open women skiers before we head into open men. Big field of open men. 15 skiers. And a lot of competition there, all the way down to Joel Howley and Lucas Cornell, Jack Christie, Archie Davis, Patrick Chris. All right, Sadie coming in at 14 metres. So this 14 metre pass should be, again, first pass for just about all, everybody in the slalom event should be just a nice little warm up pass. Cannot complain about the conditions out here. This ski lake skis beautifully. It is not wind affected. We're looking at 30 degrees as a high temperature today. Feels like it's pretty close to it now. And Sadie, takes a six ball 40 meter run she'll come back at 13 from the southern end
And it is uh, unseasonally warm there uh, for down this way to be 30 degrees uh, at the start of Easter. But it is a late, uh, early Easter for us. So uh, Mel will be coming back for a po second pass as um, Sadie Ferguson should be just coming in now to the gates there for her 13 metres. Nice and early there for three and four. Yeah, looking great out of five and over to six. So she'll take that. Now her confidence is up. Come back at 12. She'll want to run this and go very deep 11. Oh, there's a fall there early in um, Mel's pass there. But... Um, She'll be happy and spend uh, four or five years since Mel's been at the Nationals, so she'll take that away. She does three events, probably one of the rare people in uh, age divisions overs that... Uh, over 65 alone. OK, just, just a uh, keep your eye for you. Over 65 men, just keep a, a note on there is a scheduling change. You'll be running at the end of the day after over 75. So you've now, in slalom that is, so instead of um, after the crew change and running before over 65 women, you'll be running uh, at the end of the day in slalom for the over 70 men. So the boat will go down there and pick up, I think Lane, not Lane, Lane Marioni's mum, Gay Maroney, as Sadie, Ferguson from Queensland comes in for her 12 metre line. Nice one ball at 12. Waiting nice and early for two. Looking very good out of three. Listening to that ski really starting to do its job out there. Listening to it swish and then a little pop out of six. And that's um, 12 metres for Sadie. She'll be coming back at 11. And she just needs a little piece of two ball and then she knows she can go into the final as top seed. So, Victorians, Gabe Maroney is, uh, should be on the water next to come in for her trick run for round two. As Sadie sits down at the south end of the lake, back towards the Mawala end, to bring in an 11 2 5. So. All right, Sadie Ferguson, 11 2 5, Queenslanders. Let's see what she can bring in for you. She sets herself up nicely for the gates. Stands up a little around one ball. Over the two. Lovely out of two. Looking really good, strong in the four ball there. Really just over cranked that to a little bit too much. Didn't really need to take that much out of there. But she will be happy she can take that as probably three and a half at um, 12. No, sorry, 11. And that'll put her in top seed as we move into open men's. All right, guys, if we can, please, just we're going to, we've got a bit of an announcement to make. I'd like, uh, Noel, where's Noel? Noel's going to address Noel Gordon from Malibu Boats. What are you, engineering, yeah. en engineer something. 
who wants to uh, address some of the issues and some of the concerns people have had about Malibu boats over the past few weeks. There's been some uh, news, but uh, I think the news that we're going to break here this afternoon or this morning uh, is going to put all those rumours to rest. Noel, what's, uh, what's, the, uh, what's the news we need to break? Thanks. Thanks, Jared. Thanks for putting me on the spot like that. Um, yeah, look, Malibu's got a wonderful history supporting water sports in Australia, tournament skiing. And uh, we just announced that we'll sponsor the Nationals event through to 2030. Uh, show our support. So there you go. All those namesayers online, get rid of them. Got no idea. And Mr Quinn, how does that make uh, Wawa or Australia feel about having uh, the support of Malibu boats for through to 2030? I oh, mate, it's great to um, have them back on board for the next five years. But, you know, apart from that, they've been, you know, supporting our sport for many, many years. Uh, you know, the New South Wales Malibu series, I think, is 20, 25 years, uh, our junior development. So it's great to have them involved at this level and uh, hopefully we keep um, running this direction for many years to come. Well, the boats have uh, worked flawlessly so far over the weekend. Noel, what is anything else you want to say from, uh, from the team, all the team at Malibu? Uh, look out for the TXI 25. We've got some improvements coming. TXI 25. I bet you Darren Butler's already got his name on one of those, hasn't he? Bloody, of course he would. All right, put your hands together, folks, for Malibu boats going all the way through to 2030. We'll make those announcements over the next few days. But no, thanks very much, Noel. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Let's see open men's. Let's fire up. Come on, Craig. No mucking around here. No mucking around, I caught that. Good throw too, um, Jared. <laughs> yeah, yes, you're definitely um, number one in the tossing department. But um, that is ter terrific news there for Malibu to uh, commit to our sport for the next, well, I'm saying that's six years, not just five years. My, I think 2024, the... Um, Yes, uh, so just a slight interruption there. That is fantastic news. So it's going to keep the TXI in the forefront of tournament water skiing in Australia for some time to come. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about that and uh, so should anybody who is a Malibu TXI owner. Um, All right, so Sadie's down there. She's pretty happy. A little, little bit off her PB, but uh, probably uh, the best woman skier in Australia in slalom jump we have at the moment. So the Malibu TXI, Malibu supporting us. I don't know how many years that will go up to now, but uh, 2030... Wish our power companies were still running that long. Um, but it's just refueling there, so I have a slight break in proceedings. Before we go into Open Men, Open Men event, 15 skiers, starting with uh, Callan Ashcroft, New South Wales, Lockie Butlin, New South Wales, Alexi Werner, Victoria, Finn Sheehy, Queensland, Mitchell Barber, Victoria, Joel O'Toole, Mitchell Barber, sorry, New South Wales, Joel O'Toole, O'Toole, New South Wales, Corey Saddington, Victoria, and a group of Victorians. Corey, Thomas Bennett, Ben Cosgriff, Ryan Thomas, Patrick Crisp, all from Victoria. Archie Davis, ACT, Jack Christie, Victoria, Lucas Cornell, Queensland, and finally Joel Howley, Queensland. All right. Now, if you're missing a phone, looks like an iPhone. Yep. Rick, what happened? 
whoever you are, you've got to... Uh, from New South Wales, not too far away, Wagga Wagga. There's uh, quite a few Ashcross competing here this weekend. His sister, JC, his dad, Graham. So it uh, just adds to the enjoyment of, uh, of a family sport that we can all enjoy. Not many sports that you can get into where all the family can come to a nationals and compete. Or even on the weekend tournaments, it's normally the kids in the morning and the dads in the afternoon if they play football or cricket, or not at all. So the wind just picking up a little bit here. It's not predicted to be anything too severe, not like yesterday. So we might get a breeze around about the five to six K mark, but it's uh, going to come in as a uh, tail behind Callum. As Callum uh, prepares and sets himself up for the gates. 14 metres shouldn't be too much of a problem for Callum here. Just wants to get in that, that first round with a couple of easy 16 and 14s. And then start working the 13 and 12. So out as expected, Callum, easy as you like. Six boys will go down have about a minute drop and then come back at 13 metres. So the wings have set up shop down there in, in front of the uh, tower here on the slalom side of the lake, slalom side. So if you want to have a look at what the, the new reflex um, slalom bilings look like and set up uh, the plate set up, or you just want a reflex T-shirt, wing hat, go and see Robin Bromwin down there, been great supporters of our sport for as long as I can remember, even before I can remember, and uh, a great skiing family. All right, Glenn Hayes, Glenn Hayes, uh, if you're in speaker distance,
Can you please make your way to the tower? The Chief Judge would like to uh, have a chat to you. Glenn Hayes. So, TXI, Malibu TXI, response. Bring in Callum at 15. Oh. Nice little head breeze there for Callum. 58k, 13, easy as you like. Nice and early over to 5 and 6. Go down there and have a think about what it's like to ski 12 metres. So we're still into over 45 women on the lake here. This looks like um, Caitlin McDonald, maybe. Not Caitlin, that's uh, the daughter, mum, Shelley, Shelley McDonald. And as I say that, has a look at the fish. But uh, quite deep into her pass, so should be pretty happy with that. And uh, we'll come back for her second pass. Beautiful conditions here at the Max Kerwin Water Ski Park. Part of the Mawala Water Ski Club complex. Beautiful club rooms and facilities out on the lake, the main lake at Mawala. Great club to be a member of. As Callum comes into 12, let's see what he's at at 12. So he's got a nice bomb ball, nice set up there over the two. Stands up a little bit out of two, deep over to three. He's going to be late on four, and uh, as we say that, three and a half, I think, is all she wrote there for Callum. Uh, three and three and a half. So your next skier, New South Wales. Two in a row, Lockie Butlin. She'll be coming in from the start dock end, the northern end of the lake facility here. So just... Uh, can't wait to see what that um, those enhancements, those 2025 boat enhancements are going to be like with the TXI. Hopefully we can uh, get some more information about what that's going to be and what that's going to look like from uh, Mr Gordon there from Malibu. We'll, uh, be, uh, now he's made that announcement, I'm sure he'll be a lot of people wanting to talk to him. All right, as we talk about uh, response TXIs, the Malibu powers up, bringing in Lockie Butlin, connected to that boat via an S-line rope. Another provider that's going to be with us for a very long time as well. So tournament skiing looking very good. 16 metre pass should be a nice little nerve settler for uh, Lockie. Just out of under 17s for the last 12 months or so now. So he's an under 21 hope, but... Um, is open qualified in this event, so as we all like, see it the best against the best. So as we head over to uh, the Trick Lake here, Shelly uh, has just done her second pass there. I can't see her. Oh, there she is. So she looks like she got pretty deep in 
into a second round, um, second pass as they go to pick up the uh, final skier in this division in trick over 45 women's, which will be Kelly Atkinson. Tricked over 2,000 points yesterday, which I think puts her in PB territory. As on the Slalom Lake, Lockie Butlin comes back at 14 metres. Not a breath of wind out there at the moment, so uh, just needs to set this up nicely. Nice strong gate, early one ball. Waiting for two. Again for three. Not looking in too much trouble there at all, and you wouldn't expect it at 14 metres. So Lockie will go down there, have a think about it. Come back on the green. As uh, we wait up on the uh, trick break to bring in Kelly Atkinson. So, Victorians, you've got uh, a potential gold medal happening on this lake. Oh. Oh. Shelley has to do here, sorry, Shelley, uh, Kelly has to do here is stand this pass up and I can pretty much guarantee you she'll take the gold medal in uh, over 45 women's trick. So come on, Victorias, get over here and get behind her. Okay, so Kelly comes in the course, so she stands up these pass. She'll pretty much be taking home gold in the over 45 women. So looking very comfortable out there with the surface turns. Wake back, wake front, wake back, reverse, back. As she goes, yes, I think that's your gold medalist there. We'll see what she does on the second round. As Lockie Butlin comes in now at 13. Just a slight little breeze. Breeze has uh, picked up there, but nothing with assistance for Lockie. Looking very good out there, I must say. Nice and early to five, and uh, as easy as you like, around six. He'll sit down there and come back at 12, and um, All right, so it looks like Kelly's uh, got uh, pretty deep into her first round, first pass there. Again, she probably only needs to get halfway down this one if she hasn't already um, ticked over the goals. Two rounds added together in over 45 women's trick. So given the score that she had yesterday over 22.30, she's uh, well ahead of the other ladies in that division. So, Lockie Butlin coming back on the blue line, 12 metres. Probably a bit of competition down this, uh, this end of the list there between Lockie and Callan. So, he wants, uh, he wants a piece of four. He wants to get over to five. He's got to get uh, better than three and a half to go ahead of Callan Ashcroft. So the TXI powers up, coming in from the southern end there. Lockie Butlin sets up nicely for his gates. Again, beautiful conditions out there in the water. Nice one ball, a little bit of tail. Gets it back into control under over to the three. Looking good at four. He's going to run this. Oh, damn, sorry about that, Lockie. I didn't mean to say that too early, but definitely uh, puts him up there in PB territory. So uh, four and a half, that's a PB for Lockie, but as all skiers, especially slalom skiers, would say, I could have run that. No, why am I sitting here swimming back? I should be coming back. That's something else. But, yeah, good stuff, Lockie. 
Uh, Kelly Atkinson. So, Vicky's Kelly Atkinson sounds like she's coming back in and she's gone down early, but I don't think uh, that's going to affect the, uh, the result too much. Might make it a bit close between her and Shelley. So, uh, we'll see what happens with that score. So our slalom boat's come, coming in now and that should have Alexi Werner on there. Alexi, another skier just out of under 17s uh, with an open men's rating, so straight into open men. Let's not worry about under 21s, let's get into... So he would have started at 16, he'll come back at 14. So I can hear the roar of the MDI engine in that Malibu response TXI come down from the southern end. Alexi Werner, Victoria. Come on, Vicky. So we've seen Kelly on one side. Now we've got Alexi on this side. Let's get behind him. He's coming back at 14. He's been running this fairly easily, so this should be a walk in the park for him. Just another little warm-up pass. Beautiful conditions out there. You cannot last for anything better. And loving it. As he goes down there, he will be returning 13 green. As we go over to another Victorian on the trick lake there with uh, Christine Stephen. Out there uh, in over 55 women's trick. Leading the competition at the moment in this division. Nice little wake front, wake back front and then she'll go into an O and now a reverse O. Let's see how she goes and she's nailed that. She'll be coming back and I know exactly what she wants to do. She wants to get that five going. So um, good stuff there Christine, Steve and Victoria. But let's go to the uh, supreme end of this day today with the open men. Alexi Werner Two successful passes under his belt. First time at Nationals in Open. TXI quickly up the speed with that massive MDI on there. Nice setup for the gates. Nice and early for one. A little bit of a pull in a two. Skyash definitely got the one three side fix up. A little bit late on five, but uh, as easy as you like around six. Nice strong skiing there from Alexi. So it's now 12 metres. So I can tell you, these. Between Alexi, Lockie and Callan, there's a, and probably a couple in under 17s, so there's still a bit of competition going in there around this 12 metre mark. I think from a Victorian side, Oscar, PB yesterday with uh, four and a half at uh, 12, pretty happy with that. So um, 
I'm thinking Alexia would want to get better than that to have uh, bragging rights over you. It should be, but um, let's see what happens. So I can hear the trick boat coming back with Christine Stephen on there from Victoria, over 55 women's. She's going to try and work that uh, that five out. She's calling for more more speed so she can get into a flip, but I think she might be out of time. Two stand-up passes there for Chrissy, so she'll be pretty happy. As Alexi comes back, works hard out of two. Over at the three, is he going to SZ this to get three? Yes, he has. So that's three at 12. Four, sorry. Four for Alexi. I lost count. Too much action happening over on the trick lake there. Had to come back and then got out of count. We'll see Eddie out here, Lee, next year. You reckon? Eddie, Eddie Emmons, watch, watch for that name. Five years old he was, went in his first tournament uh, two weeks ago down at Latrobe. Nailed it. Under six boys, novice. Very exciting to see some uh, really young skiers coming up through Victoria that you may see over the next couple of years. So, Jet Sheehy from Queensland. Very handy skier, Jet. He will be coming in at 14 metres, 58 k's. 58 k's is standard speed that you minimum speed that you can do in open ends anyway so which is 36 miles an hour in the old language 14 meters 28 off so this should be just the opener get rid of those nerves get the feel of the body get everything right So if you're looking for that, uh, to buy a raffle ticket to get one of that last spot in tonight's night jump and night slalom events, I just saw Ada Richards walk past. Uh, that draw is, hope, is uh, happening, I think, directly after the open men. So you've probably got about an hour and a bit to get a ticket. As I said, it's $5 a ticket. It's a raffle to get that last, last spot. All the money generated from tonight, all the profits from generated from tonight go to the Junior World Teams that's representing us in Canada in July, later this year, Calgary, I think we're going to. And don't forget the canteen is open. We don't have coffee here this weekend, uh, today. We do tomorrow and uh, Monday as Jet comes in now. This is 13 metres. Not a breath of wind out there. As I cannot say often how beautiful this place is when it's like this. So Jet looking very good at this pass. Uh, that's six. So he'll be coming back at 12. So that'll be uh, the first ski we'll see a 12 metre pass coming uh, from the northern end of the lake. I'm sorry, I've got Jet on my mind. It's Finn, not Jet. Finn She. One of the problems when we have a family sport, too many people with the surnames the same, keeps us commentators on our toes.
So, Finn, she, so, we'll get that right. Coming back at 12 metres. And uh, just like you planned it, a little bit of a headwind has uh, come up here for Finn. So, uh, that will only do nothing more than make him feel really happy if he's picked up that that's the case. It's not much, but uh, just enough to, to help you out here. As uh, Finn comes in, sets himself up for the gates. Oh, nice one. Nice and early for two. He's looking all over this before I say that. Three ball. Just took a little bit more than what he needed to. He was looking good into three. Real good. So he mightn't be all that happy with that given the setup that he got. But he's got a score on the board, three at 12. So our first four skiers are all within a ball, ball and a half of each other. There's uh, Mitchell Barber, could be our next skier on the Slalom Lake from New South Wales. Next skiers, two skiers from New South Wales and then we're into all Victorians right down to Archie Davis's breaks that uh, pattern. So I saw uh, Nick Adams uh, floating around here somewhere in a moon boot. Had a bit of a crash at Moomba a few weeks ago and has um, done a bit of a fracture in his tibia down at the ankle. No surgery required, just a bit of rest and repair. So he'll be back. He'll be back next year, I'm sure, and um, doing his regular things around the traps. Still coaching that Moodamir, so if you're after a bit of coaching, go see Nick before he disappears overseas. Also, uh, Nick's been a sponsor of our bibs, the Victorian bibs, that is. So uh, good on you, Nick. Really uh, great to have your support behind us. All right, over with, if you're uh, into some tricking... We've got our over 35 women's tricks opening up with uh, Nikki Coburn coming in for New South Wales on that trick lake. Okay, yeah. Uh, Looks like we've got Joel O'Toole coming in now in New South Wales. I'm not quite sure what's happened to Mitch. So I'm assuming that's 14 for Joel O'Toole. Yeah, so that was a 16 metre start, 58 for Joel. Don't know what happened to Mitchell, but it's um, Joel O'Toole out there on the water. He's been spending a bit of time down here south.
Okay, so uh, just keep your eye on the schedule and I'll announce that after Joel comes in on his 14 metre pass. Alright, so that's a pretty nice pass there, as you'd expect for Joel, 14 metre line. So, under 17 trickers, under 17 trickers, just uh, keep your eye on the schedule. You are before the under 21s, so I believe that's a change in the order. So, under 17 boys trickers, you're up after the um, crew change, so it'll be under 17, then O under 21s. So uh, just keep an eye on that. All be aware of that. Yeah, and uh, just had a quick chat to uh, Nick Adams. He will be around the next couple of weeks before he disappears overseas. So if you're looking for a bit of coaching locally around here, uh, catch up with Nick before he, he goes overseas and um, been a good supporter of, uh, of, of this event. One of our great slalomers, both nationally and internationally. So Joel O'Toole from New South Wales will be coming in at 13 metres. Nice early one ball. Looking good out of two, that's all I've got to say that. There's nothing wrong with this so far. And easy as you like, out to six and coming back at 12. Okay, Joel O'Toole looking pretty comfortable out there. He'll be coming back at 12. And uh, probably, if I remember, this may be the last time, but as far as uh, under-17s triggers are concerned, there has been a scheduled change. You will be skiing before under-21s. So pretty much after the crew change on the trick lake, you guys are up. Don't forget the canteen is open for business. Doing, doing a great job down there, providing us all with food. Look at the crowd down here. It's fantastic to see from up here how many people are here to watch these uh, open skiers as Joel comes back at 12. So he's looking to get over to five ball here just to show us what we can do. Really nice one ball. That's the nice one ball I've seen. Oh, and then as I say that, just pops the handle through the wash. All right, Vickies. It's your event for the, about the next six skiers. We've got Corey Saddington, Thomas Bennett, Ben Cosgriff, Tom Ryan, Patrick Crisp, all ready to go on the, on the slalom lake. So let's get over there and get behind them, you Victorians. Grab a hamburger or a dimmy. Make yourself comfortable. Shall we come down to...
All right, Corey Saddington. Skis at Bridgewater, Victoria. Three eventer, loves his jump, loves his slalom. Loves his dog, Ruby. Anyway, he's out there skiing. Should be a nice little nerve settler for Corey. You don't need to call too much there. You can all see it out there. He's doing that pretty easily. Okay, Corey uh, opened up with a 14 metre line there, made that look pretty easy. Coming back at 13. Water conditions and wind conditions are nothing but ideal. So, we've got probably the, the best slalom tournament boat out there that we've got that's Malibu response, TXI. Corey's connected to it via an S-line rope. Two products that are going to be with us for some time to come, so get behind them. And get behind Corey, you Victorians, as he comes in as 13. Looking very comfortable out there for his first three. Easy as you like over to five. Pulls that rope and handle in, got nice line control and out through the gates for six. He'll be coming back at 12. So this open event today is a preliminary round for seeding for the final tomorrow. So given the conditions are going to be like this for today and tomorrow and possibly Monday as well, make sure you're out here. There's a great um, crowd here today. Knocking a 1,000 people, I reckon. Wayne, don't you reckon? Easily a 1,000 people out here today. And um, I mean, with 208 competitors... Just their support crew is half that anyway. So really good to see. Nice warm conditions. I'm sure that uh, bar will be open this afternoon. Be able to participate in a beverage or two. As now we watch Corey come in from the northern end of the lake. 13, no, 12 metre line, sorry. Nice one ball. He set himself up well at three over to four, and he's run that. He'll be really happy with that. That's a 12-metre pass under his belt. First one today in open men's to ski into 11-metre line. So he'll be coming back from the southern end at 11. I'm not sure what Corey's PB is. I think it's a two, two and a half at this line length. It's always great competition in Victoria between uh, Corey and Corey Saddington and Ben Cosgriff. Started about the same time. We were about the same and jump about the same in slalom. So always good to see what happens in our state titles between those two. But this is a Nationals, 2024 Malibu Water Ski Nationals. 
hosted here by Max Kerwin's Water Ski Lakes Mawala Water Ski Club. And as I said, even if you're not a competitor or you've got friends that ski but don't compete, get them to sign up as a community member to Wawa. Lift those numbers. Let, let our politicians and our uh, authorities know what we're like as a sport. So here comes Corey. Nice one ball. Nice setup for one. Oh, well, bit of a fin blow out. He knows that he didn't have to take that much out there, but... He'll be pretty happy with that. One and a half at, third, at 11. So, Tommy Bennett. Skis a lot here at, uh, at these lakes, so very familiar with how this works. All right, Tom Bennett is getting called in now from the uh, northern end of the lake. Fourteen metres, 58 k's, 28 off, 36 mile an hour, however you want to call it. Should be a nice little uh, nerve settler for Tom. Skis here a lot. Pretty much his home site. And uh, a very easy pass there, makes it look easy. There's a few of us around that would love to be able to ski like that. Nice work, Tom. So, as I said, Victorians, you got the next, um, well, you've just seen Corey. So you got another three or four Victorians out there skiing at the moment. Christy Appleton, Christy Appleton, you're required in the tower. All right, Tom, Tom Bennett from Victoria, returning from the southern end, the Marwala end of town. Thirteen meters. See his dad down there, Darren, an interested spectator of uh, what's going to happen here. So, yeah, nice one ball for for Tom. Nice out of five, nice and early to six. He'll be pretty happy with that. He's settled. So uh, now this is a 12 metre run. He'll be coming back at 12.
All right, uh, just letting the water settle there. It's, um, looks like it's a little bit longer than the 50 seconds we've had uh, the last couple of days. Slalom has been running ahead of schedule, so uh, they're probably uh, giving us a bit more time to let things settle down. But this lake settles pretty quickly as Tom comes through on the 12 metre line. Big pull out of two ball and a little bit too much. And uh, that's all she can do on the blue. Which is two. So next skier on the water should be Ben Cosgriff, but I know he's been having a bit of a hip problem. So I'm not sure if they is skiing or not skiing, but um, we'll soon I'll keep you up to date with that in a short minute. All right, can't believe this. We're just, uh, going, heading into the last month of autumn. And here we are in the southern part of Australia and it's just after midday and it's 30 degrees. That is almost like we've ordered that, especially. So that looks like the start of under 17s out there with uh, Finn Mitchell. So... South Australians, you're on the Trick Lake. All right, so that is Ben, ben Cosgriff on the, next on the water, 14 metres from Victoria. As I said before, I know he's nursing a bit of a hip injury, so it'll be interesting to see how he does go. But uh, he's a tough competitor. As the Queenlanders would say, you have to be tough to ski in Victoria. This will be a nice little uh, nerve settler for him, like most of the, this first pass is for these open skiers. They've been around long enough now to uh, now to know exactly what to do with this first one. Not let it, not over ski it. Just get out there, have a bit of a feel, feel what the body's doing, feel what the lake's doing, feel the boat. Probably get a second one and then get serious on the third and fourth pass. So uh, the boat will drop down there for another 30 seconds as uh, Ben will come back on a 13 metre line. Give you an update what's happening over here on the uh, Trick Lake. Looks like uh, Finn Mitchell come back for his second pass. I think he's the first of the uh, under 17 boys trickers off. So I don't have a list of uh, the tricks for under 17. So we'll kick on the open men's slalom lake here with Ben Cosgriff, 13 metres. Oh, nice tight one ball there. Looking good. Nice and early as you like. That is an easy 13 metre pass. Not bad. Not bad at all for a guy with uh, a bit nurse and a hip. So I uh, don't... Be the last time I talk about that. 
So Ben will come back at uh, 12. I know he can run this and get into 11, so that's what he'll be attempting to do. But as I said, this is a prelim round. All the throw everything at it should be tomorrow. You don't want to hurt yourself by uh, getting trying to get that extra half a boy unnecessarily. Today's not the day to do it. Although sometimes it's like white line fever, the brain and the body don't quite connect properly. So in a short moment, I'm going to hand over to Rob Wing and uh, after he has something to eat there, and let him finish off the top uh, half a dozen openers. As uh, after open is the over 55 men's division. 20 skiers in that one. And as Gary was pointing out before, there's 20 in that one. I think it was 16 in um, over 35s. Hopefully that uh, will uh, turn into a lot of juniors coming through in the years to come. So, uh, Ben Cosgriff, nice set up there through the gates. Looking good out of one ball. Pulls hard over to five and he got deep, but I know he wanted to run that. Throws the fists in the air, slaps the water. All right, looks like it's uh, four and a half for Ben. So, as we've said many a times, under 21s, opens and under 17s, they're all about the final round. It's no use getting too upset with uh, the prelim round. As long as you've got a score on the board and the places you're somewhere in the order, that's all you need. Go home and have a think about what you're going to do in the final. to quite a tight tolerance. So if you had a, a cumulative um, measure of 30 centimetres or 35 centimetres from the gates to gates, you can't be out by much more than 27 centimetres at any one boy, otherwise that's a no-no. So it's monitored pretty careful. So it puts a lot of pressure on the boat drivers to make sure they're as close to that centre line all the way down the course. And why we've got some of the best drivers here this weekend. And it's not just the, uh, the shore path which monitors the boat line, the, the boat path. We've got GPS zero offers there, also controlling the speed. So just about every pass is near on perfect within one, one hundredth of a second. Not often now do I hear Anything that's not uh, 1608, 1609, 1607, anything worse than that, and obviously 1608 being actual, 55 is the same. 1695, it's usually every time. 1696, oh, maybe if you've got someone really gives you, catches you in the middle of the course, 1694, but nothing, nothing too seriously out of, out of tolerance or out of actual. 
And that's great for all the skiers. As a competitor, you love that. You know that there's no favouritism. You're not getting helped in any way. And neither is any other skier. So you, whatever you ski and practice, when you come to a tournament, you know exactly what you're going to get. So... Thomas Ryan from Victoria, Yarrawonga. Opening pass. Now, this could be 13, but I'm thinking it, it's 14. I'll just clarify that with the judges. It was 13, so um, good pick up there, commentator Craig. Uh, so that's Thomas. So he's... His warm-up pass is 13, so I think quite a few of our skiers now will be picking that line length. There's nothing wrong with the water conditions. There's nothing wrong with the boat. There's nothing wrong with the driver to suggest that um, you need to do anything less now when you've got this skill level. So Tom Ryan's been around the sport a while as well. His dad, Dave, team manager for uh, Victoria. Also... Uh, Pretty good compare, but because he's um, of his team management duties, we won't be hearing too much from him. But he was MC at the uh, welcome night. He MCs the show skiers. They show ski. The Ryan's uh, pretty active in the sport all round. But it's all about Tom. As we speak now, as he sits down there, waits for the beeps to go off. As I said, there's a wait timer on that... Um, zero off so that everybody gets the same drop time same conditions when you come back in the only thing we can't control is the wind or the rain but there's no sign of rain here and the wind is looking fantastic so he sets himself up to come back at 12 being his second pass you would imagine this would be quite straightforward for Tom which just does as early as you like over to five and out to six and he'll be coming back at 11 into what headwind there is not a lot but we'll be enjoying those conditions out there today So great crowd in to see uh, this event, the Open Men's event, the Open Women's, put on a great show for us. And so is all the skiers. The over 35s, also very competitive with skiers getting to 11 and 10 to 5. The women getting us getting into 11. And now we've got the, the, uh, the top end of the men's seeds to bring home this, this Open event before we go into the over 55s. So Tom Bennett out there at the moment from Victoria. One of six Victorians in the open event, open men's event competing here today. 208 competitors from every state and territory in Australia. It's been a while since uh, we've been able to say that. So here's Tom, 11 metres. Okay, so I didn't say anything. Looked a little bit wobbly out of two ball. I think it related to, to that um, that result out of three. So he'll be taking two and a half at twelve. So just ahead of Joel O'Toole, one and a half at twelve. Sorry, at eleven. And then there's. Um, a field of people in the middle of 12 metres. As we go into our last, or our second last Victorian, Patrick Crisp, then I'm going to hand over to uh, Rob Wing, not only a great supporter through his company, Wing Wetsuits, Wing Water Sports, for our um, event, but a great commentator. Commentates, has been up here commentating for 30, maybe 54 years, Rob. But uh, definitely a long time, especially at Moomba. You'll, you'll recognise his voice if you do watch the webcasts at Moomba. 
or as it's replayed on Foxtel. four skiers in this event as well so uh, hand in hand that goes well together. Paddy Chris on the water. Chris family have been involved with water with uh, water skiing in Victoria for uh, as long as I can remember. All right, Victorians. Patty Chris on the water. Pat from Geelong. He's a tall, slender lad. All technique. Got a lovely skiing side. Distributes D3 in Victoria and S line ropes. So, as a Victorian, if you're looking for any of those products, go see Patty. Also uh, heads up a, a pretty good uh, junior development program at the Geelong Water Ski Club. So Paddy opened on uh, 14 line there. I don't know how tall he is, but he's up there in the 6'2 region. One of the tallest skiers that we've got. Jack Christie's pretty tall, although he's up there around there. I know Joel's 6'4". I think Archie's about 6'1". So if you're a footy team, you'd be looking at these guys wanting to be on your side. Footy being Australian rules football, just to qualify that. So we've got the uh, under-17 boys trick happening on this lake over here. I haven't been paying too much attention as to what's going. I know Finn's skied. I'll try and give you an update on what's happening there. But all the eyes and the action is on uh, Paddy Chris, 30 metres, coming in behind that TXI. Lovely lengthy style there, nice and early, as you'd expect from 14 metres for someone that's been skiing as long as Pat has at this level. And he is nice and tall to uh, add to that as well. So don't forget it's 11 and a half metres to the centre line of the boat or pole to the turn boy. So when you get it 12 metres, that's 12 metres, you're only half a metre longer. So the taller you are, the better it is. Well, it sounds good in theory. I'm sure it's not. Not being that tall. Okay, Paddy Chris, second last of the Victorians, but uh, fifth last in this. Uh, we've still got five more skiers to go after Pat. This is 12. Nice set up there at one and through the gates. Yeah, it's out of two there, but got it back under control. 
and uh, made that uh, look a lot easier than what it was when he uh, came out of two ball. So I hope you uh, Queenslanders are enjoying the uh, warmth and the heat that we've put on for you. Lovely still conditions. But as we head into, I think it's about 12.30, just make sure you've got plenty of sunscreen on and the hats, especially for those young kids. It says uh, melanoma or skin cancer is uh, a big killer of people, so try not to expose yourselves too much to our sun. It's good to get vitamin D, but like most things, too much of, uh, even say too much beer is bad for you. I've yet to see that in practice. However, here we have Paddy Chris, 11 metres. Set up there for one. Oh, oh and as a thought, just set up a little bit out of one ball. Tried his best and used his shoulders and everything else to get over the two, but a little bit too left his ski behind. And that's all she wrote for Patty. And I will now hand over to Robbie Wing. Thanks, Craig. Well, this is uh, developing into a pretty interesting sort of an event. It is a seeded uh, order based on uh, rankings, and we have five skiers still to come. So up into our top uh, ranked skiers. Which, uh, something's going on with the radio. All right, back on deck after uh, nearly had a radio hemorrhage. Probably my fault, but uh, so Patrick Crisp with, uh, I think, one boy on 11. We're writing down our little scores here. And then uh, Archie Davis coming in. Ooh, I think he's coming in at 14 metres. I might have to confirm that. I just heard it on the radio, but my memory, uh, you know, it only lasts for about five seconds. So here it comes for the opener, Archie Davis from the ACT. Glorious conditions out there on lake number one, the Slalom Lake. Takes it pretty easy around two and decides he'd better crank it up around three. Turns four nicely though, does Archie. And uh, puts to bed the uh, opening pass there uh, in this men's open event. Okay, confirming the start. Rope length was, in fact, 14.25 metres for Archie Davis. And he's uh, now going to come back on the 13 metre rope length. Archie from the ACT. Great overall uh, skier. Of course, in our field, well, after Archie, we have Jack Christie, Lucas Cornell and Joel Howley. I think it's fair to say Lucas and Joel. A couple of stars of the Moomba Masters this year. So uh, looking forward to seeing what those guys can do here in this uh, men's open slalom here this afternoon. So Archie, of course, would be trying to uh, put some pretty good slalom points towards a good overall score and um, also do what he can in this slalom event. And all the guys, any of the guys that are uh, jumping in men's open, we're, uh, we'll be seeing men's open jump this afternoon. So. Uh, Crackerjack day of skiing and of course moving into our night events uh, later on through the evening. Archie Davis, 13 metres through the gates. Turns around one, nice tight turn around one, hooks it around one, gets to two there. 
turns now around three, locks himself into a good position. He was just waiting there for four was Archie. Nicely out of five and completes as you would expect, particularly in these pristine conditions, running at the 13 metre line. And of course the jump ramp, that's, uh, I think it's going to be used uh, tonight, the jump ramp on the slalom lake. It had a fair bit of uh, duck poo on it and it's good to see that that's been cleaned off because I've actually got some distant memories of my Una Bay and a bit of duck poo on the jump and um, it's amazing how sticky that, uh, that can become when you hit the jump ramp and uh, send you flying out the front. It's a bit of a haunting memory, uh, that. So uh, good to see that uh, the jump ramp's been uh, all cleaned up. And Archie coming back on 12. So a couple of guys earlier I would have expected to really give uh, the 11 metres a pretty uh, good sort of a shake. So we haven't seen 11 run yet. Ryan, uh, Thomas Ryan with two and a half on 11. That's our lead score. And uh, so Archie would be looking to want to run the 12 and see how deep he can get into 11 because I tell you what, between Lucas Cornell and Joel Howley and Jack Christie, we've got a big chance of definitely seeing 11.25 run here today without a doubt and probably more than one skier as a 12 metre rope length now for Archie Davis. Gets a good start out of one now, waits for two, snaps it around two, turns around three. Well, he's A-OK a -okay for time at the moment. Turns out of four, aggressively out of four, hooks it at five and runs. 12 metres does Archie Davis from the ACT. for uh, one of our sponsors, which actually would be me, uh, that uh, Archie Davis will be jumping in men's open jump this afternoon and um, he's wearing a prototype of uh, our new release Wing Wetsuits Pro Jumpsuit. So if you want to have a look at uh, what it's going to look like, it'll be available uh, for uh, general consumption in a couple of months. Uh, Archie Davis will be jumping uh, this afternoon in the new release Wing Pro Jumpsuit. Okay, so it's a pretty nice uh, way that he ran 12 and he's going to come back at 11, 11.25 to be exact. And our lead score, unless I've got it wrong, but I'm having a good old look through, is two and a half by Thomas Ryan on this actual rope length. Well, I don't think you could order better conditions than this. On Lake One, the Slalom Lake, Water Ski Nationals 2024, Archie Davis 1125. Now turns around one, gets a good start too. Takes in two. Oh, the ski skipped around, but he's still in the game. He turns three. He's working. He hooks around four. Can he get to five? He stretches for five at all. Pulled out the front of the ski. I hope he's okay. He's got the arm in the air, but gosh, well, he didn't want to leave anything out out on the paddock there. Archie Davis, I didn't want to use the term die wondering because the way he sped out the front of that ski, wow. Well, he got a miraculous turn out of four, got to five and just gave it his all. And the big power kicked in from the Malibu tow boat and just spat him out the front. But four and a half at 11 for Archie Davis. W O W. Now we're into the top three seeds. Well, that was heart in the mouth stuff, I think. So Jack Christie will be our next skier. All right, who else can we thank? Well, Malibu Boats. We've got to thank Malibu Boats. Now, New South Wales is hosting the Nationals. A big thank you to uh, Team Tournament New South Wales. hosting uh, the Nationals here, of course, at this uh, wonderful venue. Now, I didn't get a start speed for Jack Christie. 
Starting on a 13 metre line. Glorious conditions. The young man from, I think from memory, I'm going to say Packenham in Victoria, but the Melbourne area. Jack Christie starting on 13 metres. So, of course, getting back to tournament team New South Wales. Under the guidance of President Phil Carmichael doing a great job here. And, of course, uh, so our many, many New South Wales uh, tournament supporters, we thank KD Waterskis, one of them, that uh, comes to mind. Only because I've got such a bad memory, I just saw one of their flags, so that sort of reminded me of that. We've got a sign up here, Hargraves Joinery, so we've got to give them a plug. All right, Archie getting cheered out of the water, and uh, so he should. He's leading at the moment in this men's open seating round. Gutsy performance there from Archie Davis. This is Jack Christie. Well, we've seen him. Complete that 13, now he's going to shorten up to 12. And here we come. The engine roars. The Malibu tournament tow boat and Jack Christie from Victoria. Third final, if that's the way to put it, skier around two, snaps it around two. Turn, uh, sorry, around two, I should say. Good start at three, at one. Now he's at three, now we're getting to four. I'm all over the shop, now he's at five. Now turns at five. Gritty performance on the 12, but no dramas there for Jack Christie running the 12 metre pass. I'm sure you're aware, but just as a reminder, now this is to the competitors, team captains and team managers. Uh, I'm sure you're making your charges aware of this, but uh, the over 55 men's slalom will be our next event. So if you are a competitor in over 55 men's slalom, make your way to the slalom start dot. Five, the lead, of course, Archie Davis with four and a half on this rope length. 11.25, Jack Christie turns around one, gets a smooth, good start. Now around two, kept great control around two. Now gets to boy four, hooks it around four. I think we're going to see 11.25 run today as he snaps it around five. Not a problem in the world with 11.25 metres there for Jack Christie. <coughs> now I know it's a seated order, but if you look at how the field has been approaching 11.25, and we just saw how Jack Christie ran 11.25. That was a mighty fine display of slalom water skiing there by Jack Christie from Victoria. However, and this is a pretty obvious statement, he would know that on the dock still is... Joel Howley and Lucas Cornell. So 10.75, I would be kind of thinking this would be a minimum for these top three guys to be uh, considering that they, what they need to do. 
particularly given the conditions on Lake One, the Slalom Lake at these Mawala Twin Lakes, the Max Kerwin Lakes, this glorious site, and the weather has been turned on to perfection so far this weekend. All right, 10 7 5. Jack Christie needs a good start. He needs a great start, and he stands a scab. He's in trouble already, but he gets to two. Oh, he's hanging on to two. Can he get to three? I think he's run over three. Well, I'm not quite sure. I'll leave that one to the judges. But miracle stuff after the start at one, then at two. His body was being thrown and twisted and pulled and tossed, and he somehow managed to uh, nearly get to boy three. As I say, I'll leave that to the judges. Two or three will uh, come through as some sort of a score there for Jack Christie. And uh, we're getting a couple of scores of two coming through. So uh, chances are it's going to be a score of two. The way I saw it, either ran over or just went inside three. All right, score has been radioed through by the judges. They don't really personally radio it through to me, but I just overhear what's going on. Eavesdropping, if you like. And uh, two at 10.75 to Jack Christie, the official score. Okay, Lucas Cornell now, uh, our next competitor. I'm going to make an assumption here because I, my bit of eavesdropping didn't work because I was uh, talking to Nick Adams, actually. Unfortunately, Nick should be skiing right around about now in our top one or two seeds and unfortunately uh, has injured himself, has a fracture, a leg fracture and uh, that happened at his fall at Moomba. So uh, we wish him the best with a speedy recovery. One of our slalom legends, Nick Adams. All right, confirming Lucas did, in fact, start at 13. He's now going to return at 12. Well, this is a young fellow from Queensland who, uh, anybody who watched the Moomba Masters, well, in juniors, he uh, ran 10.75. He broke the junior Moomba uh, slalom record. Now I... Uh, forget where he placed in the, uh, I, th I think he came third or in the finals. I was there, I should know, but uh, he's one of the top seeds. He was just in his 18 years of age. He's uh, certainly a super duper prospect for Australian slalom skiing. He is Lucas Cornell. to chase or catch or move up to Jack Christie. He's got a bit of work to do. So he's got to run 12, he's got to run 11, and he's chasing two at 10.75. And of course, Joel Howley is on the dock. All right, snaps it around, gets a good start there at the 12 metre pass. Turns a little more conservatively at two, but I think he did what he needed to do there on this 12 metre line. Turns it on the fourth boy now, taking in boy five. Beautiful lean, beautiful position, strong as you like, and early as you like around the sixth boy and running that 12 metre pass, Lucas Cornell. Well, on the assumption that Lucas Cornell is still, I'll say, growing a bit, developing it, get a bit more strength over the next couple of years, well, uh, he's probably on a trajectory to move up to become world, one of the world's finest. Slalom skiers is Australia's own Lucas Cornell. And of course, Joel Haley on the dock. He's already there. He's a past world champion in Malaysia. Two, 2000 and I forget whether it was 18 or 19, but uh, Malaysian World Championships, Joel Haley, in a very exciting three way runoff, took the World Championships. So, second in the Moomba Masters this year. But at the moment, we're looking at Lucas Cornell. Penultimate skier in 
the men's open slalom round one. Don't forget any of these guys are jumping and be backing it up and jumping this afternoon. All right, now Lucas, the testing 1125. Round one. Gosh, that was smooth. That was a smooth start. Turns around two. Angles in without a problem. Out of three. Now to boy four. Lucas got now. Oh, what a turn. What a lean. What a skier running 11.25 now. Lucas Cornell, he's going to shorten up now to 10.75. So we've only seen one skier run 11 so far today, and that was Jack Christie. Now we've just seen Lucas Cornell. Now this is a line length that he ran at the Moomba Masters. Can he repeat it? On the big stage, the Nationals, 2024. 2024 Ski Nationals at Mulwala, hosted by the New South Wales Tournament. Tournament New South Wales, I guess you'd call it. I was nearly going to say the team, but uh, hosted by the committee and all the hard-working committee, of course, of the New South Wales Tournament Division. Some of the skiers were saying that um, I suppose you'd expect nothing less and it'd be great for jump, but the pull of the Malibu as you come out of the boys is extremely strong. Let's see if uh, Lucas Cornell has met his match or not. So it's 10.75, chasing two at the moment to move himself into uh, a higher, the top seeding order. Turns around one, gets a great start around one. Turns around two now, look at him go. Round three in the glassy water as Lucas Cornell hooks around by four. Can he run 10.75? He's a fraction late, but he's going to pull hard for six. Well, maybe that was... No, oh, I was going to say it was never in doubt, but he's hooked around six and something's happened. He's gotten crossed up and reefed over the front of the ski. And Lucas Cornell, well, I don't... Five and a half will be the score coming through. But dearie gracious me, when he was just a little late out of five and then he got to six, I thought he was not a doubt in the world of running the pass. And then, well, I don't know if it was the power of the Malibu that sort of kicked in and just spat Lucas Cornell out of the front of his ski, but an awesome score of five and a half on the 10.75. Okay, Joel Howley now, that distinctive style, 13 metre line, opening up. Well, I don't know what we're going to see here, but I'll tell you what, I don't know if it could get any more exciting than what we just witnessed from Lucas Cornell on the 10.75 as Joel Howley, Howley flows through that uh, 13 metre pass.
All right, so Joel Haley, our final competitor in men's open slalom. The lead at the moment is five and a half on 10.75. He's coming back at 12. Water looking good, conditions looking good. Joel Haley would have skied here quite a bit. He's a native of, uh, and skis at Brisbane. Nice smooth start there on boy one on the 12 metre pass. Now he's turning three. Just waiting there for four, smooth, just settling his body in, settling himself into this slalom event is Joel Howley on the 12 metre pass. Now, at the conclusion of Joel Howley, you might have heard uh, throughout the day talk of in the night slalom and the night jump tonight, there is one wild card spot available and we have been selling tickets in a raffle sort of a situation for the right to take that wild card spot. Now, apparently there's been heaps and heaps and heaps of tickets sold. But after Men's Open Slalom, we're going to be drawing the raffle to see who will be our, let's call it, guest skier, wild card skier in both tonight's um, night slalom and also night jump. So that will happen at the conclusion of Joel Howley. And uh, fortunately for me, I didn't buy a ticket, so um, I won't have to stay up past my bedtime. And, uh, but I will. I'll just be up and watching the event. So night slalom and night jump. And I think we have a ski show as well. And I think the ski show, now I don't have a program in front of me, but I believe the ski show is at seven. Then I guess everything else will follow. So Joel Howley now is going to come back at 11.25. Only two skiers ran 11.25 today. That was Jack Christie and Luke Mayle. I'll have to look at my little list in case of there's somebody else and I've forgotten who it was, but Joel Howley on 11.25. Round one, smooth turn, keeps the rope nice and tight, locks into that position, Joel Howley. Looking strong, looking good. Oh, broke forward a bit out of four, but he quickly maintained his composure and uh, just waiting there for six and uh, no problems running 11.25, but I thought he just, his shoulders just kind of broke, dropped, did something out of boy three, but as quick as you like, uh, back in position, locked in and uh, around, then around four and just continued on his merry way to run 11.25. Now he's going to shorten to the 10.75. So how are you doing? Okie dokes, folks. He's basically, to be last off the dock in the finals, he's got to run this 10.75. You probably couldn't order better conditions. And Joel Howley from Queensland, 10.75. Lucas Cornell with five and a half on this rope length. He can't afford to make a mistake. He gets a good start. He turns around one. Here he goes into three. Well, he's pretty much early for every boy is Joel Howley as he turns five. Now he can't afford to make a mistake now, but he gets to six and not a problem there is Joel Howley. Are we seeing a fist pump? We're not, he's staying nice and calm and he's gonna shorten up to 10 at two five. And if Joel Howley is skiing tonight in a night slalom, which I'm not sure if he is, pretty soon, oh, he's, apparently he's not, but if he was, and you win the raffle, you would get to go head to head against Joel Howley. All right, so Lucas Cornell, apparently, he is uh, competing in night slalom. So if you win the uh, raffle, you'll get to mix it with the big boys, dance the big dance, compete against Lucas Cornell in slalom and probably quite a few others, I would think. We probably don't have a Melbourne Cup field, but we'd have quite a few people.
Well, any moment now we're going to see Joel Howley from Queensland coming in on a 10 to 5. He's already the top seed. Wants to get a bit of a feel for this 10 to 5. Could he run this pass? My goodness, 10 to 5. Joel Howley through the gates now. Stretches and it's a pretty good start. Gets to 2. No, he's going to try and get back to the way. Kenny, oh, he nearly pulled out of the front. But Joel Howley, let's hear it for the man from Queensland. Two on the 10.25 metre line. Well, I might wait till things just settle down. He gets the, he gets the accolades. He uh, signs a few autographs. And then we'll draw the raffle in uh, just a minute or two. The raffle for the wild card spot for night jump and night slalom. Then we will be uh, moving straight into over 55 men's jump, I believe, following the start order. Okay. Well, I did say jump, but I knew it was slalom, but <laughs> I, I, I was reading the list, but something happened. The difference between what I read and what I said. Never the two shall meet. All right, so uh, we're going on over 55 men's slalom round two very shortly. Peter Muscoviak, we're looking for you to officiate in a probably uh, over 55 men slalom. Peter Muscoviak, can you report to the judges' tower, please? Peter Muscoviak. All right, cheers and accolades for Joel Howley. Now we are going to... Now with me is uh, Ada Richards. And um, she looks like she's helped organise a lot of uh, the raffle for the night slalom and night jump. So I've got a question, Ada. You've sold, what, two or three tickets? Oh, we've sold a lot more than two or three tickets. We've made over $400 in this raffle, so it's all going to a great cause. Yeah, the uh, junior, is it under-17s team going to Canada? So that is a great cause. And uh, it's great to see we've sold a lot of tickets. So uh, hopefully, uh, if, if so many people on site have bought a ticket, hopefully you're about to be the lucky one. Now, I'm going to draw the ticket, and then I'll announce who it is. We're doing slalom first. We're doing slalom first. I'm flicking out. Will I, will I dig deep for the... Is that one there I've got? I've dug deep. I've got that one there, that one there. I can... All right. Just showing that everything's totally above board. And I'll let you announce who the person is once I uh, open it up. And... Oh, I've got... A, I better stop holding the microphone. And the winner is... Congratulations, Finn Mitchell. You're in for the night slalom as our wild card. All right, now let's see who's jumping in the jump off. Or the, sorry, the wild card in that night jump event against all the guns. That's what happens when 100 tickets get bought under your name. Yep. The more you buy, the more chances you've got to win. I'm fishing around, I'm fishing around, I'm fishing around. I'm nearly, I think I went to the bottom of the box. Is that, we'll say, the one that's in my fingers there? That other person's missed out. We don't know who they are, so I'll put them back in. And I'll undo it and uh, let you read out who the lucky person is that is going to go into Night Jump. Roman Hewton for Night Jump. Is that how you pronounce it? Houston, Horton, Horton, I don't know. Who, if they wrote their own name, they'd uh, need to go back to school. Raymond, Raymond, Raymond. How do I say it, Davey? Davey, how do I say it? All right, Raymond Horton or Ramon, as they say in Europe. Raymond Horton, you are in Night Jump tonight. Congratulations. And everybody who bought a ticket, thanks for the support for the under-17 Australian team that's going to go to Canada and do us proud in, I think, uh, July. If it's not July, it'll be early August, but it's right around that time. It's that uh, window of a couple of weeks in Calgary when uh, it's, uh, the temperatures aren't freezing. So, folks, I think it's fair to say that, that was a pretty riveting men's open slalom event. Don't miss it if you can, but if you're here, you obviously didn't. And uh, now we're going to go to, well, the further we go, the uh, more the excitement builds because we're going to go to over 55 
men's slalom. Now, the pressure's on. We've got 20 competitors. The first nine competitors here today, in the first round, they didn't run their first pass. Now, I know it helped us pick up a bit of time on the program, but fair dinkum. We'd really like to see them get a bit more money's worth and uh, get up and down the course a couple of times. No excuse with the beautiful conditions. So uh, bring it on, over 55 men's. Do your best, do your worst, and whatever you do, the first nine competitors, try and do a little bit better than you did in uh, round one. And I'm, I'm sure they will. Looking at the credentials of some of the guys, it's a bit of a boil over that uh, some of them didn't run their first pass. I know it was a bit breezy, so uh, maybe they uh, were uh, sort of succumb to the uh, conditions at the time. So I'll take a brief break. We could be refueling at the moment. And uh, when we uh, get the Malibu uh, juiced up again and uh, back on the water, because I do actually don't have a tricks run list, so I can't really say much about, about the trick event. But we have tricks on Lake 2. And we're uh, continuing with slalom very shortly on Lake 1 when we move to over 55 men's slalom. Actually, I've just seen Ramon, uh, Raymond uh, Horton's name. So he's an over 55 competitor. So good on Raymond. He's uh, won the, uh, the right to compete in night jump.
Okay, Chaz and Pete Cornell, could you report to the tower, please? Chaz and Pete Cornell to the tower, please. Okay, so that should have been. I was just goofing off a bit there. And hopefully I don't get fired from this extremely lucrative uh, position for goofing off. But uh, Mark Quinn, great to see. Queensland representative, first off the dock. Only got two boys in the first round, completing his opening pass. He started at 52 Ks. So, good on him. Starting at 52. Got to keep some scores here. So now he's going to come back at 55 K. Now that's the shortening speed for this division. So he'll be looking to run this and then come back on the 16 meters. Oh, breaks forward at the waist on boy one and lost all chance of being able to get to boy two, unfortunately, but at least well, he's traveled down from Cairns. He got two boys in the first round. Great to see him run his first pass in the second round, but unfortunately just uh, lost body position around boy one. And uh, bad luck there for Mark Quinn, only scoring one on the 55 kilometer pass. So one on his second pass, but great to see him get down to the end, sink in the water, come back and attack the uh, course for the second time. Okay, so we're waiting for Chris Veal from Victoria. All right, Chris Veal. Giving it a crack straight off the bat. He's starting at 55 k's, which is the shortening speed. He's starting on the first shortening at 16 metres. Didn't have the greatest first round, so let's hope that he can make amends here, Chris Veal. Coming in, like I said, 16 metres, 55 k's. Fairly tall guy. Helps him a bit of extra stretch towards those turn boys. This is looking a lot better as Chris Veal nails that opening 16 metre pass. Okay, so just by way of a bit of an update, folks, we're um, actually holding the boat momentarily. We're having a gate review. I don't know if it's entrance or exit. I maybe wasn't paying too much attention, but uh, from what I could see here, I didn't notice any issues with the gates. So the judges feverishly looking over Chris Veal's uh, gates. All right. Good news, gates are fine, shortening him up to 14.25 and Chris Veal coming back onto the course on Lake One, our slalom lake. Water Ski Nationals 2024, over 200 skiers here this weekend, great to see. Many of them doing multiple events. All right, Chris Veal, 14.25, turns now at two. Early there or on time for three, waiting there for four. Looks the goods there at five. Well, the way he ran that 14 metres, I reckon he'd be pretty disappointed that he only scored 
two and a half boys in the first round. Something must have definitely gone awry there. So uh, good to see him uh, getting that uh, 14.25 metre pass. All right, confirming everything's A-OK. -okay. Returning now at 13 metres is Chris Veal. Gee, I thought it looked good at 14. Gates are definitely good there, waits for one, turns, gets a smooth turn out of one. Turning around now, working hard out of two, getting for three, but he's getting the job done so far. Turns around four, good turn and a good pull out of four. Well, I think he's gonna do it. Around six and runs the 13 metre line. Well, in the first round, only one skier, our final skier, Wayne Bryant, ran the 13-metre line. Now, Chris Veal, second skier off the dock, and he's run um, 13. So he's really um, put out a pretty good mark there. Well done. See what he can do at 12. This will make him probably doubly disappointed that he... Um, only got two and a half in the first round because it's two rounds added together to decide the event in uh, this over 55 men's slalom. All right, now we get down to 12 metres, Chris Veal. Short and pretty tough at over 55s, but oh, he's gonna get pulled inside uh, two. Good work, and so he should be happy with that. Awesome score, one on the 12 metre line, Chris Veal from Victoria, over 55. Men's slalom, round two, competitor number two. Now still with the Victorians, we're going to move to Lee Martin. Actually, then we'll be, uh, he will be followed by Brett Smedley, also from Victoria. So it's a Victorian rampage here at the moment as uh, Chris Veal won at 12. And Lee Martin will be our next competitor. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, clearing my throat into the microphone. Now, bearing in mind these first nine guys would be nervous Nellies because uh, none of them ran their first pass in uh, the opening round. So we really wish them all the best to run at least one or two passes to um, just really make themselves feel a bit more like everything was worthwhile on uh, the trip down to these wonderful lakes at Mawala and to compete in 2024 Ski Nationals. Okay, confirming 52K. Long line, Lee Martin from Victoria. Okay, Lee Martin. Boat speed 52, turns around one, gets a pretty good lean out of one. 
Turns there. Drops the shoulder a fraction, maybe out of two, but I don't think it's going to cause him any dramas. Now to four. Leans across the wakes. Turns at five. And yes, runs that first pass. The ever elusive for, the, for some of the uh, over 55 men's in the first round, that elusive first pass. And uh, Lee Martin runs it. Great to see that he did. Okay, Lee Martin pass number two now, 55k the boat speed. Pretty good setup. Not a bad start around one. Stretches now for two does Lee Martin. Turns, bobble, wobbles a bit around three, but he's working hard for four. He's down course at four. He's going to have to stretch for five, but he can't quite get there. Inside five goes Lee Martin, so four will be the final score for Lee Martin from Victoria. All right, our next competitor is Brett Smedley. He's starting on long line. I just actually missed uh, the boat speed. Okay, 49 Ks is the boat speed. We have a long line. So 49 K as he gets to round boy three. Turns four. Looking pretty neat though is Brett Smedley. Good work. Good lean out of five and uh, round boy six completes his opening pass. Okay, so confirming that he's run the 49, he's going to up it now to 52 Ks.
So Brett Smedley, Victorian competitor at 52 k's now. Stands up a fraction out of one, but might not worry him at 52. Gets to three, oh, he's a bit down course. He's pulling pretty hard. Gets to four, he's out. He's down course still, but will he get to five? No. He uh, gets to five, goes inside five. Pretends to turn five, pretends to turn six. But the judges are saying, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, <laughs> shame on me. <laughs> We're not falling for that one. Judges might be calling for a review because at boy five, they're not quite sure if they're not quite sure if uh, his spray actually sprayed the boy or whether uh, he was a bit too far inside it to uh, for the spray to reach it. Now, uh, Greg Cooper, now an ex-competitor, he's starting at long line as a rope length and 55 k's as a boat speed. Greg Cooper, all the way from Cairns, well, I'll say Cairns area, just lives a little bit south of Cairns, but. Not very far at all, so uh, 55 k's, long line. Didn't run his first pass in the first round. Come on, Coops. We really want him to get through on this opener. Long line, 55. Turns now, smooth turn. Not rushing anything. Now round two, gets to three. Turns around three. Originally from my area, Cronulla, Sydney area in New South Wales. Long time Queensland resident. And good to see Coops run his first pass. 55k, 18.25. Well, I asked him what happened in the first round and he got all technical on me. He said he zigged when he should have zagged. Well, I suppose slalom is a zigzag sort of an event. Didn't really take it any further than that. But he's going to shorten up to 16 metres now. Right, Greg Cooper, 16 metre line. He'll be, I think he'll be, well, he's certainly capable of running it. He'll be working pretty hard and hoping to get into the 14.25. Turns around two, the ski kind of skids around a bit, but he's still in the game as he now leans into four. Come on, Coops, he pulls to five. He turns around five. He's gonna be maybe a fraction late coming out of six, but it's not gonna matter as he runs a 16 metre line. Good work, Greg Cooper, stalwart of Queensland water skiing. And uh, now he's going to shorten up to 14.25. He's got an unreal lake that he built uh, up in um, the name of the little town that's about 45 minutes south of Cairns escapes me. Starts with a B, but you know, those little towns are kind of. Babinda. He's got a lake in uh, Babinda, just south of Cairns. And of course, with plenty of rain up there, it's always full. So uh, he gets plenty of chance to uh, practice in ideal conditions, which is Greg Cooper. So he's run the 16 and now we'll see him come back and attack the 1425.
Right, Queensland, one of your own, Greg Cooper. Over 55 men's slalom. Competitor number five, 14.25. Well, he looks like he's got a good wide start. That's a good sort of a way to do things. Gets a good one. Can he keep it up? He turns around two. Now he pulls hard to three. He gets around three and just over. Cooks it a bit for three and pops a handle. So two and a half on a 14 metre line for Greg Cooper from Queensland. Okay, uh, they're just holding the boat. They're having a gate review. I think he's just given, been given the all clear. Okay, so we're waiting for our next competitor to come on the water. That'll be Michael Gilman. I'll double check where he's from. Michael Gilman from Victoria. In the meantime, uh, he's from Mildura. In the meantime, just before he uh, starts his lunch, Mark uh, Louder, the New South Wales team captain, uh, we're the host state, Mark. You're the, we're the biggest state, I think, by numbers. You're the captain. How's things going over the first few days from your end? Going very well. Uh, so good to see so many skiers getting PBs. That's excellent, and the weather's been kind to us. Uh, he just said he hopes it continues, but I pulled the microphone away. And then we were talking about, I was talking to Mark actually about his favourite subject this morning, his jumping. So he reckons in the second round he can sort of improve it by an extra couple of metres. And uh, I gave him a bit of advice which he chose to ignore, so that'll be good. That'll sort of send him in the right direction. So uh, we'll certainly look forward to seeing Mark completing this afternoon in slalom, but also in jump over the next couple of days. Okay, Michael Gilman from Mildura, Victoria. Not sure what he's opening at. I was going to chase Coops down and ask him something, but um, I might try and do that. Just was sort of wandering around. Okay, so good to see uh, Michael Gilman running his opening pass. Uh, Cooper's just skied from Queensland. Uh, the judges had a bit of a second look at your gates. I think they gave them to you. Like, they're MAD, aren't they? They'd have a look. Yeah, I was inside by two feet, I reckon. Well, that's what I thought. It was never in doubt. And I thought I'd get an expert opinion and ask you, and you've confirmed that they shouldn't have even been having a second look. Congratulations on a couple of passes there. Thank you very much, Rob. Good on you. Thanks, Greg Cooper from Queensland. Well, he wasn't happy with his opening round, but great to see him um, putting a pretty good score there, uh, getting into the 14.25 in the second round. I don't know if he loses a boy or two for paying out of the judges, but I suppose I did sort of lead him into it a bit. So Michael Gilman is our competitor on the water from Mildura, Victoria. Great to see, I think it's fair to say, every state represented uh, here uh, at Nationals 2024 here at the Mawala Twin Lakes. Great facility and, uh, gee, the weather's been very, very kind to us this weekend and it's great to see and I hope it keeps... Hope it continues.
All right, so pretty handy skier is uh, Michael Gilman. Started at 16, so now he's on the 14 metre line. All right, we move to back to Queensland. Brett Sutherland, our next competitor, starting at 49 Ks. All right, cruises through the gates there, round one, looking smooth as you like, around two, a little bit, you know, could be getting a bit late, but he's working hard there. 49k, the starting speed, around four. Locks in out of five, I think he's gonna do it. Brett Sutherland over 55 men slalom. Out through the gates and completing pass number one. Okay, Brett Sutherland, boat speed. Should be bumped up to 52. Well, in the first round, he scored four. Let's see if he can uh, do a little better in this second round. Let's hope so. Through we go. Keep mentioning conditions. Gosh, they're nice. Looking delightful. It's a fraction late, but he's still working at it. All right, round four, I think he can do it. I hope he can do it. He turns around five. He's going, oh, he was a little bit narrow. He turned around five, broke four at the waist and uh, got pulled out of the front of the ski, so four and a half, unfortunately. Four boys, I wonder if he just skipped inside, boy five. Hearing the call of four. It's a bit of four and a half coming through. I thought he got the four and a half, but anyway. All right, well, the smart money seems to be on uh, four and a half at uh, 52, but we'll uh, see what transpires. He's a bit narrow, but he stretched and thought he got around it, but uh, the next skier will be John Weeks, also from Queensland. Great uh, contingent from Queensland. Great representation, heaps of skiers. Uh, making their way to this New South Wales hosted tournament. So uh, great to see the um, Queenslanders down here. Another guy who's gonna start at 49, John Weeks. So John scored actually five at 52 on the first day. So he's got to be a big chance. If he can run 49, he's got to be a big chance of running 52 today. All right, John Weeks from Queensland, opening pass 49, turns around two. Now gets to boy three, turns around four. Looking good around five and scoring six there on his opening pass.
despite that great Queensland team spirit. Cheering Brett Sutherland as he comes out of the water as uh, teammate John Weeks is about to uh, come back from the southern end of these Mawala, the Max Kerr and Twin Lakes. Here he comes, 52k. Well, he got five in the first round. He dearly loved to run this, I'm sure. He gets a good turnaround too. Come on. Turns around three, does John Weeks. Now he turns around four. Surely he's on time now for five. Oh, I think he's going to do it. Runs the 52. Good work for the Queenslander, John Weeks. Now we'll just make things a little bit harder for him. We'll take the speed up to 55 k's. Of course, the Max Kerwin Lakes, named after the famous Max Kerwin, who was instrumental back in the day of starting the uh, Mawala Water Ski Club and what a club that that's grown into. It was probably in the 70s Max got all that uh, going. Of course, a long, long time administrator in our sport. Max unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago, uh, but he was in his 90s and uh, spent a lifetime working for the sport of water skiing. And here we see in these lakes, aptly named after Max, holding Water Ski Nationals 2024. All right, pass number three for John Weeks. See if he can run 55 k's. A bit quicker now, so he's going to have to work a bit harder, but he looked good on that 52. Skates around four. He's a, uh, sorry, three. He's a bit down course, but he's working for it. He stretches for five. I think he got five. He was a little bit obscured from my view, so I don't know if he actually got around it or not. And um, then he went inside six. Oh, there's boy five. Must have been a flag in the way. Okay, confirming a score of five on the 55K long line. And our next competitor in a few moments will be uh, Victorian competitor... One of our commentators, actually, Craig Stevens, will be our next skier. And, of course, when you don't fall off, you get to do the victory lap on the way back. So, uh, John Weeks... Makes his way back to the start dock. Okay, we're just holding the boat for a few moments. Moments we the technical description is we have a tech error. So um, okay, we're uh, back, ready to rock and roll with Craig Stephen from Victoria, Bridgewater skier is uh, Craig.
All right, Craig Stevens, 52 Ks, the rope length, of course, the 18.25, because the shortening speed for these guys is 55 Ks. So Craig Stevens from, well, he's from Melbourne, but he skis at Bridgewater. Looking to the 52, let's see what I can do here. He got a few at uh, 55 Ks in the first round, so he would dearly love to run the 55 and shorten up to 16 metres here in this second round. Right, Craig Stephen coming in now. If he can run this, he will shorten up to 16 metres. So this is the shortening speed. He got three in the first round. Come on, Craig, from Bridgewater. Beautiful conditions, turns around. Oh, stands up a bit around one. He's in trouble already, but he stretches to two. I don't think he's going to get to three, Craig Stevens. Oh, no, inside three. Well, he'll put that down to his turn around one or maybe through the gates, but he just... Didn't get a good enough start at one to be able to take him very much further down. So two at 55 will be it, unfortunately, for Craig Stevens. And our next competitor, staying with Victoria, a bit of a local lad really, a man from Bundalong, Dave Ryan. Okay, so he's a man who likes a bit of a shorter rope, but he's uh, giving himself a bit of a buffer by starting at the uh, slower speed. So he's coming in at 52 k's, but he's on a 16 metre line, the first shortening, and he buckled through the gate, so bit of harem scare and stuff at boy one and he turns two once again through the wanks a little bit uh, rough and tumble but still in the game as he turns boy four round five a bit of a high level actual VFL AFL type referee uh, in the local area as well is Dave Ryan but uh, running that 16 meters so what he's going to do now is the boat speed will increase to 55 He'll be credited with a full 52k pass. So I reckon the rope length's going to stay the same. The boat speed's going to increase and we'll see if uh, Dave Ryan can then move to the 14 metre line. So he's going to move now to 55k's but the boat, the rope length is 16 metres. Okay, so they're holding the boat for a gate review. I thought the gates looked fine, but he just kind of got crossed up and maybe looked awkward through the gates, so they're just having a second look.
Okay, looks like everything's A-OK on uh, Dave Ryan's gates there. Never in doubt, I reckon. Here he comes. And this should be 55k, 16 metre line. Dave Ryan from Bundalong, Victoria, a local man. Got his own course in the sneaky area there at Bundalong. She turns two. Oh, three's down course, but he's still working at it. Gets to four now. I think he's back in the game. Round five, he's a little bit late, but surely he can stretch to six. Now, can he get the gates? He can. He runs the 55k pass at 16 metre line. We're going to shorten him up now to 14.25. Well, he should be pretty happy with that because in the first round, he scored three and a half on long line at 55, so that 55k pass, he scored three and a half, so uh, this time he's run that pass, we're gonna shorten him up to 18.25. No, we're not, we're shortening him up to 14.25. If we shorten him up to 18.25, we'd have to lengthen out the rope, and that's not how this sport works. As you get better, we shorten the rope to make it harder, we don't lengthen it out to make it easier. Bit of a rookie error I just made then. Okay, Dave Ryan, over 55 men, second round. He's at 14.25, a local from Bundalong. Let's see if he can run the 14.25, round boy one. Well, that's a pretty good start he's got. Round two, he's still on time, I reckon. Turns three, oh, and he bobbled a little on the turn. Maybe his legs got a little bit stiff and he panicked a bit and he just wobbled and bobbled and overturned a fraction, but two and a half will be the final score for Dave Ryan at 14.25, and he was looking good but just couldn't manage to hang on. Okay, now we go to, via Japan, we go to the Gold Coast in Queensland and Ken Ito, three event skier, tricks, slaloms and jumps. Had a ski with Ken up on the Gold Coast one time at the Gold Coast Ski Club. Very obliging uh, fellow, let me join their crew. That was once, he sort of learnt the first time. But... Uh, Yeah, well, of course, uh, Dave Ryan at the skiers welcome. He was uh, our MC, and uh, we can now know why because he's he's still in the water and he's talking. He hasn't even got out of the water yet. Okay, Kenito starting at forty nine. There's a Victorians with that song, We're Going Home in the Back of a Divvy Van. Okay, Ken Ito, 49Ks, long line. Round two, I might, might cruise over and ask Dave Ryan a question. So Dave, it's sort of the, uh, Dave Ryan, I'm gonna ask Dave Ryan a question, sort of the old Slalomers Lament. It looked like you were on it. Yeah, we were there all, what happened? I was never on it. I've never been on it. You need to watch more of my skiing. <laughs> Jeez, well, I thought I'd been watching skiing for a year. Yeah, 
out of two, but anyway. I thought you just went into panic mode. You know that par putt panic they have in golf? I thought you went into the panic. Anyway, well done. Getting through to the 14-metre line for Dave Ryan. My only complaint is he just touched me and he wet my shirt. Yeah, and of course, Dave Ryan had his uh, gates reviewed. I don't know why. They uh, he looked a bit wobbly, but he was, I thought he was in between them. But as he pointed out, I haven't really seen him ski enough to sort of work out the uh, fine nuances and intricacies of his slalom skiing. So Ken Ito now would be on a... Uh, boat speed of 52 k's he ran this in the first round so he'll be looking to do the same in this round he's a little bit down course fighting it though still all stood up around four i don't know if he's going to get to five he goes inside five does kenito from gold coast queensland Okay, paging Amanda Cornell, Jamie Mitchell and Finn Shee to the tower, please. Amanda Cornell, Jamie Mitchell and Finn Shee. If you can hear me, you're required for official duties. Please make your way to the tower. Okay, Raymond Horton from WA, well, he's in for a big day because this is round two of over 59 men's slalom. And if you were paying attention earlier, Raymond won the raffle. He's going to be skiing tonight in night slalom as a wild card entry. So congratulations to Raymond Horton starting at 49 k's here in this men's over 55 slalom event. folks so we've got Raymond Martin no we haven't got Raymond Martin I know someone called Raymond Martin in Sydney that's why I've just said Raymond Horton so we've got Raymond Horton and uh, he's from Western Australia started at 49 he's had a comeback at 52 he won the raffle he's going to be in night slalom then um, uh, night s oh did he win jump did he oh. okay well someone else must have won slalom I forget there was two people anyway um, Things have been a bit serious, so I th we, I've got to have a lunch break. We're having comedy relief for two or three skiers, and I'm welcoming, uh, welcoming Gary Humphreys to the, uh, to the microphone. And then if he needs to go to the bathroom, he's going to give me back the microphone while he goes, because we don't want to hear what's going on when he goes up there and takes the microphone with him. Okay, so he's at 52 k's. Raymond Horton from um, Western Australia. Oh, I think he's looking all right on this 52. I hope he can keep it going. Round four. A bit late out of four. Stretches to five. He 
Yes, around six and out through the gates. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you, Robert Wing. And, uh, yeah, we can give you some comedy relief, but I'll need a bit of help around the site. So uh, over halfway through the over 55 men's slalom, and uh, we've got a real bubble here at the moment. It is round two, so it's two rounds added together. But we've also got to have a look at the top seeds down there getting into 12 and 13 metres. So, Raymond Horton, 52K, will return. Obviously at over 55. What are they shorting at, Rob? 52 or 55? Okay, Shorten at 55. So uh, Raymond's going to come back at 55. Then we go to Murray Pigden, Shane Hennig, Hennig, Hennig. Okay, Michael Belcher, Graham Ashcroft, Graham Kavanagh, Peter Tomovitz, Tomovitz, and uh, of course the number one seed, Ryan Bryant. Now this man here on the water has been to the show skis a worlds he's been to the barefoot state titles here last weekend he's jumping tonight in the uh, celebrity jump and he's out here slaloming in this the national titles have a look at this fella he's really going there at the 55k and uh, not quite around number five so well done there with a the score of four Score of five boys to Raymond Horton. Murray the pig dog, Pigden from New South Wales, next competitor on the water. Five at 55, 18. Okay, WA, give him a round of applause, Raymond Horton. Five at 55K. So he's pretty happy with that. Where's the WA team? They're all up there on the, a uh, little bit warm up on the uh, private benches up there that we have. We're still tricking on the other side with the under 21 men. And then of course we move to a couple of disabled skiers and move in straight into the under 14 girls jump. Okay, New South Wales, get down and uh, get right on the edge of the water because we have got a superstar on the water. An ex-superstar, but uh, still a superstar. Of course, uh, the Colombo Creek Ski School coach, manager, director, Murray Pigden. Coming in at 52K. Murray, of course, had a bad injury about 12 months ago and uh, broke the ankle. He did the knee as well, but very inflexible for the first part of this season. But he's just starting to get himself back into good form now. 52K. And he cruises across to number six. Picks up. Six boys will come back at 55.
Yeah, Murray's. Oh, that's distorted, isn't it? Murray's uh, support team down on the bank, the whole two of them. And of course, Georgia, his uh, eldest daughter, is. Uh, I think she's got 14 metres uh, on the slalom in a couple, uh, couple of rounds ago. So uh, we've got some quality in the team, but Murray coming back at 55. Murray Picton coming in from the uh, Mawala end. 55, so he's maxed the boat speed out. Still on the 18 metre line. Should run it nice and easy, should the muzzle dog. And there he goes across four, five, six, and seven, eight, nine, ten. Down he goes. Will sit in the water, return on. Now, maybe a 16 metre line, or is he going to up again to the 14 metres? Okay, Murray staying 16 metre, not upping to 14. Great decision, Muzzle, staying on the 16 metre line. He went up to 14 yesterday, and I think he got half a boy. Of course, he copped a little bit of uh, flack from his uh, supportive team member, his family. So look at that slalom lake out there at the moment. Absolutely magnificent. Perfect conditions for the last three days or the last 10 days if you count the New South Wales state titles. All right, Murray Pigden. 16 metres, 55k. Very experienced skier, experienced slalom skier especially, and of course, coming down. Oh, Muzz is going to have to have a little bit of a dig. He went from one to two, lost a bit of form. But uh, the crowd is just so supportive of the Muzz. They're going to go down. Have a look at this. They're all going to go down and support him on the way back in. Two on a 16 metres. Well done, Muzz. He's very, very proud. Lee Martin, were you looking for Gary Humphrey? He's looking for you now, Lee Martin. Ah, I tell you what, Murray, you've still got a big fan base, mate. Still got a big fan base.
Okay, Shane coming in now, 16 metres. Representing, of course, uh, let me see, where is he from? South Australia. Big tall man, knows what he's about because his maximum boat speed 55 on a 16 metre line and easy across to number six. So I'm assuming we're getting ready for jump on the other lake. We finished the under 21 men's trick. I think we may have some disabled jumpers. And then we move to the under 14 girls. But in the meantime, Shane Henning coming back in on a 14 metre line, 55k. So 14 metres starting to get into the uh, Serious part of the course as he gets down there and he cruises across four, forgiving at 55. Can he get to six? He fights and gets us inside number six. Gets a five boys at 14, mile, 14 metres. Michael Belcher, our next competitor. Lee Martin, Lee Martin, are you around on the site, Lee? If you can catch up with Gary Humphrey or Rob Wing. Okay, uh, I've got to figure out who they're up to because I'm going to say Michael Belcher from Tasmania. Not sure what he started at. And um, Shane Hennig from South Australia who competed actually in the Age Group World Championships in uh, Bordeaux in France in 2022. Scored five on a 14 metre uh, rope length. Now we move to Tasmania. Michael Belcher from Tassie. Okay, confirming uh, that our Tasmanian competitor Michael Belcher, com competitor number 16, he scored, uh, oh sorry, he opened at 52 k's, long line, so he's going to return at 55 k's. Okay, boat speed's going to be 55, I'm not sure what the speed, I don't know if he's... 
opt it up or not, but I'll just uh, confirm that. But anyway, he's coming back nonetheless, so he needs to, regardless of what he's on, he needs to get six boys. So he's got to go through the gates. Wow, well, gets a good start. Looking the goods, round two, come on. Round three, a little bit late out of three, but he's working for it. Round four, oh, looked pretty good out of four, I thought. Round five, and I think he's got this run in his keeping, 55 k's is the boat speed. Well, he got into 14 metres in the first round, I think. Yep, so um, scored two and a half at 14 in the first round. I'm just going to confirm what he'll be coming back on in just a moment or two. Okay, well, I've got a feeling he opted up to 16 metres. He's going to return at 14 metres. So he's just run the 16. He's going to return at the 14 metre line. This is the one that in the first round he managed to score two and a half on this rope length. Then we only have four skiers to go after this. So, um, getting down to the business end of the seedings. So, uh, Michael Belcher from Tasmania coming back. The rope length's going to be 14.25. See if he can run it. But then we still have Graham Ashcroft, Graham Kavanagh, Peter Tominovitz, and Wayne Bryant, our top seed from the first round. Okay, what can. The Tassie Devil do at 14.25 as he turns around one. Stands up a bit through the wakes, but turns around two. So I think he's kind of looking all right on this one. He pulls there. He's around four. He's lost a bit out of four. He went inside five, I think. Realises that he has. He lets go of the rope and skis into the bank. And that will be it for Michael Belcher from Tasmania. But well done. Four boys on 14.25. Okay, so after this, we're going to move to Wagga Wagga, New South Wales, and Graham Ashy Ashcroft. Now that uh, Graham Ashcroft, well, now that Callan and JC are going so well, Cal um, Graham's sort of dropping back a bit more into the background. Sort of reminds me of, now I don't know if anybody here has heard of the uh, very famous, maybe he's only famous in Sydney, but the famous racing journalist, uh, Kenny Callender. Now, of course, uh, the 12th man used to impersonate him and take him off. Well, he's actually a bit of a relative in my wife's family. And uh, when I met Kenny Callender, so this, where I'm getting to this is uh, with Graham Ashcroft fading back into the background because of Callan and JC's kids coming through and skiing so well. Kenny Callender said to me, I've heard a lot about your kids, but I haven't heard much about you. And I suppose that kind of summed it up at the time. And I said, uh, thanks, thanks, uh, Ken. Pleasure to meet you too, son. <laughs> Give us a tip for Randwick this weekend if you don't mind. Ashy starting at long line at 55 k's. Then he will shorten from there if he can run it. Over 55 men's slalom round two. So this, of course, will decide the event. Ashy, round four. Round five without a problem and runs out long line, 55 k quite nicely. 
Now we're going to see him shorten up and come back at 16. So Ashy got five at 14 in the first round. So I think he could consider himself a little bit lucky not to have run the 14 metre pass. So he'll be looking at running 14 and getting deep or mid into the 13 to uh, give him a chance of getting on the podium because there's two rounds added together. And Graham Kavanagh, our next skier from WA, scored two and a half on the 13 metre line. Peter Tomnovitz scored from Victoria scored three and a half on 13. And Wayne Bryant scored three at 12. So Wayne Bryant has a pretty healthy lead, a lead of about a pass. So pretty much if um, Wayne Bryant can get mid to deep 1,300 if he, if in 13 metres, if he doesn't mess up, he's a big chance of taking out uh, gold medal in this event. But Graham Ashcroft to try and get onto the podium. Would dearly love to run the 14 metre line. So here he comes at 16. He's got the, oh, and he's overturned. Well, I was just filling in a bit of time saying he's got the New South Wales Larry board shorts on and just messed up that turn at one. Unfortunately, on the 16 metre line, he won't be happy with that. Right, he's been given half a boy, of course. Uh, well, that's most of us. Sorry, he didn't get back to the wake, so half a boy on six. Oh, so, I wonder if he. All right, so that was half a boy at 14 because I didn't pick up that he started at 16. I thought he started at long line. Okay, so half a boy at 14 metres. I thought I was listening to the radio pretty well too, but obviously uh, not really, not good enough. All right. Now, I don't reckon I've misheard this one. Graham Kavanagh is starting at 55 k's on a 16 metre line. So a confident ski, but he scored two and a half at 13 in the first round. So he would expect to do as good or better. And let's see what he can do though. A bit of work to do. Starts at 16. Round two. Got the yellow West Australian bib. Round six and uh, no Dalai Lamas there on that 16 metre opening pass. Down to our top three seeds now, looking to decide the event. It's really looking like these top three will maintain their position on the podium, but anything could happen as Graham Ashcroft. And actually, um, I think Michael Belcher from Tasmania is actually a little bit ahead of Graham Ashcroft. It's all unofficial. Not even going to try and work it out down to the nth degree, but uh, let's say I'm thinking that Michael Belcher from Tassie might have just a slender lead over um, Graham Ashcroft, but I'm, I'll let the judges figure that one out. And Graham Kavanagh now, he started at 16 really he gets a couple on this pass, that ensures him a, piece, uh, a place on the podium, but he would dearly love, I'm sure, to run the 14.25. All right, 14.25, eyes off the gates. 14.25. Fourteen two five turns. Michael Belcher. Uh, sorry, Graham Kavanagh. Now, yeah, geez, the conditions are good. Gets a turn. He's working hard. He turns four. 
pulling as hard as he can across the way. So I think he's going to do it. He might be a fraction late into uh, six, but he doesn't have to panic. Out through the gates and runs 14.25. Does Graham Kavanagh, West Australia's own. Okay, well, I am saying unofficially that Graham Kavanagh has a place on the podium. Which one, of course, is yet to be decided, but uh, to help him, his uh, journey through the middle ranks, he'd be wanting to go as far as he can down to 13. Not the greatest turn out of one, but he turns pretty hard out of two. Now he gets to three. Oh, he's a oh, well, I was going to say, if he could have kept that momentum going, he would have been a chance of running it, but uh, two and a half it will be on 13 metres. Well, consistent skiing there. He scored two and a uh, half in the first round and two and a half in the second round. So now we move to uh, Victoria and Peter Tomanovitz, who skied three and a half in the um, elimination round. So to ensure no worse than silver, the next skier needs to get, I'm going to say, two, uh, two boys. Let's call it three on the 13 metre line. So he's got to run 14.25 and have a crack at the one on the way back. What a tasty scenario that is. Now after this event, we're going to go to over 21 men's slalom, then under 21 women's slalom, over 65 women's, over 70 men's, and then Rounding off the day, Mark Lauder told me the main event, over 65 men's slalom. Now, with over 65 men slalom, slalom being last, it's kind of like the NRL, how the, you know, the best game and then well, the first grade's on last and then at the end of the game, everyone sings up, up Cronulla and goes home happy, kind of what it normally happens. Don't know what happens in Victoria or the southern states, but that's kind of um, the way I see it. Okay, Peter Tomanovitz. Not sure what he started on actually, but uh, I'll confirm it. I'm going to guess it's 16 because of this level. He got into 13 in the first round. Rather tall man. In the, uh, I won't call him a rangy lad because over 55s, you don't really call them lads. Tall guy from Victoria uses his uh, reach to perfection and look very smooth and comfortable on that opening pass.
All right, so. Okay, well, he started at 14 metres. So uh, coming out of the gates very aggressively there. So it's only this next pass. If he can get past three, he's guaranteed silver. If he can run it and um, oh, get get a piece of 12, at least he gives Wayne Bryant something to think about. Because Wayne Bryant will be our final competitor. It's two rounds added together. So if you've got a bit of a lead from the first round, you've got a little bit of a buffer. Here he comes now at 13. So he confidently started at the 14 metre line. Over 55 men, second round. This will decide the event. I'm saying at the moment, Graham Kavanagh is guaranteed, well, he's in he's in third at least. Stands up a bit out of uh, one. He's looking pretty good at two though. Turns around three, maybe a fraction down course, but that secures silver. Can he run 13 metres? I think he's going to. He does, he's gonna come back at 12 pretty shortly. Peter Tomlinovich from Victoria, good skiing on a 13 metre line. Well, I'm gonna try and work out the scenario of what <coughs> Wayne Bryant needs to do to win this event. Because Peter Tomlinovich is either sitting, going to sit, he's sitting in first, but he's either gonna win the event or come second. But Wayne Bryant has a five and a half boy buffer from the first round. So whatever score, really, whatever score Peter Tomlinovich uh, achieves, Wayne Bryant has to get within five to take the gold. Here we go, 12 metres. So Wayne Bryant scored three of this in the uh, first round. Peter Tomlinovich just needs to build as high a score as possible to try and keep Wayne Bryant at bay. Wayne Bryant sitting on the dock, he's our next skier. Okay, 12 metres, Peter Tomlinovich. Oh, pretty good start, I thought. Round two, he's in a bit of drama out of two, but he hangs in there. Now he gets to three at 12, he gets to four. Oh, can he run the pass? He locks in, he gets to five, big turn out of five. He's gonna be late for six, and well, he's probably a combination of happiness and frustration as he went inside six, threw his hand in the air, but lays a pretty good platform that Wayne Bryant is gonna to have to chase down. Peter Tomlinovich, five on a 12 metre line on this round two of over 55 men's slalom. All right, so I'm saying Wayne Bryant has to get within five. I'm saying Wayne Bryant has to just run a full 13 metre pass. So if Wayne Bryant can get uh, through 16, 14, I'm not sure what he starts at, probably 14. It's real simple. He needs to run 13. If I'm right, I've been wrong before, but I'm backing myself in on this one. If he runs five boys, he will be the over 55 men's slalom champion for 2024. But big Victoria, an awesome performance for your man, Peter Tomlinovich. Let's hear it for the big guy out on the water. Peter Tomlinovich from Victoria, five on a 12 metre line.
Okay, Wayne Bryant coming in from the northern end. Final competitor in over 55, men's slalom. This will decide the event. Wayne Bryant starting on a 14, 25 metre line. So confident straight off the bat. He needs to run 13. So if he can run this complete next pass, I'm saying that he will have won the event. So he's starting at 14 now. Turns five. Halfway there, completes the first pass. Okay, so he's about to shorten up to 13. I'm saying with the two rounds added together, he, j he needs to complete this pass. So he can't make a mistake. And if he does run the uh, pass, he'll probably come back at 12 to just make sure, uh, really make sure of everything. But um, he needs to run the 13. Then we're going to have a change of commentator. We'll be welcoming Lee Martin to the microphone and we'll move into over 21 men's slalom. Wayne Bryant. He's probably run this pass about 8 million times in his life, but uh, this is where it really counts. Turns around one, gets a good start around one. Turns around two now, looking solid. Takes in three, dips the elbow a little, I think, which is pretty hot stuff for over 55 men's. Turns around five and uh, never in doubt to run that pass. Well, we'll have to wait for judges' confirmation to say that he is the champion for um, 2024 in over 55 men's slalom, but he's going to shorten up and as soon as he gets one or two boys, well, there's going to be absolutely no doubt about it then that uh, Wayne Bryant has uh, won men's over 55 slalom for Nationals 2024. I must say that Peter Tomovitz kept him honest, though, the Victorian. I think it's uh, merely academic, but the Malibu towboat comes in now with Wayne Bryant. He saw Peter Tomlinovich get five, so I reckon he's going to have a crack at getting five and maybe try something on the 11. It's actually his home site. All right, turns now at 12. Didn't really go too hard at it, but he's gone. He's had a bit of a dig at two. Thought now he gets to four, turns four, and he's having a big lean at four. Now he has a huge turn out of five, and Wayne Bryan runs the 12 metres and makes absolutely 150% sure that he wins the over 55 men's slalom for 2024. What's that? Yeah. He looked a bit lazy out of one. Do you reckon he just yeah. made sure that he didn't... didn't So as I said, we're moving to over 21 men's slalom round two. Fairly small event, four competitors. Then under 21 women's slalom round two with 10 competitors in all and a couple of old age groupers to finish off the day. And uh, then we move into our evening events. And away comes the towboat, 11.25, the rope length, 11.5 from the centre to the turn, boys. We, most of us, 
are fully aware of that. And um, Wayne Bryant now, what can he do at 11.25? He's uh, won the event, so he just wants to really rub it in now, it is uh, Wayne Bryant. Stands up around and gets one. So he can do the victory lap. Wayne Bryant from New South Wales. All right, good over 55 men's uh, slalom event. Now I'm going to hand you over to Lee Martin and the rest of today's events. Okay, great skiing there from uh, Wayne Bryant from New South Wales. The over 55 men 2024 champion. Okay, and over on the jump lake here, we've got the under 12 girls. Sienna McCarthy on the water at the moment. Uh, skied away her first jump. Not sure what the uh, distance was. I'll uh, get that information in a sec. Ten point four meters there. First jump for Sienna McCarthy. Coming in for a second jump here. Oh, nice, nice uh, stand up landing there. Eleven point one for Sienna's second jump. Eleven point one. All right, here she goes. Come on, Queensland. Third and final jump here for Sienna McCarthy. Round two, under twelve girls jump. Drives hard into the ramp, off the top. Oh, just pops the handle there. Bad luck there to Sienna, but. Great first two jumps there, and she's got a score on a board. Okay, we're going to uh, refuel the boat on the slalom lake, get some fuel into it, and then we'll back into the over 21 men's slalom round two. We have uh, Ryan Clark, New South Wales, Ben Thomas, New South Wales, Lee Emmons, Victoria, and Andrew Holt from Queensland. Four competitors in our over 21 men's slalom division. And it's all happening on the jump lake over here with the under 12 girls.
So Alana here, first jump. Oh, gets a little bit sideways off the top, but rides it away. Fantastic first opening jump there for Alana here. Ten point four meters there for Alana's first jump. Ten point All right, second jump here, 10.4 on the board and rides that one away again, be about the same distance, I reckon. Okay, Alana's best jump in round one was 10.3, so she's got a 10.4 on the board. 10.6, she's gone uh, a little bit further, 10.6 there for Alana's second jump. Looking for a coach on the bank, here he is on the dock. Giving some advice, great advice there coming from the coach on the dock. Oh, there, great third jump there and got a lot of pop off the top there. Alana here will wait for the uh, distance. She got a 10.6. Okay, trick sheets are being released right now downstairs below the uh, the tower here. Trick sheets are available now. Ten point three for Alana Hare's third jump. Ten point two. Okay, so we're just about ready. We've refueled the boat on the slalom lake. We're ready to go again. We've done a sim pass. We're just sitting down the other end. We'll wait to be called through and pick up our first skier in the over 21 men. Slalom, round two.
Okay, our next skier on the water, our next skier, our jump skier is Eloise Fletcher from New South Wales. Score of 21.1 in round one. So uh, Eloise just probably needs to ride one away and she'll take out the gold in the under 12 girls jump. All right, here we go, Eloise Fletcher. Oh, drives it hard on the three quarter. Into the ramp. Oh, lovely jump off the top. And I'd say that jump is the gold medal jump for Eloise Fletcher. But we'll wait for an official score. Two rounds added together, of course, with the under 12 girls jump. 21.1 in the first round. Twenty-one point five, twenty-one point five for Eloise Fletcher's first jump, and that's the gold medal. All right, over on the slalom lake, we've got Ben Thomas, sixteen meters fifty-five k's. Here we go, Eloise Fletcher, New South Wales. Oh, nice jump. Gee, she's got some great style, this girl. Fabulous jumping. All right, Ben Thomas. 55K, 16 metres. Looking very comfortable out there. Nice opening pass. Perfect conditions. It's all happening here. The Max Kerr and Marwala Ski Lakes 2024 Australian Masters, uh, sorry, National Championships. <laughs> yeah. Okay, 20.7 for Eloise Fletcher's second jump, 20.7. Okay, we're just holding the boat here on the Slalom uh, Lake. We've got some conflict with uh, scores here, so we'll just um, sort that out. Meanwhile, Eloise Fletcher, third and final jump. She's got the gold medal around her neck already. Oh, nice safe jump again. Great jumping there from the young girl from New South Wales, Eloise Fletcher.
First round score, five and a half at 14. Great conditions out here at the moment for our third competitor in the over 21. Lee Emmons runs his opening pass. Okay, here we go. Emma Wright from Queensland. Opening jump, under 14 girls, round two. Ten point one in the first round. All right, Lee Emmons. 14 metres, here we go. Victoria, oh, gets a big hook out there to two. Slack line out of three. He's going to have to work here to get to five. Can he get there? Yes, yeah, settles down and runs the pass. 14 metres, oh, that was a bit hairy. I reckon his heart will be pumping after that round, up after that pass. Okay, so that was 58, 16 metres. My apologies for the mistake. 68, 58, 16 metres there for Lee Emmons. We'll shorten it up to 14.25 and bring him in from the southern end. All right, we've got Emma Wright over here on the jump lake, second jump. Okay, Emma Wright, her first jump was 11.3, second jump 10.9. So good jumping here from the Queenslander. And we've got three and a half, a score of three and a half at 14 for Lee Emmons. Three and a half at 14 on the Slalom Lake here.
Okay, so our last competitor in the over 21 men's is Andrew Holt from Queensland. Our top seed, two and a half at 13 in the first round. So uh, hopefully he can get into 13 again and take home the gold medal. Fifty five K sixteen metres. He's told the boat. A lot of these skiers start at fifty five sixteen, then opt up to fifty eight, and then start to shorten from there. So here we go. Andrew Holt, all the way from sunny Queensland. Let's see what the Queenslander can do. Oh, nice gate. Gets a little bit untidy out of one, but he's back on track at two. Looking okay at three, settled down now. Back into his rhythm, nice turn at four. And that's a nice opening pass in the end. A bit shaky at the start, but a nice opening pass there for Andrew Holt. Okay, Andrew Hulk, 58, 16 metres. Looking good at three here. Turns four with no worries at all. Around five, easily get six and run the 58, 16 metre pass. Andrew Holt. Okay, we need Kylie Hayes, Sarah Green, and Susie Bryant as judges to the judges' tower, please. Susie Bryant, Sarah Green, and Kylie Hayes. All right, Laura Hayes, first jump. Ten point nine there for Laura Hayes. 10.9 metres, and we've got Andrew Holt returning at 14 metres on the slalom lake. Here we go, 14 metres, Andrew Holt. Nice turn at one. Bit of slack out of two, but he's on track. Around three. I reckon he's going to run this pass. I shouldn't have said that, but he's going to run it. Around five, gets to six. Oh, and drops the right hand. Come on, you can't do that. He's got the gold medal. He's showing off now. Andrew Holt. Laura Hayes, second jump, 12 metres, neat, 12 metres.
Okay, Andrew Holt. He's just run th uh, run 14, was it 13? 14, he's just run 14. Doesn't need to uh, do any more. He's already got the gold medal around his neck. But um, why wouldn't you want to run another pass on the magnificent Max Kerwin Lakes? These conditions out here, perfect at the moment. Glenn Martin, can you come to the tower, please? Glenn Martin, to the tower, please. All right, here we go. Andrew Hulk, 13 metres. Nice one. Bit skinny at two, gets slack out of two, but he's going to have to work for three. Gets to three. He's going to have to work to four. Gets around it. I reckon that'll be it. No, he's around five. Oh, and popped the handle at five. Great skiing there from Andrew Hulk, your over 21 man gold medalist here at the 2024 national championships Okay, so uh, that concludes the over 21 men's slide in round two. I'm not going to name the, uh, I know Andrew Holt's got the gold medal, but I'll, uh, I'll leave it till presentation night to see who gets the silver and the bronze. But we're going to move into under 21 women slalom round two. A field of 10 here. Ada Richards, Courtney Williams, Isabel Shaw, Cara O'Connor. Holly Lusev, JC Ashcroft, Caitlin McDonald, Caitlin Dennis, Emma Nieberding, and Miller Bennett. Here we go. All right, Victoria, come on on the uh, jump lake. We've got Georgia Bray. First jump coming up for Georgia. Okay, as the Queenslanders give the tunnel of love to Andrew Holt there, the gold medalist. Here we go, Georgia Bray, first jump. Rides it away. All right, here we go. First skier in the under 21 women's Ada Richards from New South Wales. Nice opening pass there for Ada Richards. All right, Georgia Bray, second jump. Oh, 
Oh, nice jump. 14.9 on the first jump for Georgia Bray. 14.9. We'll wait for a score to come through. There we go, Ada Richards, second pass. All right, here we go, Georgia Bray, third and final jump. Cuts hard into that ramp off the top, or gets a little bit sideways, but rides it away. Great stand-up landing from the young Victorian. Skis at Bridgewater on the lot and near Bendigo, part of the Bray skiing team. Okay, 16.4 there for Georgia Bray. PB, we'll go, we've got PBs having a left, right and centre here. PB for Georgia Bray, get around her, Victoria. I think someone said uh, earlier today that Georgia Bray and uh, Mitchell Bray have PB'd at every tournament they've been to this season. So once again, Georgia Bray holds it up and PB's in jump. So fabulous skiing from the young Victorian there, Georgia Bray. Okay, Ada Richards just ran her third pass. Just ran the 16 metre line, so returning on the 14, Ada Richards. Here we go, Ada Richards, New South Wales. This is 14 metres. Not sure whether she's been ever been uh, into this territory or not, but um, hopefully someone will tell me that. Anyway, here we go. Oh, just a little bit stand up out of one, and uh, that'll be a one for Ada Richards from New South Wales. One on the 14 metre line. Okay, Ali Thrower over here on the jump lake, under 14 girls, Ali Thrower.
13.9 there for Ali Thrower from the ACT. 13.9, getting a bit of coaching there from uh, the Queensland team manager, team captain. Is that Scott Reeves, I think? Scott Reeves, great to see that. Cross state coaching, fabulous. All right, so back over to the Slalom Lake and our next gear from New South Wales is Courtney Williams, 52K, 16 metres. Okay, 52, 18 metres. Courtney Williams. Nice opening pass there for Courtney Williams. Fourteen point six there for Ali Thrower from the ACT. Fourteen point six. All right, Ali Thrower, she's got a 13.9 and a 14.6, and this is her third and final jump from the ACT. Nice stance there, drives through those wakes into the ramp, off the top, and oh, not quite riding it away there, but she's okay. Okay, Courtney Williams runs her second pass. Okay, 55, 18 in the bag and returning at 16 metres for Courtney Williams. All right, on the jump lake over here, we've got uh, Emma Kilby, Victoria. I'll tell you a little bit about this young lady. She's a very prolific snow skier. She does uh, aerial snow jumping and uh, trains a lot up there at Mount Hotham during the winter. Uh, she's taken up water ski jumping this year and she's just coming on in leaps and bounds. Absolutely loves it. Skis at the uh, Bridgewater site. Is a local resident in Bridgewater. So here we go, Emma Kilby, Victoria. All right, so we've got Courtney, Courtney Williams, 16 metres, New South Wales. It's a nice turn out of one there. Looking good at two. It's a comfortable pass so far. Around four. Cranks it around five and around six, out through the gates, 16 metres in the bag for Courtney Williams. Okay, Emma Kilby.
16.4 in the first round was her best jump. Here we go. Off the top. Nice, safe opening jump there for Emma Kilby. Started with a single. I reckon she'll go to a double now. Three quarter. Fourteen point one there for Emma Kilby. We've got Courtney Williams, fourteen metres on the slalom lake. Looking okay here. She's around four. Oh, pops the handle. Oh, unfortunately, she was looking in good shape there. So um, I'm going to give her four, but we'll wait for the official score. I reckon she was still in the skiing position when she went over the wakes. So we'll wait for the judges. All right, Emma Kilby, here we go. Three quarter. She's going to have a dip here. Drives it. Oh, just stands up a little bit before the ramp. But a nice jump out uh, overall. Seventeen zero, seventeen neat for Emma Kilby, second jump. Isabel Shaw, New South Wales is our next scare on the slalom lake. I've well, got a little bit of wind uh, happening over here on the slalom lake. I don't think it's going to affect the skiers too much. Just a little bit of a ripple on the water there. Isabel Shaw. Nice opening pass there for Isabel Shaw. All right, here we go. Emma Kilby, third jump. Dad's told her that she needs to drive into the ramp. Okay, turns those big skis, drives it in. That's better. Oh, nice. 17 metres in a second jump, so I reckon that might be a little bit further. We'll just wait for the official score. Sixteen point four there for Emma Kilby's third and final jump. Sixteen point four. Okay, okay, Isabel Shaw started at forty nine eighteen. We'll bring her back at fifty two. Isabel Shaw, 52 Ks, nice turn at one. In great shape out of two. Oh, cranks it around three, no worries at all here. Around four, through the wakes. A nice turn at five, six in the bag and out through the gates. 52 Ks in the bag for Isabel Shaw. Look at that. 
Okay, we've got a tornado uh, on the uh, Slalom Lake. If you look over to the right, <laughs> I hope it's not coming our way. I think we call them a whirly whirly over here. But yeah, that's pretty cool looking. Okay, we're here with Mr. Mark Quinn, President of Tournament Water Ski Australia. Uh, Mark, your, your team has certainly been putting in the work in recent weeks, getting ready for, for nationals this year. Uh, we've had great conditions. Oh, we have, we have, we have. So how have you found everything so far? Oh, mate, it's been a, um, a great weekend with uh, the Mawala Ski Club, uh, with New South Wales, and what the leaseholders have provided here for us. It's, it's just amazing weather. Um, the water's been great. And really, really looking forward to night jump tonight as well. Um, we've got some of our local competitors here, the Ashcroft family, Carla, I think is a star attraction. And uh, hopefully we'll also raise some money for the uh, Junior Worlds later in the year tonight. Well, thanks for all your work and uh, support for the event. Thank you. Have a good weekend, guys. Mr. Lucas Cornell, just off the water after a fantastic uh, five and a half at 10.75. So very close to running it, but uh, still a great ski nonetheless. Yeah, thanks, Toby. Uh, yeah, happy with it. Uh, it was good skiing. It was just I don't know, a dumb mistake at six ball. But um, yeah, we'll get it. We'll get it right next time. Well, I'm sure you I'm sure you will. You've done it before. You can do it again. Uh, what do you think it's going to take to to try and knock the top seed Joel Howley off off the perch this year? Well, he's a tough competitor, but I'm sure it'll be, I don't know, a piece of three at 41 or 10-2. Uh, but, yeah, if not, maybe even more. Yeah. <laughs> well, best luck for tomorrow. Uh, cheers, Toby. All right, here we go. Selena Appleton, second jump. Just waits out there, right ski off the water, turns through the wakes, off the top, and that's a fantastic jump there from the young girl from Queensland, Selena Appleton. Isabel Shaw, I think this is 16 metres. Oh, just inside five ball there, so four at 16, I would think there for Isabel Shaw. Twenty four point one for Selena Appleton, so she's gone further than she did in round one. Twenty four point one. PB of around 26 metres. Well, joined by one of Australia's all-time great overall skiers, Mr Ryan Green. These days, Ryan, I obviously uh, spend much of your time coaching and now bringing you up to that great young junior team representative skiers for Australia too. So uh, I'm sure that you're looking forward to their futures. But uh, how many nationals has it been now for you, do you think, in attendance? Oh, I reckon I missed a few when I first retired. Uh, but my first nationals was when I was, I think, about seven or eight and then right through to I was about 38 or something. So... Um, always loved nationals. It was sort of one of my big events that I'd always look forward to, and obviously love performing at. Um, and now it's yeah, kind of funny. I've got the kids here, and um, obviously still here all weekend. We've got beautiful weather here in Marwala, but just really enjoying seeing a lot of good results here at nationals. Summed it up perfectly. Thank you. No worries at all. Twenty-four point 
24.4 for Selena Appleton's third jump. And on the slalom course here, we've got Kara O'Connor, 55 18 was her opening uh, pass. Okay, Cara O'Connell runs a 16 metre second pass. <laughs> Chris Coburn, over 35 men's slalom champion. How many national titles is it for you now? Oh, good question. Good question. Tough one to start with. Um, look, I think that's my second over 35. Uh, slalom title. I've won a few trick titles um, and then probably goes way back to Open and Juniors, yeah, so I can't remember the exact number. Nice problem to have. Well, great skiing and well done. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I'm going to call it, I think that's the gold medal in the bag there for Zali Reeves. Thirty-one point seven there for Zali's opening jump. Her best jump in round one was thirty point nine. So she's gone further than that already on her first jump round two. All right, here we go. Cara O'Connor. Oh, just pops the handle there around four ball. So uh, not sure what that score will be. We'll wait for the judges to call that through. Three and a half. Okay, unfortunately there for Cara, it's a zero. You're on the gates. Anyway, here we go with Zali Reeves, 31-7, first jump. Okay, we're joined by Mr. Shane Coulter. Shane, you've got a few hats on for us this weekend. Obviously one of the uh, the sponsors of the event with D D3 New South Wales and S-Line Rope as our official uh, ski line for the for the week. Uh, but also chief boat driver as well. The uh, Malibu TXIs are, are working well for us. 
Malibu's are driving really well. The skiers are loving skiing behind them. Um, had some lots of PBs, um, lots of great skiing in the over 35 men and the open men today and the open women. So yeah, the boats are performing as they're supposed to. It's great. Well, thanks for all your support and your and your help with all the driving this week. Pleasure, Tabby. Yeah. Round. Okay, Holly Lusev, 52 Ks, 18 metres. 52 is the call from the boat, 52 Ks. Okay, here we go, Zali Reeves, last jump. She's already got the gold medal around her neck. She's gonna get one more jump in. Okay, a score of six there for Holly Lusev, opening pass, 18 metres, 52 Ks. And we've just had Zali Reeves' final jump, waiting on a distance there. 32.7, 32.7 for Zali Reeves. And the gold medalist in the under 14 girls jump. Here we go, WA, Holly Lusev. This will be 55, 18 metres. Sporting that yellow bib. Nice turn out of two. Looking good here on her second pass, around four. Throws a hand back at five. She's got six and out through the gates. 55 Ks in the bag for Holly Lusev. Okay, so jump, we move on to under 17 girls, jump round two, Bridget Maloney, Caitlin Robertson, Georgie Richards, Georgia Pigden, Jada Sweeney, and Christy Appleton. Okay, so Holly Lusev, I think this is 16 metres. Just a little bit of wind uh, coming up out there on the slalom lake at the moment. Uh, I don't think it's upsetting the skiers too much, but um, there you go, 16 metres for Holly Lusev.
Okay, so slalom skiers to come. We've got JC Ashcroft, New South Wales, Kayla McDonald, Victoria, Caitlin Dennis, Victoria, Emma Neverding, Queensland, and Miller Bennett, Victoria. Okay, I reckon this is 14 metres for Holly Lusev from WA. Gets a nine turn out of route one. Oh, a bit untidy out of two, but she's going to get to three. Running down course. Can she get to four? Yes. Come on, she's got to work hard at five. Come on, Holly. Oh, no, just popped the handle around five. Get off her ski, Lee. You're riding it with her. Great skiing there from a young girl from WA. Four and a half, 14 metres there for Holly Lusev. Is that a PB, WA? Oh, equal PB there for Holly Lusev. Fantastic skiing from the uh, West Australian young girl. All right, what's going over here on the jump lake? We've got a skier ready to go. And I would think it would be the first skier in the under 17 girls jump, Bridget Maloney from New South Wales. JC Ashcroft, New South Wales, 52 Ks, 18 metres. One and a half at 14 in the first round. This will be just a nice warm up pass, just at the feel of the water, feel of the wind, feel of the boat. Of course, the uh, New South Wales junior team captain doing a fabulous job there with the New South Wales team. Great privilege to be named the captain of your state. All right, so on the jump lake over here, we've had a jump. Bridget Maloney rode it away. I didn't see it, but hopefully um, she'd be happy with her first jump. Sixteen point seven there for Bridget Maloney's first jump, sixteen point seven. Okay, her best jump in round one was fifteen point eight, so uh, she's better that already. And over here on the slalom lake we've got JC Ashcroft coming back at fifty five. Okay, JC Edgecroft, New South Wales, 55 Ks, long line. Nice turn at two. Throws a hand up at three and gets around it, no worries. Around four. 
looking really, really comfortable out there. JC Ashcroft, 55 Ks. Okay, unfortunately for Bridget Maloney, a fall on her second jump. Okay, so we've got a fall there for Bridget Maloney. Second jump. She'll shake it off. Go back to the other end, having a look for a coach on the bank. Got some instructions on what to uh, what to change. And we'll bring her back in for her third and final jump. Whilst on the slalom lake, we've got the uh, boat waiting at the southern end. JC Ashcroft. Coming back at 16 metres, this is. First shortening. Let's see what she can do here. Oh, nice gate. Nice turn out of one. On track at three. She's going to run this pass with no worries at all. JC Ashcroft, 16 metres in the bag. All right, Bridget Maloney, third and final jump. Off the top and rides that one away. Nice jump there from Bridget Maloney. We'll wait for a distance. Sixteen point one there for Bridget Maloney. Sixteen point one. Okay, we've got JC Ashcroft. Fourteen meters. Uh, Sixteen. Sixteen meters. Come on, JC. You can run it. Oh, come on. You got to work, work, work. Round six. Can she take the hit? Yes. Fourteen metres there for JC Ashcroft. Great skiing there from the young New South Wales team captain. All right. Let's check her first round score. One and a half at fourteen. So uh, she's well on track to um, running into thirteen here. Okay, and on the jump leg, we've got Caitlin Robinson, New South Wales. Opening jump. All right. JC Ashcroft, 13 metres. Not sure what her PB is. So it'll be a couple at this. All right, nice gate. Around one, gets a little bit of slack, but she's going to get to two. Running down course, 
will not get to three. That's two at 14 for JC Ashcroft. Sorry, two at 13. Caitlin Robinson, 18.6, first jump, 18.6. Nineteen point three was her best jump in round one. So uh, she's getting up there. Eighteen point six, right? Let's see if we can get her over twenty meters. New South Wales. Here we go. Oh, oh, she passes. You okay? She's okay. Great. Puts her hand up. Fabulous. Everyone knows what's going on. All right, just popped the handle just before the ramp, left her pass just a little late. But um, she's okay. All right, New South Wales goes mad for JC Ashcroft. No, I don't think these are European wasps. Yeah. All right, Caitlin Robinson, 18.6. Uh, we'll call it a fall on her second jump. And one jump to go. All right, so next skier on the slalom lake from Victoria, Caitlin McDonald. Fifty-five k's, eighteen meters for Caitlin McDonald. Four at fourteen in the first round. So yeah, getting up there. All right, so let's bring Caitlin Robinson in for her last final jump. Second jump was a little bit untidy. She's back on track here now. That's a nice, better setup and rides it away. Great skiing, New South Wales. Great support there. All right. Caitlin McDonald, Victoria. 55, 18 metres. Nice opening pass there. Twenty point five there for Caitlin Robinson's final jump. Twenty point four. Okay, so we stick with New South Wales. Georgie Richards, our next jumper. And we have Caitlin McDonald. She'll be coming in at sixteen meters. Second pass. Here we go, Victoria, Kayla McDonald, 16 metres.
Nice one. In control of two. Nice turn out of three. She's running down course a little bit. Four, she's gonna have to work to get to five and has to work also to get to six, but will get there and out through those exit gates, 16 meters for Caitlin McDonald. Right, Georgie Richards, New South Wales, first jump coming up. Third jumper in the under 17 girls. We've got Georgia Pigden, Jada Sweeney, and Christy Appleton to come. All right, Georgie Richards starting with a three quarter. Oh, she's a little bit early there and lets that one go. Best jump in round one was 20, ne 20 metres. All right, here we go. Caitlin McDonald, this is 14 metres. Here we go, round one, she gets a good one. Out of two, gets pulled up out of two, but she's on all right at three, but just turns it a little bit hard. That fin pops out and uh, doesn't go any further, further than um, just around three ball. We'll wait for the score. I would think it might be, no, I'll wait for it. I won't call it. Caitlin. All right, two and a half. Two and a half on the 14 metre line. Half a boy better than a first round score. So that, uh, that makes all skiers happy when they do better than their first round. All right, Georgie Richards. Okay, so we're next gear in the under, what have we got? Under 21 women is Caitlin Dennis from Victoria. Then we go to Emma Nieberding and Miller Bennett. All right, Georgie Richards. Pass on her first jump. Oh, just that right ski dipped just a little bit, but she got it back in control. A nice safe jump there for Georgie Richards. Uh, we are holding the boat. Holding the boat on the slalom lake. Not sure why, what's going on there. We've got a hold on the slalom lake at the moment. Seventeen point two there for Georgie Richards. Second jump, seventeen two. Pass on her first jump, seventeen point two the second jump. I'll just Victoria, Caitlin Dennis, 52k, 16 metres. 
see what the young Victorian can do. Nice turn out of one. Looking good at two. As Georgia Richards rides her third and final jump away. Caitlin Dennis around six. And that's a 52K, 16 metres in the bag for Caitlin Dennis. Seventeen point four there for Georgie Richards. Final jump seventeen four. Okay, so we move on to Georgia Pigden, New South Wales, and we've got Caitlin Dennis down the other the other end here, and we'll crank her up to fifty five k, sixteen meters behind a big magnificent Malibu TXI. Great news earlier today, if you hadn't heard, that uh, Malibu have agreed to sponsor the national championships until 2030. So that's just fabulous news for Water Skiing Australia. Fabulous support from Malibu. Another six years of using Malibu boats at the national championships. All right, here we go. Caitlin Dennis. This is 55, 16 metres. Should be able to run this pass. Has been skiing really well. Comes from down there in Geelong. Skis at Bridgewater as well, as well as Melton. Caitlin Dennis, here we go, 16 metres. Around four, looking on track here. Reaches hard at five. Turn six and out through the gate. 16 metres, 55 for Caitlin Dennis. All right, Georgia Pigden, opening jump. And decides to pass on that one. Good move. Way too early. By the way, today, today is happy birthday to our assistant chief judge, Troy Dennis. If you get a chance to um, wish him happy birthday, he doesn't get out of the tower much. He's out at the moment because his daughter's skiing. <laughs> You're allowed to come out to watch her, are you? <laughs> All right, here we go. Caitlin Dennis, this is 14 metres. I reckon she can run this. Skiing really well, looks really strong out there. Conditions for 90%, I would say. A nice gate. Gets a nice turn at one, gets hooked up a little bit, pulled over the front. Lazy out of two. She's around three. Can she work it to four? Oh, she's around four. Takes a hit. Oh, and throws her head back. And Dad, what am I going to buy you for your birthday, she's thinking. All right, we'll wait for the official score. I'd say to be four at 14 metres. Yep, four. Four at 14 metres there for Caitlin Dennis, Victoria. Okay, so Georgia Pigden, pass on her first jump. Coming in for a second jump here at the moment. that TXI gas as she pulls on that handle. All right, this is a better setup. Drives it through off the top. Great jump there from Georgia Picton, New South Wales. Come on, Victoria, go mad there for Caitlin Dennis.
26.5 there for Georgia Pigden, 26.5. Okay, she's gone further than her best jump in round one, which was 25.7. So 26.5 there for Georgia Pigden's second jump. It's a pass on the first. Okay, so our next gear on the slalom lake is Emma Nibiding from Queensland. Two at 13 in the opening round. All right, here we go, Georgia Pigton. Oh, she's gonna land on the tuck nearly. Oh, just missed it. Queensland, I'd say 16 metres, maybe 52, not sure, could be 55, I'll confirm that in a minute, but nice opening pass there for Emma. 55k, 16 metres. Right, 26.9 there for Georgia Pigden's third and final jump, 26.9. Okay, so we move to Jada Sweeney from Victoria. Best jump in round one was 34 metres. So we've shortened over uh, Emma up to 14 metres. Two at 13 in round one. So here we go. 14 metres for Emma, Emma, Emma Neededing. All right. Nice turn at one. Bit of slack out of two, but still on line here. Gray cranks around three. Oh, it stands up a little bit out of four. She's gonna have to work to get to six. Can she get there? Yes. And takes the hit out through the gates. 16 metres there for Emma Nieberding. All right, Jada Sweeney over on the jump lake. from Geelong in Victoria. Skis a bit up at Bridgewater as well. But uh, part of the uh, Patrick Crisp Junior Development Squad. Right, here we go. Jada Sweeney, Victoria, 34 metres, round one. Oh yeah, nice jump, nice opening jump there from Jada. Okay, Emma Nibiding, 14 metres, I think. Oh, stands up out of two. She's gonna be in a bit of trouble here, I think, yes. Pops the handle out of three. Gives us a wave, she's happy with that. Two and a half at 14. Great work by the guys out on the jump there, waxing the jump, ready for the jump spectacular tonight. Night jump, Graham Ashcroft's going over. 
I reckon Murray Pigden's going to go over too. Wayne Bryant's going to strap him on. Dave Ryan, I think he's going to put his jump skis on and go over tonight. His little paddle pops. Just remember that I don't know how that um, raffle's going, but whether it's still open or whether it's still closed, but we've got um, three positions, I thought two positions for Slalom and also for Jump. Lucky draw, $5. All proceeds go to the uh, Junior Worlds team. And I think maybe all Worlds teams. So purple, 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 purple. Jada Sweeney, third jump. Can she get over 35? Oh, that's nice. Really nice, safe jumping and having a crack too is Jada. I reckon that's further than 33. Really had a dip then. Thirty-two point nine there for Jada. She'll be disappointed with that. I know she's chasing thirty-five, so thirty-two point nine is still a very, very good jump. So she had a thirty-three-five, a thirty-two-nine, and backed it up with a thirty-two-nine. Same hole. Great jumping there from the young Victorian. And on the slalom lake here, we've got Miller Bennett. She's just run her opening past 16 at 55. We'll shorten her up to 14 and bring her in there. Last competitor, the top seed in the under-21 women's slalom. Round one score of two at 12, so can get into the 12. But let's get her through the 14 first. Miller Bennett, all the way from Sale down in Victoria. Skis at Bridgewater on the Loddon. Meters, no worries at all for Miller Bennett. All right, and we move to the jump lake, and we've got our last competitor in the under 17 girls, Christy Appleton. And can this girl jump? Wow. 45.7 is in the first round. That's just unbelievable jumping. And under 17 girls, 45-6. Could be the next Jacinta Carroll, I would think. Christy Appleton. All right. 
Miller Bennett. Christy Appleton. We've got Miller Bennett on Lake Slalom Lake. Christy Appleton, first jump. I want to see some exciting jumping folks get up here. Christy Appleton, 45-6 in the first round. Right up on the boat there. Great setup this. Turns those skis. Drives through the wakes and decides to pass. All right, Miller Bennett, 14 metres. Great gait. Turns one. Oh, just sits back out of two and has a big crash. Are you okay? Give us a wave, Miller. No. Pick up boat. Someone. Ashy. Ashy. So Christy Appleton had a pass on her first jump. All right. I think she's like... Okay, Christy Appleton, second jump. She had a pass on the first. Here we go. Right up on the boat again. Oh, I think this is a better setup. Turns, drives hard. She, oh, she didn't take that. Oh, whoops, Daisy. It's all happening here, uh, <laughs> all happening. I think we've got Miller Bennett. She's, I think she's okay. She's on the back of the boat. We'll bring her back into the bank. We've got the um, first aid people ready to have a look at Miller, but I think she'll be okay. Bit of a nasty crash it was. Went out the front. She may have just sort of tweaked her back or or something like that. But we'll do a concussion test on her and make sure she's okay. All right, so Christy Appleton. There's a bit of pressure on here. She needs to get a jump away. Looking for a coach, looking for some guidance. I think she's okay. She didn't. Um, she just went out the front. Was a little bit um, off balance, but I think she'll be okay to uh, take her third jump. We're just waiting there and see what's going to happen here. May have just tweaked her back a little bit, a little bit maybe, doing a few stretches. Yeah, she's going to put them back on, folks. Okay, so she's let her put a bit of pressure on herself. She needs to get a jump away. Okay, Miller's okay. Miller Bennett is okay on the slalom lake. She's up and about walking around, so that's fabulous to hear. We'll do a few checks on her just to make sure that she's 100%. But um, great to see Miller Bennett, the young Victorian, up and about. And okay after that, um, yeah, fairly nasty crash it was. All right, all happening. Righto. Christy Appleton.
45.6 in round one, and she hasn't got a score yet in round two. So there, needless to say, there is a little bit of pressure on. A little bit of pressure here for Christy to get a jump away. So at the moment, we've got Jada Sweeney with the gold medal, I would think. But we've got Christy Appleton yet to jump. Anywhere near 30 metres will take it out for Christy Appleton. I wonder if she'll just do a single. Or will she take it uh, all the way? Be very, very interesting to see what the instructions were from her coach. So here we go. We'll bring her back down the end. Spin. All right, come on, Queensland. You got to get behind her. All right, so bring it down. Take it back. She is come from the coach. All right, some good instructions there on what to do. Come on. Christy Appleton. All right, here we go. Christy Appleton, this is her third and final jump. She has not got a score on the board here for round two. So needless to say, a bit of pressure on here for her to take this jump. Right, here we go. Through the wakes. She's going to take it off the top. Oh, and nearly went out the front. Oh, yes, and just rode it away. Wow, that's great jumping there from Christy Apple in Queensland, and I'd say that's the gold medal. Oh, she's lifting up her scare record. She lost a fin then. There's your 2024 under-17 girls jump champion, Christy Appleton. Okay, so we're back on the Slalom Lake over here. We've had a um, little bit of drama. But uh, I've been told that Miller's okay. Miller Bennett is okay after that crash. So we'll have a judges change on the jump lake. And we'll back into open women jump. Thanks, Lee. Great job, mate. Great job to uh, all the guys a bit out commentating over the weekend. We'll try and fire this crowd up. What do we reckon, folks? Got open women's, open men's jump coming up. Archie Davis is ready to get fired up. <laughs> Pam Appleton was a bit uh, worried then, weren't you, Pam? No? Never never in doubt, she reckons. So we're kicking things off. Open, open women's jump. We're going to have Erica Hayes first on the water. We're going to go to Lane Maroney and then Sadie Ferguson. Three of the big guns in open women's jump. Can't say any fire up.
We've got slalom going on on the other lake as well. So we're going to have a bit of a look what's going on in slalom. Oh, Sue Crisp, 49 Ks. Six boys, is that right, Lauren? We good? Who else we got coming up in slalom? Show me the next page. Oh, heaps. Uh, over 70 men's and over 65 men's. Oh, Freddie Douglas is going to be. Oh, Freddie, can see your yellow shorts from here, mate. You better fire up, don't miss your first pass. Here we go. Erica Hayes, jump one. We're into the open women's top three seeds, top three jumpers. Nice, easy start. Erica, she's going to push on that right ski and a pass on jump one. So pass jump one. Hey, Christy, Christy, you're supposed to go over the top of the ramp, not over the side. So Erica Hayes, she's going to be back. We'll jump out onto the slalom lane because I think Sue Crisp is back at 16 metres. She's going to be coming back 16 metre line. Here she comes, took a big crash. She's gonna be over 65, women's slalom champion. She's working way down, looking nice so far. Ski rears up a bit through the wakes, but all over it. Richard, I'm assuming you're watching on on the webcast. Haven't seen you this weekend, Richard. We don't miss you. We certainly don't miss you. And Sue through 16 meters. She was shorter up to the 14.25 line. Erica Hayes, come on. We've got judges down here, that's good. We've got some judges down here. Wonder if you're all hiding. So Erica, gonna do a double cut, getting out wide on the passenger side of that TXI. They're gonna make its make her way across to the driver's side, getting as wide as she can. Looks, looks like a bit better setup. Put herself down a little bit further down the jump course. Nice easy turn. Gonna start to edge on that right ski. Oh, nice lift off the top. Good second jump there for Erica. We've got 14 to five for Sue Crisp. Victoria, get on the other lake. Sue Crisp through the entry gates. Oh, beautiful at two ball. Easy as you like here for Sue. Nice at three and four turns. You're going to run the 14.25, folks. There you go. Put your hands together for Sue Crisp. Come on, Vicky, he's far up. Lane Maroney, fresh off a very good uh, slalom score a little bit earlier today. Not too far off your PB, skiing into the 12 metre line. Got a jump coming up in a moment with a uh, lovely little headwind. What have we got in store? Um, hopefully just three good jumps is ideal. Yeah, um, I was super happy with how I slalomed. Yeah, half a ball off your PB. Can't complain too much about that. So hopefully build on that into the second round and hopefully jump goes similar. Well, best of luck and trick tomorrow as well? Correct, yes, trick tomorrow. So hopefully put out a nice little good overall score. That will, that'll be good. Well, best of luck. Thank you. Comes a bit of a tailwind. But we'll see what Erica Hayes. Twenty-one point five on the first. Just going for the overall score here at nationals. Of course, you've got to ski in all three events to be considered for overall, which all of our three young ladies about to take the jump ramp will be. Let's see if Erica looking nice now, edging, and she's going to pass on her 
third jump, so gets herself set up for the final. But Sue Chris now back on the 13. A little bit late at a one ball. Oh, big two ball, but just falls over. Be a one and a half at 13. Solid score, your 2024 over 65 women's slalom champion. Yes, Blinda, what's wrong? Yeah, you want some judges. So we need some judges. Can we have the judges for open men's jump, please? You should have uh, Kylie Hayes, Jenny Butlin, Ken Ido, Gay Maroney. Can add to the towel, please. That'll be fantastic. Oh, Kylie's in the boat. That's all right. We'll get Kylie out when she's ready. A call for the jump judges. Oh, we found Gay. It's all right. We found her. It's all right, Gay. Stay there. No stress. You sure? And you start, Sam. Suck it on your cancer stick there. Hey, give away. It's a bad habit, mate. Get rid of it. Olay Maroney, next on the water. Fifty-four k, fast second segment. Going to tell the driver to take me straight down the middle of the slalom course, oh, the jump course. Sorry. As we go to over seventy men's, this is the. Geriatric men's division. Oh no, Fluro's gone. He's gone around three ball. Freddy, I had high hopes for you today, mate. Oh, Freddy, I tell you what, sorry, mate, but you might might as well come back to be a Victoria and you get to ski a bit more here. Oh, disappointing stuff there for Freddie. But Brian Hayes, Victoria. The Victorians could take the win here. The over 70 men's. As Lane Maroney takes her first jump, looks to see. Score through of 32.8. Not a bad effort there from Lane. Gets, of course, some great jump coaching from uh, the pool boy, Joel O'Toole. Good to see you out here, Darren Butlin, as well. You seem to just swan in and swan out. You have not been here at 6.30. Young Daisy Green from Western Australia. We are just talking to your dad, Ryan, a little, little while ago. Um, but you're certainly taking on, uh, on your dad, well, mum and dad's shoes, I should say. Uh, you slalomed fantastic yesterday. Tell us all about it. Um, yeah, I was super happy with it, thank you. I was pretty nervous, but I just went out there and did what I could do. And then I kind of went out there, ran my passes, and I got to 13 and I was like, oh, how's this going to go? And I kind of, one was really good, and then I went around two and I was like, oh my gosh, I can actually run this. And then, yeah, I kind of just got through it and, yeah, ran it in the end. It was super good, thank you. Well, a PB at Nationals, yeah, that's hard to beat. Yeah, I'm super happy. Couldn't ask for more. Thank you. Well, best of luck for the rest of your events. Thank you very much. For Lane Maroney. So here we go, Brian Hayes. 16 metres, 52 k's. Can he take the win? He'd almost already had the win, I'd say. Combined for all divisions except for under 21s and opens. That is all. Oh, I tell you what, he's in a bit of strife here, Brian. You better hurry up. Oh no, he's gone too. Oh wow. That's not what we uh, not what we expected, but 
You right, Brian? Think your goggles might have been fogged up, mate. Don't go that way, the snake's that way. Ah, oh, walk of shame. I've had plenty of those in my time. Oh, over 70 men's drama on the slalom lake. But Lay Maroney, she's out here with her third jump. Had a 32.6 on the second. Gonna be around about that similar hole. Jump three, so consistent jumping there from Lane. Lane Maroney, open women's jump. Do we get a distance, Joel? No distance yet. It's not going to be as far, I don't think. 32.6 is the current score. Just waiting, waiting on the distance. No, it was no good. Yeah, 30.8. It wasn't going to be that far. Thanks, Sam. I've right, got Tony Lightfoot and his uh, ugly mate doing interviews. Sam. So we're going to bump the ramp up. Sadie Ferguson's going to be our next gear. Final competitive open women's jump. Then we are going to bring on the big guy. Look at this, Lockie Butlin. Have a look at the arms on this kid. He looked like he had twigs for arms about a year ago. He's been pumping in the gym, been down in the protein, and his arms have just exploded. They look like tree trunks now, Lockie's arms. So what are we going, 45 or 45s? Oh, over 65, Leighton Copping, South Australia. Peter Dietz, Queensland, Lee South, oh, Lee Southwell, he's ready to go, slaloming. Dave Weston, South Australia, Gary Wiedemann, WA, might bring him in rec mode. Peter Smith, Victoria, Rob Wing, New South Wales, and then Mark Lauder, New South Wales. Over 65 men's folks. We go from the over 70s down to the over 65s. We're just waiting for Sadie Ferguson for jump. Uh, Leighton Copping, South Australia. He, oh, geez, he's deep at three ball. Looks like he's got a ball on his head too. Turns five. He's going to run the run the pass yet. Yeah. Good work. Leighton Copping completes opening pass. Good to see. So final jumper, Sadie Ferguson, before we go into the open men's jump. Open men's jump's going to start off with Lockie Butlin from New South Wales, Lucas Cornell, Queensland, Joel O'Toole, New South Wales. We'll then go to Victoria's Corey Sannington, Scotty Reeves. Going to make amends for his horrible slalom performance this weekend. Benny Cosgrove, Victoria, Callan Ashcroft, the, the uh, show ski specialist. And then Archie Davis. Going to round things out. Superstar out of the ACT. That's what we all come to see. Open men's jump. Now let's see if we get Sadie into the top seed. Chasing only 32.6. It's the current lead score. 
She's got the power. She's got the ability. Get out the way, Duck. Sadie's there. Nice, easy turn. Ooh, a little bit shaky through the wakes, but a pass on jump number one. Leighton Coffing, second pass, South Australia. Ah, oh, big three ball. Still there at four, they far out. He's down course. I didn't think he was going to get round five. Four, second pass. What was it? 52K? 52K, 18 metre line. Don't forget, folks, to stick around tonight. All proceeds from tonight going to the 2024 Junior Worlds team. Be great night. Night jump, night slalom, night tricking, show skiing. Got a bit of everything for everyone tonight. Jason Appleton's getting fired up. He's going to be out there on the uh, in, in the uh, swivel ski competition. I even heard uh, Phil Carmichael won't be even making an appearance tonight. Phil Carmichael is going to put a 2-2 on and uh, do a bit of ballet for us. Fletcher Green, you coming up to do some commentary, Fletcher, are you? Yeah, I am. Just saw well, open men's jumps about to start. I'll come up here and start my apprenticeship. You don't. You got to do under 12s, mate. You got to start with under 12s, work your way up. You got to learn how to pick the right people to abuse. That's what I can teach you, Fletch. I'll teach you everything you need to know about abused people. You've got to pick someone that doesn't look, who looks at you. Like, be like Kelly Atkinson down here. I know she was just checking out what we're doing up here. Kelly, you are right? I won't abuse you. What do you think Sadie's got to do here, Fletch? I don't know. I've heard, I have heard she's skiing very well at the moment. Um, not exactly sure a distance of what to expect, but I hope three nice, safe jumps. Yeah, she's already gone once. She's passed up the first one. I don't know. I believe those ducks might have given her a bit of interference. But I don't know. We'll see if she'll reset for this second one. If you haven't already found out, folks, the bar is open. The bar's open. Do you want to go grab yourself a nice cold frothy? Get fired up for tonight. They're just waiting now. Sadie's going to come back for jump number two. Great work, Lane Maroney. Well done. Yeah, I know. She'll coach you. No problems. So two jumps to come, Fletch. She's going to need to... Uh, to all right, look, she's, we know that she can jump mid to late 40s. Doesn't need to do that. Needs to go 32 metres to get her through to the top seed tomorrow. I still reckon she'll want to jump pretty big. Conditions look pretty good. Yeah, I agree, Jared. I mean, yeah, conditions aren't going to get any better than this. You've got to make the most conditions as a jumper because you really don't know what you're going to expect for the next round. So, I don't know, I reckon... Hopefully, we'll be seeing a high 40 metre jump from Sadie today. And Lockie Butlin's getting ready. Like, have a look at him. I told you, look at them arms. Look like little twigs with bloody potatoes stuck to them. Here we go, Sadie Ferguson. The jump number two. Oh, jumps the wake, sort of breaks forward a little bit. She jumped the, on the counter cut, but she's out there. Duck's still over there, but makes her turn. Now going to power. She's going to pass on jump two. Fletch, all down to jump three. Yeah, I don't know. It looked like she was in a little bit of a better spot. However, she was drifting back on the boat quite a fair bit. Now, like I said, like Jared said, she has now got a fair bit of pressure on herself for her last jump to get a score on the board. I don't know if... If I was her coach right now, I'd be telling her to bring it down a little bit further. She is quite early. Rocking back on the Malibu. Up, 
I don't know. We'll come over to what Sadie's spotter is doing, Ryan Green. She's, he's, he's telling her to bring it down. She's getting, as, you said, as you said, Fletch, getting that coaching off uh, Ryan Green. However, we're on to the slalom lake, folks. If you don't know how to drive a boat, this bloke here can teach you everything you need to know about how to drive a boat down a slalom course. It's Lee Southwell. Great to have Lee back. I was chatting to him yesterday. I haven't seen Lee for about 15 years. Great to have all of the uh, Southwell clan here. 49K, I think he's starting. Is that what I heard? 49K, 18.25 line. Style hasn't changed in 25 years since I've known Lee. It's all about power. Power skiing for Lee. Four ball. Looks nice into five. And he's going to run his first pass. 49 Ks. Look at that. Had a bit of help from the boat driver. He said, if you don't, uh, don't give me a bit of wiggle, you don't get signed off. That's how Lee Southwell works. But here we go, Fletch. Bring us through Sadie Ferguson. All right, Sadie Ferguson, the third and final jump. She looks like she has brought it down, just turning before that 600 foot boy. Oh, I've nearly got hit by a football. Those ducks are still in the way. She's slowed her turn down. Let's see what she can do. Great setup. She's taken, oh, just crunched back a little bit. She does just ride it away. I don't know. Team Queensland, get behind her. I don't think she's going to be the happiest at the moment, but at least to get one decent jump on the board. All right, Queensland supporters, get down there on the bank. Clap her in. Forty point six is her third and final jump, her only jump she'll be scoring on. Yeah, I don't know, Jared. I don't think she'll be the happiest with it. But it's a score on the board. Doesn't matter, Fletch, she's top C going into tomorrow going into the final. But Lee Southwell's back. Back on a slalom. ACT, get fired up, all uh, all six of you. It's Lee Southwell. Looks to be 52 Ks, this is. Oh, no, Lee, what's going on, mate? Put a bit of heart into it out there, Lee. Supposed to be here for ACT. Score, official score of three at uh, 52 K. 18.25 line, who's still coming up? Who we got? Dave Weston, South Australia, Gary Wiedemann, WA, Peter Smith, Victoria, Rob Wing, New South Wales, and then Marky Lauder. Exciting stuff over 65 men to tell you. Thinking back of yesteryear. We're going to roll straight into open men's jump. Lockie Butlin, twig arms with the uh, potato strapped to him. What do you reckon, Fletch? Do you reckon he's been hitting the gym a bit? Yeah, I'm not too sure, Jared. He's looking pretty skinny out there. Pretty skinny. Definitely not as big as Jacob Saddington. We all know Jacob. He lives in the gym. He loves it. Lockie Button, Lynn, just getting ready. All right, while Lockie is getting ready to jump, what do you reckon, Jared? Take it over to the slalom lake. Yeah, we'll wait for, Lo for uh, Lockie Button to get himself sorted. we we'll go jump. Oh, slalom's already gone past. It's already gone. Weston, six on the opening pass there. Davey, big Davo. Runs the first pass, what was it, 40, not 52K. 52K, 18 metre line. 
He'll come back on to the 16 metre line course. Good to see Scotty Reeves having it off. Have a look at that. Frolicking in the water, Scotty. Hey, Scotty. Scott Reeves. Scott Reeves. You're right there frolicking in the water, mate. I don't know. I reckon he has. I reckon he's had taken a sneaky wee in the water, I reckon, Scotty. You're going to pull your finger out for jump? A horrible slalom performance you had. You better go and jump at least 60. Where you going, Fletch? The pool boy's out. He's got his uh, strainer and he's ready to go. Joel O'Toole. All right, Lockie Butlin, jump number one, starting with the double cut. Very wide on the Malibu tow boat. Let's see what he can do, jump number one. He has a nice slow turn, lots of drive. Oh, what a first jump from Lockie Butlin. I don't know, Jared. I reckon that would be up near his best. That was a very nice, confident opening jump. That's what I, I thought. The style just looked exactly like Graham Ashcroft back in his yesteryears. Let's see what you're going to tell him, Graham. Uh, nice jump there. What was it? 46.7. That's a bit, no, I don't think it'd be pretty close. Look at that great, uh, great work there from Graham Ashcroft. So we go jump over to Slala. Looked like he may have uh, missed this. Oh, yeah, he did too. Poor Dave Weston down second pass, 16 metres. What was it? Three and a half? Two and a half. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Yeah, look at where he is. Probably should be. Can't be three and a half. Well, it could be, but... Hi, puppy. Yeah. So you head back. We'll go next. Peter Smith, Victoria should be next. Is that right? Oh. Gary Wiedemann's going to be coming in. 50, 52K, 16 metre line. We'll have to just check... Uh, Who's driving today? Where's Peter Lochner? Here we go. Lockie Butlin. Jump number two, 46.7 on the board. That's a solid jump from Lockie. See if he can improve. There's great lift off the ramp, which is good to see. He used to try and kick the, kick the, kick the absolute bejeebus out of it. At least now he's starting to bring his hips forward. Nice, Lockie. Nice jump. Solid effort out there. Yeah, look, another great jump from Lockie. He's looking really confident out there. Nice and safe, but, you know, still going hard. Lockie Butlin, I don't know. I reckon he'll be so far pretty stoked with how this is going. He's looking very clean out there. Let's see what this next jump is. All right, just waiting for a score to come through. 44.5, so not as far on that one. I believe he was a little bit earlier. Would have liked to have been, brought it down a bit, a little bit wider on that boat. We jump back over to Slalom. Gary Wiedemann runs the first pass. Team WA. Feel sorry for Team WA. They're still, just, still three hours behind. So Gary Wiedemann, Peter Smith, Rob Wing, Margie Lauder. Final now for Lockie Butlin. Sponsored by Malibu Boats. Well, his dad thinks he is. See, oh, there's a late cut here, folks. Oh, gee, I don't even know if Lockie's going to make it on the ramp. Oh, he's on a huge jump. That's going to be close. That's going to be close to 50, folks. 
That's going to be close to 50. Great coaching, great coaching, Graham. It was bigger than the first. Oh, no, they've missed the jump. No, hasn't been calculated. Sorry, Darren. I've got it, Fletch. It's all right. Stay there. Did they get it? Did they get it? Uh, what's that? It did actually didn't work. Oh, no, I was right. It didn't work, folks. His mum is the one who's calculating too. Even better. It's even better. Jenny Butlin's just made the mistake. He's gone 50 metres, Jenny, and you've missed it. What a mum of the year in there. Jenny, Jenny, what did you do? What did you not do? He gets a rewrite. Just going to jump the new PB, and he's. And I'm serious. I'm not joking, folks. There's no point keeping looking at the screen. It's not just going to magically appear. <laughs> wow. Who's a, who's a dog? Oh, really? Oscar McNamara, are you going off to McDonald's with Holly Lucev, are you? Is that true? Is this true, Holly? He's off to McDonald's, are ya? What do you mean? Don't tell me to shush. Haven't you got a boyfriend, Holly? girlfriend Fletch is that right no I just hope Oscar and Holly have fun at Macca's all right Lockie Butlin fourth jump his last one wasn't recorded and it was a big jump as well so let's see what he can do nice and wide again on that Malibu tow boat oh Jared he is later he's gonna have to work hard to get onto the ramp Lovely extension. I don't know, Jared. I reckon that might just be as far, a little bit shorter. He should still be happy with that. Three nice jumps. Christy Appleton, would you like an interview? Jacob Saddington, interview. Forty-seven point nine for Lockie. I believe that is a PB, so he still will be very happy with that. However, his jump number three that wasn't scored would have been further. So Lockie Butlin should still be happy. Team New South Wales get on the bank. Good stuff, Lockie Butlin. Now, our next skier on the water in this open men's jump round number one will be Lucas Cornell. Yeah, Lucas is going to be fired up here, Lucas. Hey. <coughs> hey, Lockie. Lockie, that third jump was 50, mate. I called it. It was 50 metres. Your mum is the one who missed it. Your mum missed it. So... You know, you have, you've got to go and say something to mum, I think. Tell her how you really feel, Lockie. Oh, he's not happy. He's not happy. It was 50. I guarantee it was 50, Lockie. And your mum's missed it. Lucas, Lucas Cornell. Gee, that was a quick trip to uh, McDonald's there, Oscar. What happened? Oh, I didn't end up going to Macca's. I just thought I'd take her on a date just to walk up to the toilets. That's great, Oscar. Well done. Go on, Holly. Take him to Macca's. He'll make you shout. He's got no money. All right, here we go. Lucas Cornell. Of course you can. Here you go. 
All right, Lucas Cornell, jump number one. Looks as if he's going to be starting with a three-quarter cut. I've just heard from his fellow teammate, Bryce Smith, that he does not double cut. Let's see. Wow, nice, strong pull out on the Malibu tow boat. The best in the game. He is seriously late, Jared. Oh my gosh, what a jump. Not as far as Lockie Canny right away. No, you can't. Lots of slack line. Sort of came in on the boat on the landing. But oh, we're still talking about Lockie Butland's third jump. We ever, oh, we all do believe it was 50 metres. It's very unlucky that his mum calculating didn't get it. All right, let's see what Lucas will do on jump number two. I don't know. I believe he'll probably cut from the same spot. Maybe just move away from that boat a little bit earlier. Wash off a bit of speed. But no, I do, I do believe that spot did look pretty good. And on the dock, we do have Joel O'Toole. The pool boy, Joel O'Toole. He's got his uh, pool strainer out. Going to clean the lake. Going to get rid of the weed. He's actually been... Uh, Employed by the club to get rid of the weed out of the lake. It doesn't do a very good job. That's why he got sacked from the Maronis. But, I don't know, you probably don't remember this, Fletch. None of you people remember this. There's a guy sitting down there in a wheelchair. There was a jump extraordinary. I reckon if we can all get Daryl's cheer going, we can get him up over the ramp again. Never seen a bloke go over a jump ramp and face plant so much and just keep going. Took it like a trooper too, didn't you, Daryl? Daryl. Didn't get a few crashes in before the ramp, didn't you, Daryl? Plenty before the ramp. Oh, JC, keep your dog under control, JC. JC actually had a very good slalom set today. JC is a bit of a loose unit. If you come up here, Holly's just come up. Holly Lucif's come up here. Holly, you want to say anything to Oscar? Um, no, I'm actually all right, but thank you. Okay, just thought I'd put you on the spot. We can make it up if we, if we have to. Were you really going to McDonald's? Yes, we actually were. We asked, like, multiple people, but... They, just, they just wanted to leave you two just go on a, go on a date together, hey? Yeah. I, I did ask Fletcher, actually, and he said he wanted a Fanta, and that was it. So. I actually think Fletcher might, uh, might not like girls. Could be, maybe the case. Nothing against that, Fletch. It's all right. Oh, thank you, Jared, for those words of wisdom. All right, we're bringing back Lucas Cornell for jump number two. So there might be a little bit of a hold up. The tow boat has stopped at the other end. Okay, Jared's going to go do some slalom. Yeah, get rid of this jump. What's happening on the slalom lake? I think the wingies are out, are they? The wings out? What's he got? What do we got? What's, what scores have we got? Oh, Peter Smith, Victoria, we missed that one. One at 13. Wow, Peter Smith. Ripping it up in the slalom course. Rob Wings just gone, started 52 games, 18 to 5. Going to shorten him to 16. Yes, Mr. Tool. Mr. Neil O'Toole. Yes, mate.
sorry for you guys watching on back at home if you're not liking uh, the slalom. It is open men's jump. We probably should have a bit more open. Fletcher, where'd you go? Fletcher, where are you? He's done a runner. Here we go, Rob Wing. It's over 65 men's slalom. Look at the style on Rob. Gets to ski in his own own uh, own river at home. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful pass there, Rob. 16 metres. Getting all that coaching off Amber, of course. But back over to back over to jump. Oh, a little bit of a little bit of a back of the heels for Lucas Cornell on jump number two. So just getting the distance here for Lucas Cornal. Distance is coming through. Look at Archie Davis. Have a look at him. He is fired up. Have a look at the body on him. 42.6. What's wrong, Will? What words? Huh? Bird is the word. Scotty Reeves is strapped up, trying to hold his guts in. Aren't you, Scotty? Gonna do better than you did slaloming today. Can't get it much worse, so. Lucas Cornell, third and final. See how far we can get Lucas. Come on, Queensland. Get up and about. See if we can get him. High 40s, nice through to, oh, a little bit of an upper body crush. Pushes out over those skis, gonna be about 45 meters. Gonna call it there for Lucas on jump number three. Then we'll have the pool boy ready. Oh, Rob Wing. <laughs> Completed his third pass. All right, so Rob Wing is our second last competitor, folks, in this over 65 men's slalom. And he's now on to 13, chasing the score from Pete Smith. And we saw one at 13 a little bit earlier. Can he do it? Tell so these two little wing kids are going to go wild if uh, Granddad. Can run 13. Here he comes. Pulling out of the Malibu TXI. A bit of double pull. Now edgy. Oh, he's got one. Looks nice. He's going to get to two. Stands up around two. Put your hands in New South Wales. Rob Wing. He could be your over 65 men slalom champion. How's that? All right, so just taken off from the dock, Joel O'Toole from New South Wales. Some big names still coming up. We're going to round out the over 65 men. So one skier left he is the world number one over 65 men's jump champion. Looking to take out the overall competition here, which I believe he will. He's already got that lined up in the bag. 
However, jumping the jot, Joel O'Toole, the pool boy. From out of Bundalong. See what uh, Joel can do here on jump one. Jumped a 50 metre jump. The Mallet at the uh, Moala Open here. And that's going to be a solid opener. Around about 40, around about 48 metres. 48 on jump number one. Okay, we're here with uh, Sam Longmore, uh, one of our MP1 skiers for nationals this week. Uh, Sam, sounds like you're a star of the show at Sacramento for the World Championships last year. Uh, give us a rundown of how it all went for you. Yeah, had a bit of a crack. It was my first one, um, but managed to come away with a world record in my jump for my division. Um, I got a couple of gold medals, a silver and a bronze, and managed to come away with Athlete of the Year with the IWF Disabled Division, which was really cool. So, clean sweep pretty well, which is crazy, but... Very exciting. Yeah, certainly fantastic skiing. Um, so what, what's your goals for, for nationals this week? What, what sort of uh, scores or what, what's, yeah, what, what are your goals basically? My main goal was to get a little bit more confident with my jumping. Um, Worlds was sort of breaking the ice there. Um, and I managed to do that, which is good. And I got an extra 10 centimetres on top of my, my record on Thursday. Um, but yeah, try and get a little bit better with my slalom, I think. Get a good good result there was another main goal well very good and uh congratulations at worlds and uh, all the best for the rest of the weekend beautiful thank you 48-6 joel o'toole now looking to see what he can do get himself up to seating for this open men's jump still got six skiers left five skiers left i think oh a lot of power in this one joel nice lift too I still reckon Lockie's was further. Mate, you were 50 at least, Lockie. At least. I'd be telling your mum, I'd sack your mum if I was you. It's waiting for that distance to come through for, Lock, uh, for uh, Joel O'Toole. Is it going to be our first 50 metre jump? It is. There you go. 50.8. Lockie, yours was 53 then, I reckon. 50.8 metres. Put your hands in New South Wales. Joel O'Toole. Fire up. So as we jump back over to Slalom, we got to Marky Lauda has just completed uh, 14. No, 16. 52, 16. It's all down. He was a top seed. Is this round one or round two? Round two. So I think he was a top seed after round one. Not quite sure what his score was after round one. We don't get that information here, unfortunately. We should. We really should. I'd say he probably would have got at least one or two. One or two at 13. But we'll come back to Mark Lauder as we go out to Joel O'Toole. Here he comes, folks. Going to turn. Has 50.8 on the board and a pass on jump three. All that, uh, all that off water and on water training with, of course, partner Lane Maroney always helps. I don't help him. So a pass, so 50.8, our first 50 metre jump of the afternoon. As Mark Lauder, New South Wales, is coming through. This is the 14.25 line. Oh, he's in a bit of strife here though. He just turns four. He's made up a little bit of time at five. Oh no, he's in a bit of trouble here at six. Oh, he gets around and punches a fist out the gate too. Thought he was in a bit of trouble. And runs the 14.25, and I think that may give him the win, I'd reckon. We saw Rob Wingus has said get two. Two on this next 13-metre pass. 
So I think we are over 65 men's slalom champion. He's going to go to New South Wales. And it is going to be Mark Lauder. New South Forget it, get down there, Team New South Wales. Come and support him. Mark Lauder, over 65 men's. Two is the score to beat from Rob, Wh Rob Wing. He's going to turn one. He's going to get to two. He's even going to have a crack here at three here, Marky Lauder. He has. He's all over this. He's going to go inside four, though. So it was actually an equal score from the first round. So Mark Lauder is your 2024 over 65 men's slalom champion. Could have been a runoff there. Thanks, Troy. Didn't even know that. You look in this judge's turn, you see all the judges working. All of a sudden, you just got in the middle there. Is Shane Coulter just smashing down a couple of muffins. Chief driver, don't even look at his drivers, just smashing down muffins, aren't you, Shane? Comes for the free T-shirt, stays for the entertainment. So we go to... First jump. Oh, beautiful off the top of the ramp there for Corey Saddington. Oh, it's uh, Joel still, sorry. Jeez, you make a mistake, everyone jumps at you. Sorry. Good to see people are listening. Sorry, Jot. Wasn't as good as his 50.8, I don't think. So Joel O'Toole, eh, 47.2. 47.2. Well done, Joel. Now we're going to go to Corey Saddington. So still four ski five skiers left. Corey Saddington, Scott Reeves, Ben Cosgriff, Kellen Ashcroft, Archie Davis. Five top jumpers in open men's across Australia. About ready to tackle this jump course. And I think that's the end of slalom. Is that right? We're finished slalom. All done. All finished. Thank you, slalom judges. Good, good slowing, Pete Smith. Well done, mate. Archie's still strutting around. You know, you got a girlfriend, Archie. You don't need to worry about strutting around, showing people your body like that. Oh, here, Lockie Butlins here. Lockie, Lockie, was that, the, was that not the biggest jump that you've ever had? Maybe. Uh, go and ask Mum. 100%, if Joel went 50.8, mate, yours was at least 52. At least. Oh, it was. You were past where Joel went, I'm telling you. Wasn't it, Graham? He, think I'm he thinks I'm joking. For once, I'm actually being serious. Brian Robinson, Brian Robinson, if you are here, please make yourself known. Ada is looking for you, Brian Robinson. All right, Corey Saddington, jump one, chasing Joel O'Toole's 50.8. Oh, a lot of power, just backed up into the base of the ramp though, Corey. 
Not what you want to see. Just gave up a fraction into the bottom. Still got up and over his legs, though. What do we go? 48.9, 48.9 for Corey on jump one. So 48.9, Corey Saddington now back for a jump and number two. Nice conditions. A little bit of head breeze would be a little bit nicer for these bigger jumpers as we go through. But still better than what we've seen over the past couple of days being tail breezes. But Corey, this is nice. Nice turn. Oh, just back on his heels. A fraction, just giving a little bit into the boat, into the base. And that is going to be around about the same hole, about 48 metres. I found him. So Corey Saddington, one jump to come, 48.5, so 48.6, 48.6, 48.5. And then Scotty Reeves, Ben Cosgrove, Callan Ashcroft. And around things out going to be Archie Davis. Now these boat drivers love smashing down muffins. Tommy Bennett's even smashing down a big muffin. Put a counterweight in these boats, I reckon. You guys smashing down cake and muffins. What are you laughing at, Lockie? Right. All right, final jump coming up now. So sunsets, don't forget the night entertainment tonight, starting at 7 p.m. It's Corey Saddington edging. Oh, still just not getting his legs. So 48.6 is going to be his longest. Disappointing stuff there for Corey. Out of Bridgewater. So big Scotty Reeves getting pumped up down there on the dock, ready to launch Queensland. 43.8, 8 on that third and final jump. So I said 48.6 is going to be his longest. Scott Reeves, the big Queenslander. Come on, Scotty, give us a Queensland. Tommy, you've left a, you've made a mess up here. You got chocolate bloody cake everywhere. So here you go, Scotty Reeves, fifty-seven Ks. 
double Z letter. Just to start the now, bring on the big jumpers. Here we go. We're going to bump this thing up. We've got a rampide change for Archie Davis right at the end. We'll go up to 1.8 metres. Callan Ashcroft's making his way down. Callan's ready to do some uh, show skiing for us. He's got his swivel skis for later. After seven. So for those of you who don't know what's going on tonight, it's going to be a show ski at 7 p.m. from what I've been told. 7 p.m. show ski, 7 till 7.40. We'll 40 minutes of show skiing. Uh, it's riveting stuff, that show ski. I've heard Jace Appleton's ready to go. He's going to be out there for us on the show on the swivel ski. We then got some night jump. We got night trick flip off and then night slalom to finish things off for the night. There's some fireworks. Here we go. Scotty Reese, lots of power into the base. Oh, slides out a bit. That's about where you landed, Lockie. No word of a lie, it's about where you landed. So score still 50.8 from Joel O'Toole. Still the longest jump of the afternoon. I reckon we may have been pushing up around that. There uh, you go, 52.7. 52.7. Not a bad effort there from the Queenslander. Who's spotting for him? Taji? Where's Taji? Taji's doing some spotting, I think. Oh, come on, Gaz. Come up here and do a bit of men's jump. You sure? Still plenty left in the tank here for Scott. Scotty Reeves. Can he sprays that 600-foot timing boy? Now heading into the jump glide. Listen to the roar of that Malibu TXI. And Scotty off, yeah. Getting up and over. That's going to be probably pushing 54, I reckon, 54 metres. Waiting on the distance to come through. Let's say it's the longest jump we've seen so far. 50, 50, 56.9 metres, Scotty Reeves. Fire him up. So there you go, 56.9 metres, absolutely launching and still has some left in the tank. So Scotty, 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 Scotty. He's definitely making uh, making up for his horrible slalom performance over the weekend. Missed his first pass. Missed his gates today. Jumped up a storm so far. Oh, right on that bottom corner. I reckon he's taken a duck to the uh, duck to the testies too. I reckon as he landed.
56.9 is going to be his longest jump. Forty-nine point seven. Forty-nine point seven. Well done there, Scotty Rose. Get on down there, Queensland. Team QLD. So three skiers left. Ben Cosgrove, Callan Ashcroft, Archie Davis. Good to see all the water ski fans making their way down. Boy, and bringing their chairs. Have a sit, watch a bit of the ending of Open Men's Jump. Welcome. So Benny Cosgriff is going to be our third final competitor. Of course, today is only seeding rounds for these open men's. Then we all have the final on Monday at lunchtime. Yeah, poor Benny Cosgriff had an absolutely cracking jump at Moomba. New PB, 57.7. Well, well done, Scotty. Great work, mate. Still got plenty left in the tank, mate. I think you had Taj's undies on today. Hey, Scotty, did you hit the duck on the landing? Looked like it. <laughs> So, yeah, so Benny Cosgrove went 57-7, wasn't it? Where's Curly Sue? Curly Sue somewhere. 57-7. It's Benny now. He's going to eye off this jump rope here at the 2024 Australian National Championships. Nice, easy approach. He's going to pass in the first. Actually, has to go. Is he having surgery next week? Next week? Dean? Surgery next week? Friday next week. Surgery on a hip flexor muscle or something like that. It'll be damaged when he unfortunately took a tumble at Moomba. The physio's okay to jump. We want to see him jump because he's a great, great style, Benny. He's had a great year. So pick him up behind the Malibu TX9, take him down. Jump number two coming up. Car Victoria, let's get behind him. Benny Cosgrove, put your hands together. Come on. Fire up, Vickies. Come on, Benny. Here we go. Went down to the northern end of the Max Kerwin Lease Lake. Benny Cosgrove stepping things out, shaking off those nerves. Perfect conditions out here at the moment. Gets down, stamps that right ski. This looks like a nice setup. See if he can hold it through the wakes. Oh, and a pass on the second, too. Doesn't really matter, again, as I said earlier, that it is only seeding rounds. So Kellen Ashcroft and Archie Davis still to jump. And that's going to finish off day number three.
All right, Benny Cosgrove, last jump to come. Let's see if he can get a score on the board. Or will he just go in, take it, settle himself for... Is he just going to pass this one, Dean? What do you reckon? Don't know. Don't know what's going through his head. Mal, what do you reckon? Well, actually, we thought he was going to pass that movement, didn't we? Jumps with PB. Should have passed. Didn't. Who's he getting coached off? We could get him jumping 60, I reckon, Dean. Here he comes. Benny Cosgrove, third and final. Come on, Benny, let's get a score on the board. 56.9 is the score. To currently w to lead the event. Nice in the base. Oh, no, Benny, 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 Benny. Hold on to what he does. Wow. Oh. Better check his jocks. I think there might be a few skiddies in there now. Wow. Thought it was all over Red Rover. Wow. Heart and mouth stuff there. Still gives him a score, though. I don't think it's going to be the score he would have wanted. 45.1, but he's back to the dog. Put your hands together, Vickies. Benny Cosgrove. Hey, Benny. Benny, do you wear jocks in your jumpsuit? You better check him. Better check him. Kellen Ashcroft, next competitor from Wagga Wagga. We're going to see Kellen at 7 o'clock ripping up the uh, show skiing, aren't you, Kellen? That's what he's more excited about, show skiing, than he's jumping. We've got a photo shoot going on over here. Christy Apple to just uh, take some happy snaps of Fletcher Green. Why? All right, get the video then. I'm stopping. Oh, beautiful work, Fletch. Great work. Kids are trying to put on a video together for, I think it's Uber. Is it Uber? $50,000 uh, entry for a team to try and help support the Junior Worlds. But here we go. Callan Ashcroft. Jump one. 56.9. His current score will beat. Oh, he flies through the wakes. Easy off the top, Callan. Nice jump. Beautiful jump from Callan. He's just launched for the opener. 55.3. Still with the lead, though. Scotty Reeves. So he goes back down to... Spin the boat and bring you back in for jump three.
So we just stopped Callan at the far end. Here we go, Callan Ashcroft, second jump. Hope everyone's sticking around. You might even see Callan back out here on the jump skis on the other leg. We are going to change lakes for tonight's proceedings, but here he goes. Callan, edgy, oh, a little bit of an oh, inside uh, ski grab. That's where, that's a show ski coming down here. Thanks, Rochelle. He is, he is a show skier at heart. He's a performance man. 48.1, So still holding on, Scotty Reeves. Rampart going to go up, Phil. Rampart's going to go up shortly. Jack Christie, calm your dog down, mate. Come on, Jack. Keep, keep some control over there. Who? I just did. Jack. Disgusting, Jacob Saddington. Heard Lockie Butlin's dog likes peanut butter. That's why she's so quiet. All right, Khaled Ashcroft. We want to see a big jump. He looks like he's in the right spot here. Brought it down a fraction further. A little bit wider on this approach too. Now powering. Oh, almost lost the left ski off the top, but still got great flow through the air. Don't quite think it's 56. 56.9 56 from Scotty Reeves. Don't think so. Fifty-four point nine. What's going on, Pam Appleton? You happy? You happy? You excited? I'm very excited. What are you excited about? Watching all these amazing open men jump, especially Scotty Reeves. Scotty's good, isn't he? For an old fart, he's not too bad, is he? He shows them how to do it. That's for sure. A bit like your daughter. Shows him out. All right, we're going to bump the rampart up, folks. One skier left, Archie Davis. He's ready to launch. ACT. Good to see the fan bam here, too. Hey, Paul, you going to coach him? You going to tell him, give him a few tips? Who's going to coach him? Doesn't need Ryan. You can coach him. So now we're putting that ramp height up to 1.8 metres. Has been at 1.65 for the past couple of jumpers. The usual ramp height is 1.5. So we're going to see a lot more height out of this these jumps from Archie. Personal best of well up over 60 metres.
All right, so the ramp bike's been bumped up. We're ready to go. 57 Ks. Jump one, Archie Davis. Wow, he's out wide on this one here. He's pulling it down the course. Nice turn, launches across the waves. Whoa, slips out on jump one. So bit of a slip out on jump one. Can we have a look at who's skiing tonight, Ada? So, I think I was right. So, what we're doing, we are going to have... We're gonna have night. Uh, sorry, we're gonna have the Moala Show ski team coming out from seven till seven thirty. Oh, that was forty minutes. It's all right. Thirty minutes is good. But they're gonna have night jump. We're gonna have Zali Reeves, Taj Reeves, Scott Reeves. The whole Reeves family are gonna be out there. Amy's gonna jump as well. They're gonna have Callan Ashcroft and Corey Saddington all night jumping for us tonight. And they're gonna have a flip off. It's going to be Nate Pigden versus Jet Shee, Lockie Butler versus, jo oh, Lockie Butler versus Jacob Saddington. <laughs> and then Joel O'Toole versus Fletcher Green in a flip-off. And then to round things out, we're going to have five slalomers. Oh, sorry, six. Who's six, sorry? Finn Mitchell, Sadie Ferguson, Sierra Nolan, Jack Christie, Lucas Cornell, and Bryce Smith to round out. I assume that's night slalom, not night jump. So you've got that wrong. So that should be jump, and that should be, yeah, why is it there? Ada, come on. Running an A1 establishment here. We don't make mistakes. Come on, Archie. Come on, Archie. Let's get him fired up. Come on, team ACT. Give him a cheer as he comes in. Archie Davis, turn. See if he can get his legs this time. Oh, still back a bit, but good height. Not a bad jump. Still plenty left in the tank, though, Archie. Well, distance is through 56.2. So still Scotty Reeves holding on. Getting that coaching off for Ryan Green, checking out what he needs to do, what adjustments he needs to make, but one jump to come. As I said, all skiers for tonight after jump need to go over and and sit with in front of the jump in this grandstand, please. All skiers for tonight. All right, final jump of the afternoon. Who is going to be the top seed going into the men's jump final on Monday afternoon? 
Will it be ACT? Will it be Archie Davis? He's going to step things out here. Launches across the wakes now onto the glide. Right up as wide as he can in front of that Malibu TXI. Now looks to turn. Here he comes, Archie. Get all of these legs made. As he goes, oh, slides out back over. Just can't get it together, Archie. So Scotty Reeves is going to be the top seed going into the men's jump final. Wow. Queensland. So that's going to end it for tonight, folks. Well, this afternoon, folks. Thank you. Day three in the books. Is there? Oh, we have two. Sorry, we're not finished. Two more jumpers or one more jumper? Oh, Jamie Cray. Sorry, Jamie. Jamie Craig, New South Wales, folks, our last skier. What? S skiers, over. Meeting, over here, please. Lucas, get over there. Over there. I'm going to put the ramp back down, but one skier left. Jamie Craig. You got a bit of dread. Get through it, mate. So he's going to put that ramp back down to 1.5 metres. Get down to the lower ramp height. Jamie Craig, New South Wales. Well, one skier left, darling, and then we can go. Do you find out how you jock swag, Benny? You have a few skiddies in there? Bull, there's no way your jocks are clean, mate. Not a chance. So just for those of you skiing tomorrow, what are we starting with, Shane? Can I just have a quick look? Sorry. What do we got tomorrow? Over 45 men's slalom round two. Tomorrow morning we'll be starting on the slalom lake at 7.30. 7.30. So can't have a big night tonight over 45 men's. And then the under-17 girls trick final will be at 8 a.m. on the trick lake. All right? So 7.30 start slalom. 8 o'clock start for tricks. Sadie Ferguson. Lockie Butlin. Sadie Ferguson, Lockie Butlin. Lucas. Oh, Lucas was going over there. I saw Lucas over there before. And Raymond Horton. <laughs> ASAP to the other lake, please. Thank you. All right, Jamie Craig, final ski up. Over 45 men's jump, only competitor, the lone competitor.
Can do a single cut, just nice, easy approach. All he needs to do, Lockie Butler, you should be over on the other leg, mate. Or hurry up, they already started. Lands the first one, skis it away. There you go, New South Wales. So Jamie Craig taking off a little single cut, 22.3 metres, 22.3. We've got our show skiers just uh, making their way down, getting their stuff organised for tonight. Jamie Craig coming back. Twenty-two point three. Now gonna do a leg to do a same approach. Nice little single cut. He's gonna be over forty five men's jump champion here. Cutting, edging now. Oh nicely off the ramp. Fraction further. On a jump and number two. So distance through. Oh, you're not taking a photo of me. Oh, you're taking a photo of me. 22.3 again. I don't know. Twenty two point three, jump two, same distance. One jump to come. All right, final jump coming up now. Jamie Craig. Last jump. Last jump of day three. Kicking things back off with our show ski team at seven o'clock. 22.3 on the first, 22.3 on the second. Get all elected to do similar single cut. Starting now, nice, nice pull through the wakes. A little bit on the back of his heels, but skis it away. Well done there. Come on, Team New South Wales. Get over here. Support our final skier.
24.6. 24.6, final jump. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. Jamie Craigs, he makes his way back. New South Wales, over 45 men's jump champion. And that's going to it. So thank you for day three. Thanks to all the judges, officials, everyone that's helped out. Stick around because we are going to be changing lakes. We're going to move over onto the Slalom Lake for tonight. People already got their spots on the bank, which is great to see. Light towels will get to start to uh, to get up and we'll get things kicked off at about 7 o'clock tonight. So stick around. If you are here, welcome. We'll get things kicked off with our show ski team at 7 o'clock. Grab something to eat. Grab something to drink from the bar. That's where I'm heading. And uh, we'll see you guys back at 7 o'clock.